Chapter 17, One Bad Little Boy. Kid have I ever mentioned that you're my favorite container ever? The QB stated with a grin. Ever since it had found out what Naruto had planned for his would-be assassin's execution he was all smiles. Naruto rolled his eyes once again as he made his way towards the rakage tower, I'm pretty sure that I'm your only container. And seriously, this is why you think I'm great? Not because I took you out of that musty cage, not because I gave you free reign to run roughshod over my mindscape village, and not because I let you see what I see, feel what I feel, and all the nine yards. No, the reason you think I'm awesome is because of my preferred method of execution. A vulpine grin that Naruto could just feel inside of his head pulled across the demon lord's lips, exactly. The QB chuckled upon hearing Naruto scoff, and you would think that you were my only container wouldn't you? Naruto let a look of surprise cross over his face as he almost stopped walking, wait, what? You're saying you've had a Jinchuriki before? Who was it? Were they better than me? And is the fact that only I'm killing the bastard that tried to kill me really a good reason to label me as the best? He asked the last question almost mockingly. QB sighed, the first one simply kept me locked up for the most part and never really did anything at all, not even really tried to get any semblance of control, I was just pretty much ignored for the most part. The second one was much the same, she never really willingly tried to come into contact with me and thus my prison, aka the mindscape in which I am kept, fell into a disheveled state, in other words it deteriorated into the sewer that you first met me in. Naruto nodded to what appeared to the people in the streets to be himself as he thought on his prisoner's words, true, true. I can see how that would already put me leaps and bounds ahead of them. QB continued, both of them also held the ability to restrain my power. My first Jinchuriki had very close ties to the Shadaim Hokage and with his ability to restrain the Bijou with his Makuten he ended up passing off some of the ability to rein me into that person's already impressive skills. Did you know that my first container sealed me into their own body? I'll tell you those damn mind chains were a real pain in my ass too. The next one was much the same, like I said, only more with the mind chains, and then there was you. Of course I was never used that much, why do you think that Gara had so many tricks with his Bijou and you don't? because every Jinchuriki that Shukaku was sealed and actually used it, it had to develop tricks and add-ons to survive. I was never really used, therefore all I taught you was the Amari, because I never had to come up with anything else. I'm just glad that you had enough imagination to come up with your own stuff. And then there was me. Naruto repeated in his head, what about me? Naruto saw the rakage tower coming in sight as he continued listening on to the QB, you didn't chain me down to anything. As a matter of fact even after you realized that I was the one that had nearly eradicated your home years ago you still treated me levelly. You not only actually let me see the outside world, you took it upon yourself to renovate the dreary sewer I had been in up to that point. And you have little to no problem giving in to your natural bloodlust that comes with the territory of possessing me, even if you do only venture to that damned forest of death to indulge me. Naruto rolled his eyes, well I can't exactly go around killing random people whenever I want now can I? you'd better love me for what I'm about to do then, because this is going to suck for this guy. Naruto saw his team standing outside of the tower, two with angry looks on their faces, and the other with a simple bored look on it with a senbone for added effect. Naruto grinned as he walked up, so I assume the old man had some dealings to work out with Kumo's brass. How's everybody feeling today? Kotetsu glared down at the shorter Chunin, you're so lucky that beating the crap out of you would get me thrown in jail kid. You're a right bastard you know that? Naruto waved it off, hey, I'll bet the alcohol burned the hangover right out of you didn't it? Now you're fit for service today, and you're going to see something cool in a bit. Well, not so much cool as terrifying. Izumo looked at the boy who was being very cryptic as to why they were there, what are you talking about Naruto? Naruto chuckled, I was attacked by an assassin last night. The rakage is going to let me publicly execute him today. Genma looked at the stunned faces of his older team members, Naruto I should have known you were so chipper about something today. No wonder you wanted us to come. What are you going to do to the guy? Naruto walked up to Genma and whispered in his ear. The Tokubatsu Jounin looked at the boy and shook his head, you're crazy kid, I swear. Naruto grinned up at him, being crazy is the only thing that's kept me from going insane. With that, Naruto walked inside the tower and left his team on the outside to ponder amongst themselves. Triple X. A sat at his desk with the now recovered, for the most part, Team Samui standing in front of him. The girl that was the team's namesake stood straight and composed, Team Samui reporting for a mission rakage sama. A looked at the group of Chunin. Kero still had a few bruises on her face, Amoe still had the telltale signs of a broken jaw, 
and Samui herself, while not showing any signs of outside trauma, still showed her own injuries by the way that she made no real sudden movements, probably due to the soreness of her ribs. Sighing as he saw the expectant faces of the ninja A spoke, denied. He then steeled himself for the shitstorm to come. What? Kairo, predictably, was the first one to explode, what do you mean we can't take any missions? Why? What did we do? A rolled his eyes, if you want to take a D-ranked mission feel free, but I'm not sending you on a mission where there is implied combat. Not in the condition that you're all in, or did you think that I wouldn't find out about your little challenge to Uzumaki? It's kind of hard to hide the existence of the battle when said battle ends up putting you in the hospital. All of the team had the decency to look sheepish. Before the conversation could continue, the Rakage's secretary knocked on the door and upon hearing a booming enter made her way into the room, Rakage-sama, you have a Naruto Uzumaki here that says you told him to show up today. A nodded to the woman, go ahead and send him in. His secretary left to fetch Naruto while he turned his attention back to his team of Chunin, speak of the devil, he's here. Samui voiced a question, Rakage-sama, why is Naruto-san coming to see you today? I decided to inform his ninja on what the boy was doing there, seeing as how he had somewhat established some sort of relationship with them, Uzumaki was attacked last night by one of our ninja in his hotel room. Instead of attempting to deal with the man himself he avoided international incident and came directly to me. I have ordered the man be executed, and Uzumaki has asked to perform the service. Kairo gave Naruto a somewhat appalled look, you volunteered to perform an execution? Naruto shrugged, it was either kill him last night and get into some village relation nightmare scandal, or kill him today. No one tries to assassinate Naruto Uzumaki for personal reasons and lives. If it was a mission I'd still be pissed off about it, but I would have understood, you've gotta do what you've gotta do. This guy was simply related to the guy that tried to kidnap the Hyuga heiress a bunch of years ago, had a gripe against Konoha ever since, and decided to try and put down their Jinchuriki to cripple our strength. Personal revenge against me is fine, you just better make sure that you finish me off when you try it or else you'll have hell to pay. Kairo looked at the boy that had just broken into an entire explanation over her question, did you know that you were extremely mentally unbalanced? What kind of kid just up and ops to execute people like that? Naruto raised an eyebrow, in the last year alone I've met a kid whose entire life mission is to kill his older brother who killed his entire clan when he was no older than we are now, a kid that had suppressed aggression issues that he took out on his younger female cousin, a kid that randomly crushed people with sand and called the demon inside of him mother, and a kid that walks around outdoors in broad daylight in green spandex, a bowl-cut haircut, and routinely shouts at the top of his lungs about youth while hugging and crying a man that looks like his father only with bigger eyebrows. Naruto put a small smile on his face, compared to most of the people I've met I'd say that I'm not that bad at all. If you'd met me six months ago, then you would say that I'm fucking strange, stranger than now so yeah. Don't talk to me about weird or unbalanced, little miss my sensei routinely breaks into rhyme for no reason whatsoever. Naruto finished while winking at the girl and clicking his tongue at her. Kairo blushed at way that Naruto had just addressed her while Samui I twitched faintly at her side. Naruto turned to face A with a smile on his face, so where's my late night unwanted visitor? I hope you guys didn't break him too badly over the night because I need him fully receptive to pain for what I have planned for him. A was curious at what exactly a small boy could come up with to kill a prisoner in a public display, what exactly do you have planned as far as the execution itself goes? Naruto walked over and whispered his idea in A's ear. A pulled away from him, what kind of kid comes up with that kind of thing? Naruto again shrugged, all I need is something to hide my identity while I do it, because I don't need people from your village hating me for killing one of its ninja, even if it was warranted. Naruto looked around the office blankly, you wouldn't happen to have a cloak or something that could cover my appearance would you? A made a face and noticed the team that was standing in his office, alright, if you kids want a mission I have one for you. Go get Uzumaki here something to cover his identity with before the execution in a bit. Naruto stood gaping at a Naruto wasn't dumb, he was well aware of the majority of things that went on around him and by listening to the mission that had just been assigned to a team with two women he had come to a conclusion that he confirmed when he looked over at team Samui's lone male member looking downtrodden, did he just fucking give them free reign to play dress up with me? Naruto opened his mouth to dispute how he didn't need any help, that just a really long cloak would be adequate, when Samui laid a hand on his shoulder and spoke, of course Rakage sama we'll complete this mission to the best of our ability. Naruto was then pulled out of the room by Samui and surprisingly even Kairo by his hands. Turning back, he saw the smirking face of the Rakage and began cursing him out under his breath as the deep-seated chuckles came from the massive man. Triple X. Two hours later. 
Arriving back in the tower, Naruto's eyes were well hidden by his new apparel that his female companions so readily picked out for him. Amoe was simply standing in the background with an amused look on his face. Naruto stood in front of the rakage while the women stood back with satisfied looks on their faces. Samui because she got to see what the new guy looked like underneath his shirt by accident, and Kairo because she had just spent the last two hours more or less ordering around the guy that had thrashed her soundly the other day. Naruto's new look was a sleeveless hooded grey vest that draped far enough over his face to cover all of his features, except for his mouth, in shadow, his pants were black and taped off at the ankles, he kept the black bracers on his forearms, and had black shinobi sandals on his feet. Naruto smirked as he formed a cross symbol with his fingers, one last touch to my identity, cage bunshine no jutsu, shadow clone jutsu. A clone of Naruto sprang into existence and promptly transformed into what he wore when he came to Kumagakura in the first place, go and find Genma, Kotetsu, and Izumo and stay with them until the execution is over, then leave the area and dispel so I can change and catch up with them. His cage bunshine nodded and left the room to find his team while the original turned back to A with a toothy grin, shadow covering the rest of his face, now where's my victim for the day? QB's getting testy. Triple X. Naruto sat meditating in his hotel room after carrying out the execution of Kenta Marishio. The reason he needed to steady his mind this time? Random happenings of an unexpected nature occurring around his person. Not to say that the happenings in question were unwanted. No not in the least, they were very welcome as far as he was concerned. But that didn't make them any less strange. The first was what had happened with his cage bunshine after he had it leave the premises of the execution site. Flashback, roughly 10 minutes after the execution. Naruto had wasted no time in leaving the immediate area after his creator's little show. Dispelling in front of the Kumo Shinobi might have blown his cover, which could lead to some ill will from them and maybe even retaliation somewhere down the line at a later time from angry nationalists that might have been thinking that Konoha was trying to push around some political weight that it didn't have. Clone Naruto went as far as he could, heading into the residential area of the village where he was positive that no one would see him dispel. In an alley he figured that he was as well concealed as he was going to be when a shadow blocked the alley entrance. Sighing to himself the clone focused to see that Samui and Kairo had followed him to the alley, what are you guys doing here? I need to dispel before boss gets caught, people can't realize that I was the one that did all of that yet. Samui looked down for a moment before stealing herself somewhat and walking closer to the clone, so anything that you know, Naruto will learn after you dispel? She asked, getting a nod in response, well then, when does he leave Kumo? The clone thought about it for a moment, I have no clue. I was never told how long we would be staying so your guess is as good as mine. Why do you want to know? And where is Amoe, did you guys ditch him? Kairo walked up, Amoe said he didn't need to be here for what we wanted to say to you. Say, if you don't have anything to do while you're still in the village why don't you come and find one of us? We can do something with you. Clone Naruto blinked, are they hitting on me? Sweet. Boss himself never even gets hit on and I'm just his freaking clone and two girls are trying it. Giving the girls a million dollar smile he gave them an answer, sure thing girls, and if you want to talk to me while I'm still here then you know where to find me right? Both girls nodded as Kairo gave him a smile, that's great. I guess we'll see you around then? Naruto nodded, sure thing. You two shouldn't be that hard to find right? I'll see you girls later. Kairo waved to him and left the alley. Samui lagged behind however, waiting until her teammate was out of sight before turning back to Naruto, Naruto-san. The clone held up his hand to stop her, Samui I'm sorry, but I can't take the sand stuff. You don't have to use any honorifics with me. Just call me Naruto, it's alright, I won't mind. Samui nodded and took a breath, looking somewhat nervous, a sharp contrast to what Naruto had come to expect from her personality. Quickly moving up close to him she planted a kiss on his cheek, I hope to see you soon Naruto-kun. As he watched the girl sway her hips somewhat as she left him in the alley a stupid grin rolled onto his face. Chuckling to himself, Naruto clone dispelled himself. And flashback. Yeah. He didn't see that coming. How the hell was he going to work that one out in the end? Who knows. But the ride down promised to be super fun if he would have his way with it. That seemed like enough to fill his day with suggestive thoughts of potential situations, and the silence that he was receiving from his inner fuzzy was much appreciated, he didn't need any perverted jokes or lewd suggestions from the QB today, thank you. Unfortunately, or very fortunately in the view of the certain others, Naruto included himself in this line of thinking, his day didn't end like that. Flashback, a few hours ago. 
Naruto had hustled back to his hotel room after receiving his clone's memories and changed back into the clothes that he had come to Kumo with. Couldn't be seen in the new stuff after going through all of the trouble of hiding the fact that it was you in the first place right? After washing the blood off of his body and changing a knock came at his door. Grabbing his sword and walking to answer it he opened it to find the smiling face of one Yugido Ni. This confused Naruto, as he hadn't really interacted with the girl at all since he had been in the village, save for the few minutes when they first met, hi there Yugito, how are you doing? Can I help you? Yugito nodded and Naruto motioned for her to enter the room. Yugito took a seat on one of the beds in the room and patted the spot next to her for Naruto to sit on. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the girl's cavalier attitude, but acquiesced to Yugito's silent request. Looking the girl over as he sat down now that he had time to let his eyes wander, he would agree with his earlier thought that Yugito was about four or so more years older than him, which begged the question, what was she doing here talking to him? He didn't sense any hostile intent coming from her so she wasn't here to fight, or challenge him or anything and with two girls from the village seemingly interested in him as it was, there was no way that another one was right? Especially one that was this hot and older than him. Naruto looked up into Yugito's eyes to get a beat on why she was there and just decided to come out with it and ask, so Yugito, what brings you here? Yugito smiled at him pleasantly again, well I just want to get to know you a bit Naruto-kun. Naruto almost gulped nervously, Naruto-kun? I had to force Samui to stop calling me San and Yugito's calling me Kun right off the bat? Getting himself under control he cleared his throat, well what do you want to know? I'll answer what I can, but I don't see why you would want to know anything about me. Yugito shook her head, you just don't recognize the fact that you're interesting to people do you? You're a respectably strong ninja even among Chunin and Jounin from the way your team treats you and you're only 13 years old. You're a Jinchuriki like me and Kiribai, and you don't seem utterly insane like he is. Naruto gave her a questioning look, speaking of which, you don't have any quirks on that kind of level do you? Because here there's Kiribai, and then in Konoha I've got two people that I know that can match as crazy, and all of these people seem to want to talk to me for some reason, it's like I attract eccentric people. Yugito giggled, no I don't have anything quirky like that Naruto-kun, and Kiribai is okay in doses, you just have to get used to him. She looked at him softly, I kind of want to know what makes you tick. You're a very good ninja, but you seem like such a nice person. Your diplomat doesn't seem to like you though from what Reikage sama told me. Naruto nodded, yeah most of Konoha's old fogies don't really see me in a good light. It's okay, if they really have a problem with me then they're all free to try and do something about it. I won't be their doormat or scapegoat though. I promise to protect Konoha itself, not necessarily the assholes in it, so in case anyone tries to pull any bullcrap on me they can get the same thing that guy got today. Yugito looked at him curiously, that was you? Who am I kidding, it makes sense. Who else is that short and allowed to carry out executions? So he tried to kill you? She got a nod in response, have people in Konoha tried? Naruto nodded, yeah, but not for a long time. I guess the stupid civilians got sick of getting their asses kicked by a kid and smartened up. You're right I am a nice guy, until you try to kill me, then I'm a complete bastard as Kenta Marishio could attest to, if I hadn't cleaved him into five segments. Yugito nodded, true, so tell me then. What makes Naruto Uzumaki tick? And flashback. Naruto and Yugito just spent the afternoon talking to one another. Yugito was actually a sweet girl that could relate on some level with Naruto, at first she wasn't trusted much either, but when Kiribai earned the people's trust by proxy his reputation trickled down to her somewhat as she also had gone through much for her village. She told Naruto that eventually his village would love him the way they loved Kiribai if he could just prove his skill and loyalty to them the way he did. Naruto heard the heartfelt way she spoke to him and didn't have the heart to tell the girl the reason that they would probably never fully trust him and that he would eternally be walking on eggshells around them. He was now forever linked to the QB, the thing that had come within a hair of destroying the entire village of Konoha. The only way that he would be able to earn their full respect would be if he somehow defeated an enemy that was terrorizing the village and killing countless villagers single-handedly when no one else could stop them but him or something, you know, a one in a million kind of scenario that only happens in manga and stuff. As they both noticed the sun starting to set, Yugito stood up and thanked Naruto for taking the time to speak to her. She also told him that if he wanted to find her for any reason at all she would always be free for a cutie like him. He had to fight down a blush on that one and had to stem blood flow to another place as he watched her leave the room and walk down the hall, because much like Samui she certainly made a show of it for him. Naruto couldn't believe it. 
the only interaction with these girls that he had so far up to this point had been crashing the rakage's office, kicking two of their asses with the other watching from a distance, and being arrested and hauled to the aforementioned rakage's office. How the fuck do those interactions get hot women like that to like me? I didn't do anything, was I really that badass? I was just being me. Naruto was thinking to himself, dude I can't even get a girl being a nice guy, albeit pretty dumb guy, back in Konoha for years, and here I just acted like a borderline psychopath and three girls just now showed interest in me. I guess that pretty boy Sasuke had it right after all, the more fucked up you seem the more women seem to flock to you. Kid if you really start thinking like that, the next time you come in here I'll chase you and eat you. Naruto heard from inside of his head. Kyuubi never really liked the Uchiha clan that much, even back before Naruto even met Sasuke, but it refused to elaborate on exactly why. After running through most of the interaction that he had with the boy Naruto just figured that it was his personality, it was certainly abrasive enough, just go with it. Whatever happens will happen. You're leaving soon anyway, you won't have to deal with it again for a while after this so go and spend some time with them, maybe you'll like one. And you really need to ditch all of these males that you're hanging around anyway. Naruto sweat dropped, you mean my team? QB grinned to itself, yeah. Kit your team is a sausage fest, go and find those girls tomorrow or I'll sing for the entire day out loud. Naruto's jaw dropped in horror, oh come on. Why would you do that? I didn't even piss you off. You haven't done anything like that in years, why now? Well your real memories were sealed up until a few months ago so the inside joke would have been lost on you. And you have pissed me off like that since then, but I've been very lenient. A pale hue covered Naruto's face, you were kidding right? You wouldn't do that to me would you? We're friends, well not really friends, but you get the point. Right? Hey Kit do you like wings? Wings? Love take me down to the streets. Love take me down to the streets. Cause when you don't get fed at home. You gotta give the dog his bone. Take our love into the streets. Several hours later Genma found Naruto lying on the hotel room floor frothing at the mouth mumbling lowly, that's not wings. Triple X. One week later. Despite not being trusted enough by Homura to actually protect him during this trip, Naruto found that there was plenty for him to do in a foreign village. On the first day he simply found Yugito and trained with her for the day. The girl was at first surprised that the boy was able to keep up with her, but remembered that he was no slouch and that the QB could pick up his slack if need be. Yugito even took it upon herself to teach him a lightning jutsu or two when he stated that the ones that he knew were very specialized. Naruto would have tried teaching her some wind maneuvers in return, but Yugito's elements were lightning and fire, and that made it hard for her to learn those techniques, she appreciated the effort though and said she'd keep trying to learn them. The second day he was quickly found by Kiribai and was forced to follow the man around Kumo all day running errands with the man. Errands consisted mostly of standing by while the man stood on top of the rakage tower while he tried rapping to the masses, he even introduced Naruto but, thankfully left out the Mr. Nine stuff. After that Naruto saw firsthand how beloved Kiribai actually was. There were kids coming up to him, some asking for his autograph, some asking him to do a rap, Naruto cringed when he actually went through with the request, hell there were kids trying to rap to him. It made him wonder if things could ever be like that for him, he smiled when he realized that it was getting there slowly, but it was. For better or worse he already had his own chibi brigade that followed him around whenever he was in town so that was step one it seems. The next part was when Kiribai went to his team's houses to tell them that he had a mission away from Kumo for a while so training was put off. He learned that Amoe and Cairo were related, he kind of didn't see that coming, they seemed too different to him. Their parents were dead so he could relate with them like that, though he wisely didn't bring that up, that would have been stupid. He simply played the straight man to Kiribai's over-the-top BS that he could tell was working on Kero's nerves. Upon departing from their house, Naruto probably had his moment of the day when Kiribai actually broke into Samui's home when she didn't answer the door. While Kiribai was roaming the house looking for the girl, Naruto simply stood in a hallway waiting for the eccentric man to give up so they could go. While he was standing there he was graced with the sight of Samui emerging from her bathroom after a shower, clad in only a towel, and that was enough for Naruto's mind to get to work. Strangely enough, Naruto didn't get the beating for that, Kiribai did. Naruto dragged the man out of the house in pieces while apologizing and explaining to Samui who just looked at him with a blush on her face. After dragging Kiribai to the curb outside of her house he even offered her a massage as an apology, somewhat jokingly, mostly just to see what she would do, he was either expecting a stuttering decline to his offer or a rage-filled chase with her still clad in a towel which would have been great. 
After a slightly shocked look she smirked at him and invited him inside, yep. Good day to be the kid. The next day Naruto decided that seeing Samui would have been somewhat detrimental to his health after basically seeing her naked the day before so he simply stayed in the hotel room. Izumo and Kotetsu eventually made their way to the room and ended up playing poker with Naruto. The end result was Naruto taking all of their money, plus IOUs from both men and the amount of their mission paychecks, another good day to be the kid. Kairo and Amoe found Naruto the next day after training him and dragged him out of his house to show him Kumo so that he knew what he would want to do next time instead of just training and staying in his room. Running into their teammate Samui later on they decided to make a day of it and ended up seeing a movie. Naruto didn't really care about the movie as he ended up spending the majority of it working on his growing flirting skills. Mostly with Samui, but also with Kairo when he was certain that he wouldn't be hit for it. The end of that day saw him sitting on the roof of his hotel listening to Yugito play her shamisen for him, as she had asked if she could a few days before and Naruto agreed, wanting to hear someone else besides him play an instrument and also thankful that her innate musical talents came in the form of a more pleasant instrument to relax too, unlike him and his apparent skill with drums. That marked his last day in Kumo as negotiations on this end of the table had ended and Konoha had to leave and receive word on the results while simultaneously preparing for a representative from Kumo to come in the near future. Triple X. After hunting down all of the people that he had ended up getting on good terms with during his stay in Kumo and saying goodbye, Naruto and his team set out for home, with Homura once again in a carriage that was steered by Genma. Kotetsu yawned as he kept in pace with the carriage rolling down the paths, man, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I miss gate duty. Naruto snickered to himself, well you do tend to feel fondness for things that you do well, I guess you would miss that job huh? Kotetsu glared at the blonde boy, hey, don't knock gate duty. It's a steady, easy job, your friends can come and talk to you when they want to, you get the gossip from all of the good missions firsthand and before anyone else, and the people watching is amazing. Izumo looked over at Naruto, so Naruto, are you going to try and join Anbu? From what I've heard and from what I've seen you might not be too bad at it. Naruto held back the urge to roll his eyes, Bachan won't let me do it. Oh well, it's not like I need to jump back into the direct murdering of people yet, as long as I keep getting strong enough for those Akatsuki losers then I'll be fine. Whatever happens, happens, just like the fox says. Turning to answer his partner's question he smiles, I'm in no rush. I'm only 13, unless you want another Itachi-esque prodigy to rise up so you can say you worked with me when I get famous. Izumo and Kotetsu snorted with laughter and even Genma cracked a smile from his place on the carriage, whatever you say kid. Naruto grinned to himself, yeah. Things will get hectic enough all on their own. I'm in no real rush. Chapter 18, Home is where the what? The amassed team of Genma Shiranui, Naruto Uzumaki, Kotetsu Hagane, and Izumo Kamazuki stood in front of the Hokaye's desk, having just given their report on the mission to Kumo. Tsunade had to rub her forehead at the report, Naruto. How do you get arrested in Kumo after being there for four hours tops? Naruto shrugged, Hokage-sama, Murphy's Law just loves me like that I guess. Come on now, are you really surprised by this point that this stuff happens to me even when I don't instigate it? You should know this by now. Tsunade sighed and waved it off, alright, other than the extracurricular activities of someone here, she said while looking at Naruto, good work. You're all dismissed and have a few days of leave. The group nodded and turned to leave, Naruto you stay, Tsunade said before he could exit the office. Naruto turned back around to face the blonde woman, can I talk to you for a moment? Naruto walked back over to her desk and leaned on it, what do you need Bachan? The toothy grin on his face let her know that he knew this was personal more than anything else, I need to get some sleep and then head into my favorite place to get some destructive new jutsu down. Tsunade shook her head in amusement, alright brat, I asked you before, but I'm going to try it again. How strong do you think you are? Naruto raised an eyebrow, in a straight up fight or when I get the drop on somebody? Tsunade blinked, both if you know. Naruto though about it, well I'm good enough from the shadows to kill one of Orochimaru's bodyguards before he even knew I was there, and I can stay hidden in an enemy stronghold for months at a time if I had to, I don't really like that though, it's nerve-wracking. He started pacing around her office, what would you rank Orochimaru's right-hand man Kabuto and Kimimaro Kaguya if you had to? Tsunade understood where he was going with that. It was hard to rank yourself, so he was comparing himself to others, both of them would be considered Jounin level. Naruto nodded, I don't really count Kabuto though, he didn't try fighting me for real until I had him beaten so I only have experience against one Jounin level ninja since my promotion. 
you just promoted me like two months ago, are you really looking to do it again so soon? Tsunade picked up Genma's written report from the desk, all of your teammates have stated that you might make a good candidate in the future for Anbu. I already figured that you would be a Jounin in a year or two if you keep growing. Now enough about that, what did you actually do in Kumo, your report says that you spent some time with a few of the people there but you didn't elaborate at all. Naruto sat down in a chair and smiled at Tsunade. She was very good to him after he had brought her back to Konoha. It was something akin to a sibling-esque relationship, she was his boss, but she legitimately cared about him. Naruto was very grateful to her for this, he probably would do anything in his power that Tsunade asked of him, even if he didn't directly answer to her, I beat up an entire team of Kumo Chunin that challenged me to a spar after my arrest, by the way there were two girls on that team and they seemed to like me. I met Kumo's two Jinchuriki. One of them is utterly insane, like on the level of Lee and Guy, insane, but the other one is a few years older than me and she's hot. She's a sweetheart too. Tsunade's eyes gleamed, finally I might have some ammunition on the brat. Drink yourself into a stupor without me will you? I'll show you. So what else brat? Naruto ignored the look as he kept listing things off, let's see, I made Kotetsu and Izumo give themselves alcohol burns on their testicles, I want all of their money, by the way place their paychecks for the mission in my name, and some guy tried to kill me. Oh. And I also. What? Tsunade almost roared at him, someone tried to kill you? Who? Did Kumo order? Naruto had to place his hands on her shoulders to calm her down, whoa, whoa. Calm down Ba-chan it's okay. He tried to kill me, but he got captured by the Reikage's forces and I got to execute him the next day. Tsunade raised an eyebrow, that was in the report wasn't it? So what did you do? Naruto sat back down and leaned back in his chair, I had him hanged, drawn, and quartered. I did it myself. That method of execution hadn't been done since the Second Great Ninja War. Particularly brutal method that, how do you even know how to do something like that? Naruto let out a cough that sounded suspiciously like Rude and Tsunade ended up nodding in understanding. Naruto stood up and stretched, so where's Uro Senen? Is he here so I can start my training or am I on my own for the time being? Tsunade shook her head, he's out gathering information on a lead on the Akatsuki, trying to find out exactly what they need the QB for, he's also trying to find out who other members are. He'll be back in a few months, I'll clear your schedule for that point in time and let you know in advance. Naruto made a grunt of affirmation and walked towards the window, all right then, like I said before, I'm going home, taking a nap, getting some food, and then I'll be spending some quality time in the forest of death in order to avoid collateral damage from the training I'm going to go do. If you need to find me then that's where I'll be. Tsunade turned her head as he walked past her, brat take the door for crying out loud. Naruto grinned as he pulled the window open, what was that Ba-chan? The wind is kind of heavy today, did you say doors are for losers? Because I agree with you wholeheartedly on that front. Tell Shizun Nietzsche and I said hi. With that, Naruto jumped out of the open window and vanished in a sunshine. Tsunade slapped her forehead, great. Now both the brat and the pervert get their jollies from going in and out of the window. Triple X. Naruto opened his apartment door and wasted no time in dropping face first on his couch with a massive sigh, sigh I need a bigger house. Naruto simply lay still face down while his door opened silently and slowly. The figure crept through the living room until Naruto's voice rang out, if you want to keep all of your limbs attached I would stop moving forward if I were you. Wow shithead, nice to see you too. Naruto lifted his head and rolled over to get an eyeful of Tuya, Tuya-chan? What are you doing in my apartment? Tuya rolled her eyes, I heard your door open and heard your loud ass buffalo noise when you dropped on the couch. What, are you not happy to see me? Naruto shook his head, confused, it's not that, it's just, what are you doing here? Tuya gave him a grin, I live in the complex. I'm actually right next door to you shithead. Surprise. Naruto's jaw dropped as he mulled around what she had just said in his head, so you're out of confinement? He got a nod in response, and they're letting you stay? Another nod, and you actually chose to live in this complex of all places? Tuya sighed, listen up, I'm an Otto Kunoichi shithead. There isn't a person in this place that isn't paranoid about me, you're the only person that would treat me decently, therefore I want to stay close to you until things look up for me. Naruto sat up straight on the couch, if you want I can help you booby trap your place if you're worried about that. Tuya let out a laugh, maybe later shithead. So where have you been? Naruto moved over and let her sit down as he stood up and walked to the kitchen, I was in Kumo. It was just a guard detail, 
nothing really strenuous, I kept active and I learned something pretty cool that I need to go test out full scale later, I was going to go train. Tuya frowned, who the fuck trains right after they get back from a mission. Give it a day at least. Kami, do you ever rest? Naruto grinned at her as he began boiling water for his ramen, not really. I've got things to prepare for, I can rest when I'm dead. Tuya walked over and poked Naruto in the chest, listen up, I've been spending time with two full-fledged medic ninja and one that's in training and that kind of ended up beating some basic fucking knowledge into my head. Don't push yourself, I know you're some kind of demonically rage a whole fueled juggernaut of energy, but everyone needs downtime. Naruto rolled his eyes, Tuya chan I just got through with resting before I took the last mission. It's not like I'm burning out, how could I? I'm 13. Naruto stopped stirring the ramen he was making and placed the spoon in her hand, stir. I need to go get something. Tuya grumbled, but carried out Naruto's request, stupid shithead making me stir his stupid fucking ramen. Language. Naruto walked back into the kitchen with a smirk, ignoring Tuya's muttering of fuck you, now what would you do if you had your flute back? You wouldn't try to kill me again would you? Tuya gave him a deadpan look, arm still stirring his ramen, I can't beat you even with a flute. Orochimaru made us specialize when we were training, Genjutsu is what I'm best at and you can walk right through it. Besides, I like Konoha a hell of a lot more than Odogakur, here I don't have to worry about some goon trying to take advantage of me when I let my guard down. Naruto nodded, good answer. Here. He threw something at her from behind his back. Tuya caught it and went wide-eyed, my flute. But I lost it during the fight. A snickering laugh came from Naruto as he took the spoon back from Tuya and kept stirring while he turned his stove off, who do you think took it from you in the first place? What, did you think I just dropped it in the forest and left it there? I've been keeping it. Tuya just kept looking between her flute and Naruto who just kept on grinning, now you can register as a ninja for the village and can get a rank higher than Janan and avoid the grunt work of D-ranked missions. He noticed she hadn't moved yet, are you happy? She nodded, good. You can go on home and start cataloging your jutsu for tomorrow. Tuya nodded and walked out of Naruto's apartment almost zombie-like, eliciting laughter from the boy as she shut the door behind her. Grabbing a bowl for his ramen he smiled to himself, glad to help Tuya-chan. Triple X. The next day. Naruto's personal obstacle course of death that had used to hone his reflexes and increase his speed since he had gotten his memories back wasn't really an obstacle course at all. Naruto would make a random number of cage bunshine and send them out into the heavily wooded areas of the forest of death and have them set traps, hide themselves in order to attack him during his dash, attract animals that had the potential to harm him, and anything else his twisted clones could think of to hurt him. He would make the clones, meditate for three hours, then he would begin his deadly game. Naruto would traverse the rugged terrain back and forth five times each. Each time was a length of 5 kilometers from a starting point in the forest to the gate leading to the outside and was fraught with peril. His clones were utterly ruthless in their attack and despite their one hit limit that they could all take they were more of hit and run type attackers, engaging Naruto himself when he was not expecting attack and fighting to kill. In route they would do the same, only with real people so it was never as many as it was when Naruto used cage bunshine. It was also done in a long corridor that Donzo manipulated to his liking for whatever situation you were training for. This training was twofold. Not only did it allow Naruto to train himself on speed, evasion, and trap detection, it also worked on Naruto's ability to set traps and ambushes. Being able to see both sides of the conflict, both from his own view and from the memories of his cage bunshine, allowed him to analyze what he did right and wrong on both fronts, and to adjust for using the traps on other ninja in real-life combat situations. After finishing his warm-up, Naruto called his remaining cage bunshine out into a clearing and made even more around 300 or so. Looking at them all he began barking orders, split into five even groups. The clones scrambled to follow his orders, breaking off into five groups in even rows, first set of you, find a spot and get to splitting leaves, any review work is still very much needed. Also I want you to work on kunai balancing. Pointing to the next group he continued, you all will go back through our jutsu catalog and start getting down the ones that we still can't do. He looked at the last group, you all will be on stealth detail you will be following people of interest and shadowing them. Do not get caught, this is on my reputation here. I expect some cool memories upon your dispelling at sunset. Now go. Naruto cracked his neck and made his way deep inside the forest for some live fire combat training, oh spiders. You and I still have a gripe. Triple X. Teammates training for the day was driven to say the least. 
Ever since Kiba and Shino's humiliating one-sided losses at the hands of Naruto, both had been training hard to catch up to the boy that had blown right past them. Kiba worked on his speed and combination tactics with Akamaru and was also trying to teach the puppy how to better defend himself in case they ended up being separated or one of them went down in battle. After hearing how Naruto dealt with the majority of the Sound 4 with little to no effort in the least and how he himself instead had to be saved at the last second by Neji and Konkuro, Kiba resolved to somehow get to the blonde's level. Shino was inspired by a combination of his crushing defeat by Naruto and the knowledge of the Sasuke retrieval mission that had failed. It was almost a prerequisite by this point for all Jounin sensei to venture to the site of Naruto's battle with Kimimaro with their Janan cells in order to either inspire them to work harder, or to let them know just how powerful Naruto was. The sight of the countless bone spires sticking out of the ground, and the knowledge that Naruto was able to outlast such an enemy on his own planet a seed into Shino's head that if he didn't want to be left behind even more than he already had been then he needed to improve and fast. Kurenai watched as her two students stood at opposite ends of the training ground with her lone female charge standing between them. In a blur, Kiba and Akamaru charged the blue-haired girl and launched the Gatsuaga directly at her. On her other side, Shino unleashed a torrent of insects at her. Opening her eyes with her Byakugan active she began spinning and directing her hands in precise and exact locations all around her. A field of chakra as precise as lasers surrounded her body, bouncing Kiba off and actually shredding Shino's Kikai insects on contact. Kurenai had to smile as her most timid student had come up with her own technique on par with the Hyuga clan's Hakshu Kaiden. The Shugo Haki Rakuju Ayon show, protection of the 8 trigram 64 palms, was more tailored towards Hinata's flexibility than the rigid form that the Kaiden required from its users. The fact that she came up with the technique on her own without help, except to test its development was incredible to Kurenai. Kiba stood up from where he was launched off, holding his head that had a gash on it but with a smile on his face as his Ninkin came bounding up to him, wow Hinata, that was rough. And you're saying that it's not finished yet? Hinata smiled as she turned off her Byakugan and dropped her stance, no, it's close though. I'm not sure what it would do against an attack from all sides the level of your Gatsuaga, but when focused in just a few areas it should be fine. Kurenai smiled, at least Naruto's utter thrashing of everyone's Janan in front of the entire village did good things for the majority of them, Hinata's stuttering had all but vanished, she had learned that things with Neji were getting better, even her father was beginning to improve Hinata that was very impressive. When that jutsu is complete it should be B rank if not A rank. A blush came to the girl's face but she gave a firm nod. Shino walked over and despite not giving away any expression nodded his agreement that he was very proud of her, thank you Kurenai sensei. The words of one particular blonde boy rang out clear in her mind as she felt like she was finally making strides for herself, I wonder what you would think Naruto-kun. Triple X. Team Guy leapt through the tree limbs of the Forest of Death. They had been assigned a rare C-ranked mission inside the village gates. Recently there had been reports of an increased amount of loud noises coming from the Forest of Death over the last few months, which was quite impressive considering the size of the place, and when Anko Mitarashi had been brought in for questioning it was evident that it wasn't her disrupting the peace, so this mission had been commissioned to discover what was going on. Now Team Guy had no idea seeing as Hatsunade, the only other person besides Anko that knew who liked to frequent that place, wasn't forthcoming with the info that everyone's favorite blonde kid had a habit of raising cane within the gates of the dangerous forest, thus the team lead by the green-clad taijutsu ace had next to no idea what they were getting into. Guy led the group, followed by Neji, who was flanked on both sides by Lee and Tenten. Lee had never even heard of a C-ranked mission inside of the village, thus why he was excited, more excited than usual, Yosh. What do you think could be causing such a ruckus in the forest? I have heard of all kinds of amazing animals within the forest, but did not get to see any during our first foray within with the exception of my youthful squirrel friend. I wonder how he is doing? Ten Ten tried to calm the hyper guy clone down, Lee please be quiet. We didn't come across any of the weird things in here last time because we were careful. Don't go screaming your head off in here or who knows what you'll bring down on us. Lee opened his mouth to retort in a youthful fashion, but Guy turned his head to give Lee a firm look, Lee, Tenten -ten is right. You may have made your way through the woods before, but you should count yourself lucky that you didn't come across any of the creatures in this place. I don't care if we are inside of the village, treat this like a hostile environment because it is. Even Jounin are somewhat wary of entering this place. Lee gulped and nodded after being reprimanded by Guy. Neji squinted and spoke up, Guy sensei I am seeing countless human life forms in an upcoming clearing. Guy nodded and looked back at his Janan once more, prepare yourselves, when we enter the area who knows what will be here. Getting a nod from his students, Guy turned back ahead. 
The group's mojo was disrupted however when Neji face fell onto one of the branches, forcing his team to halt. Ten Ten jumped back and helped the boy stand up, Neji Kun, what's wrong? Are you okay? Neji nodded as he stood up and started jumping forward, ahead of the rest of the team, ignoring Guy's cries to come back. Pushing his way into the clearing he found a mass of Naruto clones, diligently at work spamming jutsu all over the place, some dispelling from lack of chakra, but otherwise it was something that the young Hyuga genius had never seen before. His team came up right behind him and were stuck staring at the scene before them much like Neji was. Ten Ten looked at the clones wide-eyed, W what is going on? Naruto-kun? He's everywhere. Lee's eyes were ablaze with youth, Yosh, such a youthful training program. I must spar with Naruto-kun. Lee took off into the massive hard at work clones, stopping in front of the first one, scaring the hell out of it and forcing it to electrocute itself with one of the jutsu Naruto had learned in Kumo and blow up in a puff of smoke. This forced all of the other Naruto replications to take notice of just who it was that intruded on their session. Lee ran up to another one and dropped into his stance, Naruto-kun my eternal rival, I request a spar with you to stoke both of our flames of youth. The clones all looked at each other until one spoke up, um. We're all clones. Boss just told us to work on his jutsus until we dispelled from lack of chakra. He's out further in the forest getting even with those stupid spiders. The clones all broke into a smattering of chatter, mostly circulating around how the original Naruto was going to go medieval on those spiders' asses and how they all wished they could be there to fight too. Guy listened into what was being said, so you're saying that Naruto-kun is deeper in the forest. Getting a collective yep from the clones he continued, and he's actively trying to provoke the more dangerous wildlife just for training? They all nodded as one clone spoke up, yeah, I mean you're saying that like it's a bad thing. Sure there's a shitload of spiders in this forest, but they have to realize that they can't win after he slaughters like a few dozen of them right? Guy paled, concerning his Shinan, clone-kun, no one knows exactly how many of certain creatures this forest has especially the spiders, there are reports from Anbu of nests under the ground with countless amounts of them, and they're highly aggressive in nature. The clones scoffed, well we could have told you that. Those eight-legged fucks mess with us every time we come in here to train. We have to divert clones just to keep a lookout and as extermination squads in case the bastards get too close. Guy palmed his forehead, clone coon you're not getting it. These spiders mature at an absurd rate, and they reproduce far too quickly. If your original is out there killing them for sport then he is in grave danger. Which way did he go? The clones all pointed northeast, to the bad spot where we know the spiders hang out. Like I said, we have a gripe with those bastards. Knock over two barrels of my sake will they? Guy turned to his team, we have to go get Naruto-kun out of there. Prepare for a battle, be fast and precise against the enemy, those spiders are fast, strong, and ruthless. Kill them and move on. Neji and Tenten nodded while Lee was fired up, Yosh. Let's go save Naruto-kun. Triple X. Elsewhere in Konoha. Sakura smiled as the fish on her table flopped back into the water. Her skill with the Shousen Jutsu was growing every day. Soon Tsunade said she would be able to begin working on creatures with bones closer to humans. The last few months since her training began had been great for Sakura. Despite being harder than anything she had done before she could now see a reason why Rock Lee and others trained so hard. The feeling of succeeding after working on something for so long was well worth the effort put in. Good work Sakura. Sakura turned to see Tsunade had been overseeing her work with a smile, you're getting better and better at the basic techniques. After you master most of the medical techniques I can begin teaching you my strength amplifying technique, now let's work on your taijutsu. You need to be able to keep yourself in one piece and defeat your opponents quickly as a medic ninja. For now we'll begin working on your elusiveness and I'll teach you form later. Sakura nodded with a determined look on her face. She wouldn't be the weakest link ever again if she had any say in her own skill. Triple X. Team Asuma had just returned to the village after a B-rank mission. Ino was groaning loudly while rolling her neck, I'm so glad we're done with that mission. I need a hot shower and some rest. Asum smirked as he took a drag of his cigarette, good work with those bandits team. Shikamaru, good work with the plan, it went off without a hitch. Choji, you're coming along nicely with your family techniques. Ino looked at her sensei expectantly who looked at her for a moment before speaking up, Ino that was a good use of Shitenshin no Jutsu to scout out the camp, I was sure that you wouldn't use that Jutsu again for quite some time after what happened the last time. All of you, take the rest of the day off and meet me at our training field tomorrow. 
With that the bearded Jounin walked towards the Hokage Tower to give his report to Tsunade about the mission. Choji looked between his teammates, Hey, do you guys want to get some barbecue before we go home? Shikamaru chuckled and patted his friend on the shoulder, Sure thing Choji, let's go Eno. The group found their way and ended up in a booth shortly. After placing their orders, the team started to converse, with Shikamaru launching out the first question, Eno, you never told us why you stopped using Shitenshin no Jutsu after the fight with Naruto in the first place. Did he have some kind of defense like Sakura had that actually hurt you? Eno hugged herself slightly, yeah, but it wasn't really a straightforward kind of thing. Naruto's mind is strange. It looked just like Konoha, every inch of it was to scale. No one had a mind that extensive. Choji squealed happily as the beef was placed in front of him. He wasted no time in throwing the meat on the grill while Shikamaru kept asking Ino his questions, so just being in Konoha in the guy's mind freaked you out? That's kind of weak Ino. The platinum blonde growled at him as she placed her own meat onto the grill, that's not all that happened. I was wandering around for a bit when I felt the presence of something chasing me, I remembered what happened with Sakura and took off running. It corralled me to Naruto's apartment and left me there. I never saw it, but I could feel its presence the entire time. Shikamaru raised an eyebrow, his apartment? You're not telling me everything Ino. Ino shook her fist at him, I'm trying to tell a story here you blockhead. She glared at him when a troublesome slipped from the pineapple-haired boy, his TV was on in the apartment, and I thought that was central control, the thing in everyone's mind that allows you to gain control after you use the jutsu, but it was his memories, or what seemed like memories, it had to be some kind of trick. It was already queued up to one in particular. It had Naruto running through an entire ballroom full of people like a hot knife through butter. It was the single most terrible thing I had ever seen, and when I started watching it I felt like I was actually there. I could hear the directions of the screams, the panic of the people trying to escape, I could smell the blood that spilled out on the ground and everything. Choji paused in his eating for a minute before shrugging off that mental image and continuing to chow down. Ino continued her description of Naruto's memories, that was just the first one, and I couldn't turn it off. I was in his body while this strange silent man in a mask just beat him while he was tied to a chair, he never spoke, he just kept hitting him and hitting him for hours until all I could see through his view was blood. All of the memories I saw were just like that, I finally had enough and cancelled the jutsu. Shikamaru just stared at the girl, wow, that's kind of hardcore. You felt everything happen as if you were there? That means that it wasn't a trick or anything, you really were in Naruto's memories doesn't it? Ino shook her head, Naruto couldn't have been any older than 7 or 8 years old when any of the things I saw happened. If it wasn't a trick then I sure as hell can't believe that those things were his actual memories. Those were things that dad told me the Anbu did on a regular basis. There's no conceivable way that while we were preparing for the academy, Naruto was taking on Anbu level missions. That just doesn't make sense. Shikamaru stayed silent and pondered Ino's words, the things that Naruto did when he fought everyone, those techniques, that fighting style, the way he carried himself. All of those things didn't just come out of nowhere. Triple X. Forest of Death. With game faces on, Team Guy headed into the restricted area of the Forest of Death where the level of peril went up. The forest grew darker, and it wasn't just because the sun was setting, the canopy was beginning to completely block out the sunlight above. Faint sounds of inhuman screeching rang out in the distance and was growing ever closer. The tense waiting was broken when the blonde that they were looking for flew past them into a tree, followed by the biggest spider that any of the Janan had ever seen before, it was easily the size of a full-grown adult male and had launched itself at Naruto, fangs dripping venom. Naruto pulled up his ninjato and drove it right through the spider's face, sending the blood of the arachnid spraying all over the place. Swinging his blade upwards with a burst of wind chakra to bolster it he cut straight through the deadly creature. Spitting on the corpse of the spider he turned to Team Guy, Oh sweet Kami, what are you all doing here? Do you know where you are? Lee ran up to Naruto, we've come to protect you Naruto-kun. We'll get you out of here in one piece, it's a promise. Guy walked up to the two, it's as Lee said, we've come to get you out of here before the sun goes down. Come on Naruto-kun, let's escape. Naruto looked at Neji and Tenten who were both serious, but otherwise fully calm. He shook his head, Guy-sensei is this the first time that you've ever come this far inside of the forest of death? Guy nodded and Naruto sighed you guys have no idea what you're getting into. Neji activate your Byakugan and tell me what you see. Neji did as instructed and gasped as he shakily spoke up, I see at least a dozen of the spiders that Naruto just fought surrounding the area, watching us. Naruto nodded as he saw the other Janan pale, 
That's why I don't tell anyone that I train here. There's no one that I would feel safe putting into this kind of situation. I come in here to fight against opponents that are willing to fight and kill me. I can't take on people, but if I want to split a spider in half there are always a few dozen skulking around this place. It's the closest thing to simulating a real full-pitched battle against a vicious enemy that you can get, definitely not for Janan. Naruto propped his ninjato on his shoulder, since you're here now I have to cut this session short. I was going to keep going until midnight and then make a mad dash out of here to escape, but having you guys show up has forced me to skip straight to the bat out of hell rush that I was planning for later. You guys brought too many of them here. They'll come in waves to try and wear us down. You fight until I tell you to run and you follow me out. Keep your eyes peeled when we break out, those sneaky bastards like to hide in the canopy and jump you from the shadows. Ten Ten had to choke down her fear at the situation and brandish kunai when Naruto placed his hand on hers, Naruto-kun what are you doing? Naruto's eyes darted around the area, you're going to need something bigger than those. That will just piss them off. Kami, I just had to get stuck in this situation with a team of taijutsu specialists. None of you know any jutsu or how to use your element with your fighting do you? Lee blinked at him in confusion, will taijutsu not work on them Naruto-kun? Naruto looked at Guy and Lee. If you can generate enough force to crush the exoskeleton then it can, but you don't want to stay up close with these things unless you can smash them in one shot. Guy shot Naruto a shiny smile, Naruto-kun, it's time to show you what good old-fashioned hard work and youth can do. Lee and I will have no trouble dealing with these spiders with our taijutsu. Neji how about you? Neji stood in his juke and stance, if they have a chakra system, and they do, I can fight and kill them. Naruto looked at Ten Ten who put her kunai up and unsealed a battle axe from a scroll, I'm ready. Naruto stared at her blankly, Ten Ten, you can use an axe? That's awesome. The first spider saw a moment of weakness and jumped from the trees at the group. Naruto jumped in the air and gave the spider a wide berth while swinging his blade. Extending the end of his sword with wind chakra he cut right through the spider and landed on the ground, you fucking eight-legged pieces of shit just don't get it yet do you? Naruto formed two cage bunshine to watch his back as he ran directly towards the closest spiders that would jump at him. He cut out one of the spider's legs from under it using a one-handed swing while simultaneously driving a Rasengan into the torso of another, carving into it with the force of a drill, sending guts all over the place, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me. Naruto's clones ran to back him up as three more spiders emerged from the surrounding area to attack. The giant arachnids were now extremely wary of Naruto's sword seeing as how it had been his weapon of choice for the entire day's events. Getting sick of how the spiders were avoiding him he ripped a sword from one of his cage bunshine's hands and threw it at one while enhancing it with wind chakra, impaling it against a tree and killing it. Hey! That was mine! Was the indignant cry from the victim clone. The original just shrugged before the three Naruto's scattered due to being double teamed by the two other spiders. The original and the clone that still had his blade engaged the spiders, with the clone being far more conservative with its way of fighting as one bad shot could dispel it. The original simply ran some misdirection and cleaved all four legs on one side of his spider off. Before running off to assist some of Team Guy he planted an explosive note on the nearly helpless spider, forcing it to explode in a shower of guts. While he was judging which one of the team required assistance he ended up being blindsided by the spider that had dispelled his cage bunshine and sent sprawling along the ground by the powerful creature. The giant spider skittered closer to the boy before one of the more sizable tree limbs from above came crashing down on top of it, killing not only that one spider, but two more hiding in the background. Naruto's other cage bunshine landed on top of the tree limb with his sword that Naruto had thrown in hand, Hey boss. I found my sword. Naruto nodded, Good work. I'm going to help the others. You wait for an opening to escape. Dispel when you see an opportunity to leave. The clone nodded and went off to stay out of the fight while the original Naruto headed into Team Guy's melee to assist. Neji was not having much of a problem keeping the spiders off of him, he would use Kaiden whenever he started getting swarmed, but he was finding it hard to finish them off. The spiders seemed to have so many Tenketsu in their legs that it would take too many shots just to incapacitate one and when he attempted to just hit it straight on somewhere vital they would use their incredible agility to simply dodge and avoid a fatal strike. Few Uten, Few Ujin Seiken, Wind Release, Divine Fist of the Wind God. To Neji's shock, two spiders were sent flying. One off into the distance, deep into the forest, the other hit a tree with crushing force, turning it into a stain before the tree itself cracked and fell over. Naruto ran over to him, sword drawn, giving the boy a slight nod. Neji eyed the one remaining spider of this pack, 
Naruto I can finish this one off. Go help Ten Ten or Lee. Naruto heard his tone of voice and figured arguing or pulling rank on him would have just earned him some of the Hyuga boy's ire. When Naruto left, Neji ran at the spider that backed up to get some spring into its legs for a pounce. Neji saw this coming and when it launched itself at him he slid underneath the spider's belly, hitting it in the spots that were harder to get, but were guaranteed to finish the monster spider off. The spider tripped over its own legs and onto its back, kicking for a moment before crinkling its legs inward and dying. Neji smirked to himself before going off to find one of his superiors. Ten Ten was having an easier time with her fighting. The spiders were knowledgeable about human weaponry and about the differences between male and female humans. Well the sight of a girl with an axe did not compute for most of the spiders that saw Ten Ten as an easy kill swinging that giant thing around. Too bad for them they didn't figure that she could actually swing that damn thing pretty fast, and was very good at timing their attacks. Each swing from the girl took out something, good thing it did too, that heavy axe was an energy sapper. Naruto stood in a pile of four or five spiders, so I guess you're doing okay for the time being? Ten Ten gave him a tired smile and a thumbs up while leaning on the handle of her weapon, I was scared at first, but these spiders are kind of weak. But there are so many of them. Naruto nodded while watching out for her, giving her some time to rest for a moment, they aren't supposed to cause any ninja better than an academy fresh Janan any trouble one on one, but they're persistent, ruthless, and they just keep coming. Hell I make a game out of counting them as I kill them. Ten Ten raised a delicate eyebrow at that, what's the highest you've ever gotten? Naruto thought about it as he watched Neji finish off a spider, well I got started earlier than usual in the day this time and I could swear that I was bearing down on some kind of record when you guys showed up. I lost count though I think it was getting up past 200 of them. Ten Ten's jaw dropped, 200 of these things? There are really that many that you can kill 200 before we even get here and still be worried about us attracting too many to you? Both noticed Neji coming to their side and all three of them looked at what the two more eccentric members of Team Guy were getting into. Yosh. Guy sensei who knew that this mission would turn into such a splendid battle. For Naruto kun to seek out a challenge such as this, I truly have selected the appropriate choice for my eternal rival. Lee ducked under the pounce of one of the spiders before launching himself at two more Konoha Daisenpu, Leaf Great Whirlwind. Lee unleashed a torrent of high speed kicks at the oversized arachnids, smashing them into a nearby massive tree. Guy cracked one of the spiders with an axe kick that simply made it collapse in a heap. Lee, Use this as an exercise. Naruto-kun. How many of these creatures did you fell? Naruto watched the two identical taijutsu users seemingly having a blast fighting these damn things, you mean since you've shown up, or since noon? Because that's when I started. Guy sent Naruto a gleaming smile, I believe in my Lee. Let's go with this afternoon. Naruto, Tenten, and Neji looked at each other before Neji and Naruto shrugged. Tenten sighed and answered him, Guy-sensei, Naruto-kun says that he's killed around 200 of them since he came in here. Guy stood seemingly shaking in place. Naruto thought that the number of spiders he killed had pissed Guy off, he didn't know Guy was all for arachnid rights, how was he supposed to know? Guy turned to Naruto with flaming, tearful eyes, however impossible that seems, such a youthful, combat-filled day. Lee. In order to defeat your rival you have to defeat more than 200 of our eight-legged enemies. Lee's eyes blazed over in a similar fashion, yes guy sensei. And if I cannot best my rival Naruto's number of spiders slain then I will do 500 push-ups on my thumbs. With one last battle cry, Lee ran into an area where spiders were waiting for an ambush. Naruto palmed his head as he watched Lee begin ripping into the spiders with fists and feet, you guys are going to bring the whole damn population of the things on us. Look, we need to get out of here. The more you kill, the more show up. If it was this easy then don't you think it would be recommended for ninja to train in here? It's actually frowned upon, because you can't take them on forever. You'll run out of energy and chakra before they run out of bodies to throw at you. Kill all you want as we get the hell out of here. Naruto ran in and grabbed Lee by his collar before dragging him off with everyone else following close behind. As they started to go back through the thick of the woods a spider tried to come from behind a tree to sneak attack them. Guy saw it coming and flipped at the massive thing with punches and kicks, dynamic action. Turning the spider into goo as they didn't break their stride, Naruto-kun, what is the best course of action to escape? Naruto moved back, Guy-sensei, watch the front, I'll keep them off of our backs. Neji, Ten-Ten, and Lee, stay between us, Neji keep your Byakugan on, Ten-Ten prepare some kunai with explosive notes. Take to the trees, it narrows down the angles that they can attack from. 
Team Guy listened to their tuning tagalong and got themselves into position as they leapt into the branches of the forest. Naruto's knowledge of the terrain by now was second only to Anko. He knew where the majority of things of interest in the forest were and the current thing of interest was the closest exit that wouldn't take them straight into the nest of the spiders, we need to get further south. If we head straight north or east from here we'll have to go straight through the nest to escape, that would be suicide even for me. Guy nodded and lead the group further south. During their run, Naruto held his head in pain and fell down on a branch. Lee jumped back to help the boy to his feet, Naruto-kun, what is wrong? Are you hurt? Naruto cursed to himself as he grimaced in pain, a bunch of my clones actually fully lasted for their time limit and dispelled all at once. It's like the worst headache you've ever had hitting you all at once. Thanking Lee as he stood back up they were distracted by Neji's shouts, there are more coming. Naruto turned around to see five of the spiders jumping from branch to branch, getting ever closer. Naruto threw Lee off of his branch at his team, stay back. There's something I need to test out anyway. They all watched as Naruto let the spiders in close before making a set of hand signs and crossing his arms in an X motion while crouching, Fuuten, Senpu Kaku Sui, Wind Release, Whirlwind Pyramid. Standing up and stiffening all of his appendages straight out, a vicious crosswind surrounded the area around Naruto's body, catching the spiders within and sending them flying into the air, some of them cut into pieces, others missing legs, all of the survivors hissing in anger and pain. The jutsu faded after a few seconds and he turned back to Team Guy, getting everyone moving again to stay ahead of the spiders attempting to prey on them. The Jinan were pretty stunned by the use of Naruto's new jutsu, but were too occupied with staying in one piece at the moment to ask anything. After another half hour of random spider attacks and running, they escaped the forest of death and collapsed a good distance away from the gates that cut it off from everything else in the village. Naruto laughed to himself as he looked up at the night sky, well that was fun. You guys alright? Guy looked back at the forest of death, we're fine. Naruto-kun what was the inspiration for going so far into the forest of death, you know how dangerous that place is don't you? Naruto stood up and dusted himself off, of course I do. That's why I went in there, for a challenging fight. I'm training to kill my opponent's guy sensei, not just defeat them. I need to be used to ending lives whenever I need to and since I'm pretty sure that absolutely nobody would miss any of those spiders being gone I go in there to fight them. It's amazingly good battle experience. The Jinan all deadpanned, we noticed. Naruto chuckled but then turned a suspicious eye on them, wait a minute. What were you all doing in there? The only person besides me that ever goes in there is Anko, and she doesn't even spend time there like I do, she'll just go in far enough to train in peace or find me to spar, not deep into the back end of the place. Guy nodded, we had a mission to head into the forest of death and find the source of all of the sounds coming from the place. Naruto laughed slightly, well, mission complete because you're looking at him. I make tons of cage bunshine and have them work on lots of different stuff. Pretty cool huh? While I handle my physical stuff they can handle things like my chakra control and ninjutsu. Neji understood what he was saying, so you get the accumulative memories of your cage bunshine and while they do memory related things you go in and develop things like strength, speed, and. He stopped and looked back into the forest, battle experience. Naruto grinned and nodded. Lee ran up to Naruto and dropped into his stance, you have inspired me Naruto-kun. I challenge you to a friendly spar. Naruto sweat dropped, Lee, it's almost midnight, I've been spending the last 12 hours fighting a life or death battle against spiders from hell, you're all exhausted from looking for me and fighting spiders by my side, and lastly. How many spiders did you kill? Lee looked confused until his eyes widened and he hit the ground to begin his push-ups, you have bested me this time Naruto-kun. Next time I will win our challenge and show how splendid a ninja I am. I will complete these push-ups or else I will run laps around Konoha on my hands until the sun comes up. And if I cannot do that I will. Naruto walked off with Ten Ten and Neji in tow as Guy stood over Lee shouting about his youthfulness. Naruto gave Neji a chuckling smile, and that's how you handle that. I don't see what you and Kakashi were all bent out of shape about when it comes to those two. As far as having Lee as my eternal rival it's easier than not having him as my eternal rival. I can just beat him once and not deal with him until he's through with all of his self-given punishments. He won't mess with me again until he's done with them all, and by then I can disappear. Neji's eyes widened. He had never thought to realize that the times that he defeated Lee in their spars, Lee would leave him alone until three days to a week later. When he ignored Lee he would get a challenge every hour on the hour until he accepted. 
Naruto and Tenten laughed at the look of contemplation on his face, on the flip side of that, you two have to see him tomorrow and deal with him talking about how he's going to beat me next time all day long. He has to track me down if he wants to do that to me. Yep. Being Lee's rival actually spares me more of the creepy sunset genjutsus than not being Lee's rival. Tenten realized that Naruto was right, he'd only seen it twice. Once when they first met before the Chunin exams, and once before they all went to get his sword, any other time when he was around them he would usually accept Lee's challenge, win or lose, and then bid everyone a swift goodbye. Compared to the people that are around when Lee and Guy have their little moments in town and not even trying to tally up all of the times that it had happened around Neji and Tenten since the team had been formed, she realized that Naruto had to have the pretty much lowest victimization rate of being subjected to the sunset of youth. Naruto grinned at the faces that both of them were making, I can see that you both have something to say, so go ahead and say it. Before Naruto could notice, the Tenketsu in his legs had been sealed off and Tenten and Neji had used his momentary incapacitation to start dragging him back to Lee and Guy. Tenten threw him at Guy's feet, disrupting Lee's push-ups, Guy-sensei. Naruto was just telling me and Neji that he thought he needed more youth after all of the youth that he exuded during his last mission and during his training today. Neji nodded in agreement. Naruto looked at the girl with a strange look, really? That was the best you've got? That was the stupidest thing I've ever heard anyone say about anything, ever. There's no way they're going to fall for that. He noticed that his words didn't deter the evil grins on the faces of the normal members of Team Guy who pointed behind him. Tenten waved to him, I'll see you when my team meets up tomorrow Naruto-kun. Before he could say anything, Guy and Lee had placed their hands on Naruto's shoulders and had hoisted him to his feet with tears pouring from their eyes, do not worry Naruto-kun. Lee and I always have time for a comrade in youth. Lee nodded vigorously, if need be, Gai-sensei and I will stay up all night with you, making sure that your fires of youth are fully replenished. Naruto resigned to his fate and turned back to the still-smiling Neji and Tenten with a dark look, I hope you enjoy this. Because you both know that you're getting fucked for this right? He never got their response as Lee and Guy had dragged him off to their usual training ground, Naruto-kun in order to build your flames back up I want 1000 punches with each arm and 1000 kicks with each leg. After that we'll go for an invigorating run around Konoha. On our hands. Ten times. Naruto's cries of protest could be heard throughout the night. A few particularly familiar screams of genjutsu-induced horror may have woken the majority of the village's citizens, but in the case of one bun-haired girl and one young branch Hayuga, it was just what they needed to lull themselves to sleep. Chapter 19, Too Legit to Quit. It's about time something like this came up. I'm kind of nervous though. Naruto's thought to himself as he sat in the trees just surrounding a somewhat secure clearing. After two months of doing C-rank missions with a team he was given a solo B-rank mission of his own. Remembering what Tsunade had told him about one of his teams a few months back, that they had thought he might be somewhat good as an Anbu, he figured this was something of a tryout mission or something. Chunin don't get solo missions, so he figured this was the only thing this could be. His mission had been to head to a town in Tsuki no Kuni, Land of Moon. Tsunade wasn't very forthcoming with the information on exactly what he was doing here at all, but he figured this wasn't some kind of trap or anything, why would she kill him off? So all he really had to go on was that he had to meet a contact once he arrived. This was the first time he had worked without a team in years and while he wasn't expecting anything anywhere near the borderline suicide things that he had done the last time he had solo missions it was always nice to be ready just in case. Instead of taking his usual clothing he decided to don his execution gear that he had worn during his escapades in Kumagakur. He doubted that it would really matter what he wore for this job, because as long as he had his hitty 8 he was told that the contact would find him, but hey, why not? After a few days off following the diplomatic mission to Kumo he had been blasted with back-to-back -back missions ranging from escorts to bandit extermination. They had been mostly snooze fests, mainly because he had an entire team to help him out. Nothing had occurred the likes of the disaster to Nami no Kuni, Thank Kami, but he missed the action. The only instruction that the boy had received for his mission was to head to an inland town on Tsuki no Kuni and find the bar that had been listed when he first left before burning his mission scroll. After entering the small town it wasn't too difficult to find, as this town was not too large like the coastal towns that the tourist country were more known for. Upon entering the bar, Naruto had to stop and check back outside to see if he had made a mistake. It wasn't. That was the only bar in the town. The reason he had to check after first entering was because the first thing that greeted the boy was a loud, boisterous laugh that he was quite familiar with. The sight of spiky white hair filled his vision upon first walking in to add on to the laugh. Whoa! 
Slow down ladies, there's enough of the great Jiraiya to go around. Jiraiya, as per the course, was surrounded by a bevy of women hanging off of his money or his every word. Naruto couldn't believe that Jiraiya was his contact for whatever he was about to do so he simply sauntered past without stirring the man's interest and made his way to the bartender. Pulling off his hoodie showed off his hideate in the low light of the bar and sighed as the man looked at him, we don't serve minors kid, you know that. Naruto gave him a dry look, I know your country has a hidden village so you should know better. Naruto flicked the metal on his headband, showing to the man that he was a ninja, one bottle of sake please, whatever brand you think a kid should be drinking. The man nodded and turned to grab Naruto's order, a kid shouldn't be drinking at all. So what's a Konoha ninja doing in Tsuki no Kuni? Naruto gave him a wry grin, I'm on vacation. Turning back around and pouring Naruto his first cup with a smirk he spoke, kid, you're in the wrong place for a vacation. There are no resorts or attractions around here. Naruto chuckled as he began sipping his drink, let's just say I find the charm of the countryside appeals to me more than the beaches do. The man let out an amused laugh, you're a strange kid. What kind of kid doesn't like the beach? Pointing to himself, Naruto refilled his cup after finishing off his first one, this one right here. The banter was stopped short when a hand placed itself on Naruto's shoulder. The guard covering the back of the hand gave away who it was, Uro Senen. What are you doing all the way out here? Jiraiya had a grin on his face as he sat next to Naruto at the bar, what? Gaki you don't think it's just a wonderful coincidence that you and I met up here, in this bar, in the middle of nowhere, randomly out of the blue? Naruto had to crack a smile at that, maybe it's because Ba-chan told me that you would be calling for me to start working with me after a few months and the deadline is very close. Add on to that, she said she would clear me for some time off, and she ends up sending me on a mission to the country with more resorts than anywhere else in the elemental nations, that kind of tells me something when I combine it with running into you while looking for my Konoha contact. The older man snatched up Naruto's bottle of sake and looked at him strangely, you drink gaki? Naruto shrugged, I had my drink with Gamabanta and I actually like the stuff. I don't indulge daily like Ba-chan and I don't down two or three in one sitting like you so don't worry. I take offense to that kid. Jiraiya asked for another cup from the bartender before pouring himself a drink, so what have you been doing since I last saw you? I've been just. Training. I don't know what to say, I've just been working on regaining my jutsu and my wind affinity. I never found out how to go any further with it so I've just been cutting tons of leaves with my cage bunshine since whatever they learn I learn. Jiraiya nodded, so how far can you go with you know who right now? Naruto raised three fingers and continued to drink. Jiraiya stroked his chin, that's actually very good. You weren't supposed to be able to use that much of its chakra yet. I have to unlock a bit of your seal for you to go any further. Honestly you shouldn't have been able to draw that much. Naruto frowned, drawing that much isn't convenient. If I take any more than one tail it takes way too long to be effective. I need about 5 to 10 minutes of preparation time depending on how much I use. I had to come up with an alternative way of increasing my power in a pinch and even that takes too long to use in the middle of a fight, the upside of it is that it is a fantastic visual distraction, but on the flip side it hurts like hell to use. Jiraiya grunted in though, you've been through this in your head quite a bit haven't you? Naruto nodded and took another sip, every other Jinchuriki out there can wipe the floor with me as I am. I've never said that to anyone in Konoha, but it's true. I went to Kumo, both of their Jinchuriki have absolute control. Like Gara did, but without the crazy hostile takeover of their demon, hell I'll say that the only reason I beat him is because I had Gameabunta run interference on the simple-minded fuck while I woke Gara up, if I had tried to just fight and match power, even with Gameabunta there we might have lost. Jiraiya stroked his chin, I'll loosen your seal and have you work with that. Maybe then you can have an easier time using the Kyuubi's chakra faster. Naruto picked up the bottle he had purchased and stood, well then let's go do this already, Akatsuki isn't going to wait for me to get stronger and this obviously isn't a mission. Is that all we're going to work on? Jiraiya stood up after him and let him out, nope. You obviously know how to draw upon the Kyuubi's chakra if you've been experimenting with it like you've said so I don't need to give you time to learn that. You can make Rasengan absolutely perfectly so you don't need to work on that, speaking of Rasengan, if we can get through your training the way I anticipate we can then I'll tell you something special about that. Naruto looked up at the taller man, so what are we going to do? Jiraiya grinned down at him, you needed to know the next step to furthering your wind manipulation didn't you? Well I'll show you what to do to work on that. You started on it back when you were a kid right? Naruto nodded, Danzo told me about the leaf splitting exercise a few months before my little incident in Odogakur. 
I still blame you by the way. Jiraiya's face fell, so you still hate me do you kid? Naruto shook his head, no. Not anymore. If there was anything that I learned in Root, it was that Konoha comes first. If you and the old man thought that I was a threat to the village, I can see why you didn't wait for me to wake before acting. I don't like it, I probably never will like it, and I'll always have some spot in me that resents that, but I understand. Naruto saw that they were exiting the town, it's why I can forgive my father too. Jiraiya's eyes widened at that, why you know? Naruto gave him a foxy smirk, Tsunade Baka never told you that I did, did she? Yeah I know, and I have to say that I need to be more observant. It was staring me in the face every damn day for years and I had to have helped to figure it out. Jiraiya sighed deeply and looked down, you know Gaki, I was supposed to be your godfather. Naruto didn't bat an eye, oh really? That's cool. So I should call you Uro Kyufu now right? Naruto didn't receive an answer and turned to see Jiraiya staring at him with his jaw dropped, what? Jiraiya wiped the look of shock off of his face, you aren't upset or even in denial on that? Naruto shrugged, why would I be? Even if you had been looking for me in Konoha you would have been hard pressed to actually find me and do anything godfatherly with me. I went to Donzo when I was four, I only went to the apartment to keep up appearances with Hokage Gigi, he was like clockwork, it was easy to figure out when he was showing up so I was always home on days when he would visit. I'm not going to be a little punk and complain about why you never came to check up on me, because I never asked to be checked up on, you had your responsibilities and your own baggage to deal with. I did too, and I don't think I want to find out what I would have ended up like if you had been an active influence in my formulative years. Naruto finished with a smirk. Jiraiya smiled down at Naruto, so you know about your dad do you? Are you going to follow in his footsteps? You're damn talented kid. Naruto put on a thinking face, if you're asking whether or not I want to be Hokage, I don't know. It doesn't seem like my niche in the grand scheme of things. Jiraiya looked at him in slight surprise, you're really different from your other self, being Hokage was the thing that drove him. He always said he'd be Hokage and get everyone's respect. Naruto raised a finger, and that's my point. I'm not like that anymore. I didn't want their respect by wanting to be the Hokage, I wanted their adoration. I don't give a fuck what the majority of those people think about me. If they hate me, fine, go ahead and hate me, but I want their respect in the purest form, not any kind of love from them. They can sneer at me and say things behind my back all they would like, but when I'm dead they better recognize the fact that I was the best damn ninja that they ever had the pleasure of seeing in person. Jiraiya grinned at how brash he was being, it's almost like how he would talk about being Hokage back when he wore that jumpsuit. I don't even think he knows he's saying it like that. Naruto continued, as long as my name is emblazoned in the history books and a 97-year-old Iruka sensei is still yelling at a classroom full of brats to shut the hell up so they can study Naruto Uzumaki and why exactly he was so important to the village I'll be fine. I want the kids of my generation to sit down with their kids and tell stories of the time that Naruto Uzumaki saved their asses, he chuckled slightly, I'm kind of already doing that. I've already manipulated the landscape on a massive scale, the crater in the forest of bone near the Valley of the End was made during my fight with Kimimaro Kaguya, it's not as big as the Valley of the End, but it's the best anyone's done in almost 100 years. Jiraiya picked up on something during his monologue, how did that crater even get there in the first place? The Kaguya clan doesn't have any attacks that could make craters like that. Naruto pointed to his stomach, it's a part of the thing that I came up with to make up for not being able to use that much of Kyuubi's chakra. It's strong, but damn does it hurt. It cracked every bone in my body to use. Chuckle QB bitched me out about it after the fight. Jiraiya had a new point of interest now, you speak to the QB? Naruto nodded, yep. When I was little it was a hard ass, as a matter of fact it's still kind of a hard ass, but I can't imagine not having it in me. It's like I was never alone, even when I was. Naruto snickered, by the way, you're on the QB's top 20 list of people that it wants to eat one of these days. Jiraiya blinked in confusion it has a list of people that it wants to eat? And I'm on it? Naruto grinned, yep, you're number 14 because of when you sealed me, that really pissed it off. Gigi is number 4 because of giving the order. It said I used to be on it, but I ended up getting myself off of it after I unsealed myself. Jiraiya had to ask, I know I'm going to regret asking, but who is number 1? It's Minato right? Naruto shook his head, nope, he's actually number 20 and bordering on leaving the list altogether. Number 1 is Madara Uchiha. The QB says that it hates that bastard and wants to eat him without chewing so that when it swallows him he can die the slow way. Number 2 is Hashirama Senju. 
It says that the tree-hugging bastard can go down the wrong tube just so it can spit him up and eat him again. Jiraiya had to take a minute to picture that and cringed visibly, wait, you're not on its list? Why not? You are its prison after all. Naruto grinned like he had a secret, yeah, I'm its prison. I control pretty much everything in my head. Before I started trying to use its chakra when I was a kid I had to make sure I had supreme control of myself. I changed everything in there to better accommodate it. Nobody wants to spend an entire lifetime in a leaky cage in a sewer, and I made some deals with the QB to make both of our lives easier. Seeing as how having a giant fox in a leaky cage in my head would piss it off unnecessarily, I fixed it. Jiraiya and Naruto continued to chat as they made their way into the wilderness of Tsuki no Kuni. Triple X. Two days later. We've been walking for two days Urosenin. Where are we going? Jiraiya led Naruto through a particularly wilder patch of brush that was beginning to irritate the blonde. He could swear Jiraiya was swinging those branches back into his face trying to be funny. Jiraiya smiled to himself at seeing that the kid was starting to get frustrated with just walking around, calm down Gaki. We're here, just head on past this undergrowth here and we'll be there. As they kept moving, a distinct roaring noise became louder and louder. Jiraiya and Naruto pushed through some more vegetation and stopped as Naruto's jaw dropped, whoa. Sweet. Jiraiya could see that Naruto was pleased with his choice of training environment, a river running through the island that was situated in their current position right by a waterfall. Naruto walked over to the edge of the water and looked up at the cascade while Jiraiya walked up next to him, yep, you needed one for the next part of your training and staying in Konoha would have been boring. I thought about going to Takigakur, but I don't think they would have let you in just so you could mess with their waterfall. Naruto nodded, though he was barely listening until his mind registered the word training, so a waterfall is important to my training? Okay, I'll bite, what am I doing with this thing? It's very simple my boy. Jiraiya had a sly grin on his features, you already know how to split a leaf with your wind chakra. Well this is kind of like that, it's just that instead of splitting a leaf you have to split a waterfall. Jiraiya was eager to hear Naruto's outburst at what he had to do. But Naruto's face never changed from the slightly dull expression that one had when they were thinking about something. The outburst never came. On the outside at least, what the fuck? Split a goddamn waterfall? Who am I, the fucking Naidaim Hokage? Shut the fuck up kid. I'm trying to sleep. He said to cut the waterfall, not stop it you retard. If you're going split the waterfall, just split it and leave me alone. Naruto had mentally stirred the QB from its slumber, and it was none too pleased. Naruto turned his venom onto the QB. oh really mister I can flatten mountains and raise tsunamis with swings of my tails? Why don't you bring your big chakra conducive s out here and make me? The QB growled lowly and started radiating chakra, I'm not a mister, you idiot, I'm a corporeal mass of chakra. And come in here and say that to my face Ningen and see if you don't leave with more than a few chunks of your ass missing. Jiraiya snapped his fingers in front of the unresponsive Naruto's face, Oi, Gaki. I think I broke him. Naruto however was oblivious to the outside world as he was busy having a territorial pissing contest with a demon of near infinite power, oh I'll come in there, but that's the last thing that your furry ass wants. I'll shove my boot so far up your ass your tongue will have grip. The only reason my tongue would have grip is because I ate your legs and decided to keep your shoes afterwards to chew on. You're obviously forgetting who you're talking to. Gaki. Naruto was finally brought back to the world of the waking by Jiraiya shaking him and yelling at him, what Uro Senen? I was in the middle of something with my inner furball who was being an ass. Jiraiya sweat dropped, yeah, bitch at the QB later, we have work to do. Just channel your chakra and try to cut it the way you did with the leaf. He pointed, you can use the bridge over there as a stable point to stand on. Naruto nodded, who built the bridge on the waterfall? We're in the middle of nowhere. Jiraiya preened like a peacock, I built it myself. I found this spot and decided to bring you out here kid. Someone else decided to chime in once more, who the fuck else would have built it you braindead hairless ape. Naruto growled on the outside, I'm sick of your bullshit QB. Be productive or shut the hell up and go back to sleep. Jiraiya tapped Naruto, geez, calm down kid. QB chuckled and spoke mockingly, listen to the hermit kid. Calm down, just calm down. Calm down, just calm down. Calm down, just calm down. Naruto's eye twitched, mute. Naruto sighed in relief as the QB's voice went silent, I forgot I could do that. What the hell is up with him? He hasn't tried to provoke me like that in forever. Naruto turned to Jiraiya, sorry about that Urosenin. 
you were saying? Jiraiya frowned momentarily, he's already showing signs of the added demonic chakra from the loosening of the seal. Maybe I should have waited until after we finished his elemental training to do it. All right Gaki, get up there and get started on trying to split that waterfall. Naruto saluted Jiraiya and scampered to a spot in the middle of the waterfall on the bridge. Pulling his hood up to avoid getting totally soaked he stuck his hands into the waterfall and began generating wind chakra. Naruto could feel the force of the waterfall snuff out the force of his minuscule amount of chakra, okay. It looks like I need to come up with more raw force to split this thing. Goody. Naruto shook his hands dry as Jiraiya came up next to him on the bridge holding an umbrella, this is more or less a trip to get you started on the training. The entire process could take upwards of a few years to master. Naruto looked at Jiraiya before forming a cross seal, Cage Bunshine no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Naruto filled the bridge with copies of himself that immediately went to work trying to cut the waterfall, I just wanted to try it for myself before I had my Cage Bunshine do it. I have something I need to do for myself right about now. Naruto jumped off of the bridge to the surface of the water and walked ashore before sitting down and getting into a meditative position. Jiraiya appeared at his side, what are you going to do Gaki? Naruto looked up at Jiraiya, I'm going to go into my mindscape so that me and the fox can hash out our little situation. Jiraiya looked apprehensive, that might not be such a good idea if it's mad at you kid. Naruto shook his head, why not? I mean we've been at each other's throats before but it blows over. We fuck with each other, I stopped being malicious about it years ago. Naruto shut his eyes and put his hands back in the ram sign. Jiraiya grabbed his hands and broke his concentration again, don't. Remember when I told you that I was going to loosen the QB seal to give you better access to its power? Well I did it the other night while you were asleep when I said I was going to check your seal. Haven't you felt yourself getting more aggressive and angered easier? Naruto nodded, I figured that puberty was finally starting to make me nuts with all of the shots of testosterone. You're telling me it's because the QB's chakra is leaking out more steadily now? Jiraiya pulled Naruto's shirt up and revealed that the seal was showing even though Naruto wasn't doing anything. Your body is adjusting to the influx of demonic chakra, though now it's more important than ever for you to control your emotions. It's now far easier for you to lose control when you become angered. You tried picking a fight with the QB a few minutes ago, I would have slapped you right then if I wasn't sure that it would have made you matter. Naruto blushed out of embarrassment of being called out like that. It had been months since anyone had called him out for being overly emotional. Having been in Rudy took it somewhat personal that he was being told that he needed to control himself until he realized that he had been freer with his outbursts than even four months ago. Jiraiya noticed this, I'm not saying that being expressive makes you a bad ninja, I mean just look at me, he said with a stupid grin that got Naruto to crack a smile, but you've got to know how to manipulate your emotions rather than just go with them or cover them up. If you're mad, learn how to channel that elsewhere, I've seen that you're none too shabby at the trash talk, that's good. Things like that can help you. Naruto nodded, so you don't want me to go into my mindscape, at least not right now anyway? Jiraiya patted the boy on the shoulder, no, don't go in there for a while at least. Probably until your seal disappears from view when you're just sitting idle like now. I'll tell you when it's okay to try. He pulled Naruto to his feet, now while your clones are doing their thing why don't you show me what you can do? Naruto smirked and started bouncing around in loose stance, you do know that I'm going to take out quite a bit of aggression on you don't you? Jiraiya grinned and crossed his arms across his chest, you do realize that I'm the strongest ninja in Konoha don't you Gaki? Naruto rolled his eyes, there's that S rank superiority complex again. I can't wait until one of you guys gets schooled by some low level nobody that couldn't shine your hideate on your worst day. Jiraiya barked out a laugh, it's not like I'm taking you lightly Naruto, I've seen what you can do. Now that was then, this is now, feel free to cut loose and hit me with your best shot. Naruto looked somewhat apprehensive, are you sure? I mean some of my stuff is really heavy. I mean really heavy. And I'm not talking about the stuff you've seen either. I could get you with a lucky shot and you could be a goner. Jiraiya waved him off, if you manage to push me that far to the extent that actually you wound me like that then that just means I'm getting rusty and needed the ass kicking anyway. Now come on kid, you're still 10 years too soon to beat me. Naruto's smirk returned full force as he blurred from Jiraiya's sight. Jiraiya wheeled to the side to block a jumping kick from the blonde. Jiraiya's face held quite a bit of amusement, faster now aren't we? I've been training with Rock Lee and Mido Guy for a while now. They said that I was slow. That kind of pissed me off, but damn, the way that they train I'm not surprised. 
Naruto pulled his leg from Jiraiya's arm and lashed out at his body with a straight punch that Jiraiya parried down. Naruto kept his attack low with sweeps, low kicks, and attempts at body shots, but Jiraiya was way faster than him without the Kyuubi's chakra. Naruto expected as much, but it was still a kick in the teeth to stomach. Speaking of kicks in the teeth, Jiraiya eventually got tired of dodging and planted the soles of his geta into Naruto's face, sending him flying back, don't get lazy with your attack pattern kid. You're not faster than me so you can't overwhelm me like you do everyone else. Fight smarter. Naruto picked himself up and made three cage bunshine before rushing Jiraiya again. That brought a grin back to the legend's face as he found himself in a hodgepodge of a premeditated taijutsu assault from the clones and the boy himself. Jiraiya had to admit that the clones were very coordinated, they definitely knew their role in the attack. Since one hit would dispel them, Naruto had them play more of a pestering role, trying for low success rate strikes from Jiraiya's blind spots. Things like flashy jumping spin kicks and the like, he also had them shouting and yelling. While this was a good way to distract most opponents with the false threat of the clones it also gave away the real Naruto, who was right in front of Jiraiya the entire time, staying out of range of the man's attacks and trying to keep a lower profile by staying silent until he thought that one of his cage bunshine feints had enough of Jiraiya's attention to attempt a short rush. If he had tried this on anyone his rank or below, hell if he had tried this on a few jounin that specialized in flashier arts and weren't good enough at taijutsu to keep the kid off of them he would have beaten them into a bloody pulp fighting the way he was. Unfortunately for Naruto's plan, Jiraiya was fast enough and aware enough to dodge everything and pinpoint the real body. Averting his eyes as a feint of his own to draw the real Naruto in, he grabbed the original's arm while ducking kicks from two of the clones. He knew this was the original because he pulled him in and drilled him right in the stomach with a powerful shot to send him flying back again. The clones tried attacking all at once but Jiraiya stood between them all calmly and flew through his hand signs too fast for them to stop, Hari Jizo, Needle Jizo. The clones were dispelled when Jiraiya's hair grew to surround his body and hardened and sharpened to puncture the poor things. Jiraiya let his hair regress and stood straight up clapping his hands, that was nice Gaki, you made me use a jutsu. Naruto narrowed his eyes in determination, well since you showed me yours. Naruto made hand signs and placed his hands on the ground, thank you Yugi-chan. Raiden, Kaksen no jutsu, lightning release, live wire jutsu. Naruto sent out a speedy burst of arcing electricity from where his hands touched the ground in front of him at Jiraiya. Jiraiya made a HMM noise and jumped high into the air over the crackling electricity before making his own hand signs, Kaden, Enden, fire release, flame bullet. Jiraiya shot a bullet of flaming oil at Naruto who was still on the ground. Naruto simply darted away from Jiraiya's aim and decided to try and catch him hanging in the air. Naruto grinned as he made hand signs and linked his fists together, got you hanging Uro Senen, Fuuten, Fuujin Seiken, wind release, divine fist of the wind god. Naruto shot the attack in the direction of Jiraiya's fall to time it to make contact. Jiraiya saw this coming and shot another flaming bullet at the shimmering wind attack, causing a mid-air explosion that allowed him to land safely. Naruto snapped his fingers in disappointment while Jiraiya dug out his ear, damn Gaki, you cleared out the wax with that last explosion. Naruto shook his head in amusement and flipped Jiraiya off, whatever. I'm getting closer. I'm going to knock the hell out of you by the time this is over at least once, I guarantee it. Jiraiya chuckled, this lasts as long as I let it last. Don't get a swelled head here. I'm strong enough to kill you ten times over. Naruto growled and ran into attack again, underestimating me will get you killed. He threw shuriken at Jiraiya in an attempt to direct his movement a certain way, but Jiraiya just moved aside and let them pass. Naruto grinned and placed his palms together, Fuuten, Repushu, wind release, violent wind palm. Naruto created an updraft stream of wind that Jiraiya hunkered down to let pass and wait for Naruto's charge, but it flew right past him and carried to the shuriken that Naruto threw, forcing them to sweep high into the air back over Jiraiya's head. A few more hand signs from Naruto signaled another jutsu, Raiden, Kaminari shuriken, lightning release, lightning shuriken. The shuriken over Jiraiya's head began raining down bolts of lightning that he was forced to dodge. Upon getting out of the storm of electricity he hastily ducked a cutting jump kick from Naruto that would have made good on the kid's promise to nail him with a good shot at least once today. Jiraiya grabbed hold of Naruto's leg and flung him off hard. He flipped to his feet to see Jiraiya make the boar and tiger hand signs before slamming his hands to the ground, Doten, Yomi Numa, Earth Release, Swamp of the Underworld. Naruto made a yip noise and jumped high into the air, but didn't clear enough ground to escape the swamp, Gachagaki. 
I'm not good at this yet, but it should do for this. Naruto smirked, you think so? Fuuten, Kaze Wakshikaru, wind release, wind burst. Naruto seemingly jumped on nothing but air and shot himself the rest of the way over the swamp. Jiraiya's jaw dropped until he realized that Naruto was hovering directly over him and was falling fast. Naruto linked his fists together again and pushed them out, Fuuten, Fuujin Seiken. Jiraiya hightailed it out from under Naruto before the ground where he was standing ended up with massive fist-shaped marks flattened into the earth. The force of pushing out the jutsu helped Naruto land softer. Jiraiya shouted at the boy, what the hell Gaki? Where are you learning all of this crap? And who the hell taught you any lighting ninjutsu? Naruto dusted himself off, I knew this stuff when I was en route. I'm just now starting to get them back, and there are still more that I can't do yet, I never could. Donzo had me learn them in the hopes that I could get the control to use them one day. And about the lightning jutsu, let's just say a certain Nico and Kumo likes me well enough to teach me some stuff. By now there were sounds of a raucous crowd, confusing both fighters until they looked at the waterfall and saw the clones knocking off from working on splitting the waterfall to watch them fight. Apparently they were well entertained. Naruto sweat dropped while Jiraiya guffawed nearby, really obedient clones you've got there. Naruto palmed his head and dragged it through his hair. Well I do work them pretty hard so I guess this is okay. He turned to the clones and put on a confident pose, who wants to see me kick Uro Senen's ass. A loud cheer went up from his clones with the exception of one, Bo. Uro Senen, stomp a mud hole into boss's lazy ass. Always having us do this shit while he gets to fight. Jiraiya grinned cheesily at the clone and gave it a thumbs up. The original Naruto was looking at the lone cage bunshine blankly as were the rest. Naruto pointed at him, you shut up. Before the clone could respond, Naruto dispelled him. Jiraiya turned to Naruto, what's the matter? Can't take the fact that even you know that I'm going to kick your ass Gaki? Naruto set himself back into a ready stance, hey, I need unanimous support for myself. I can't be telling myself I'm going to lose. Naruto ran at Jiraiya and tried dropping a falling axe kick on him that was dodged. Jiraiya tried to retaliate with a backhand strike at him that Naruto caught in his hands. Jiraiya pulled him back towards him and kicked him in the stomach, forcing Naruto to let go. Jiraiya kneeled down near Naruto who was coughing heavily on the ground crouched in a near ball, as if I'm going to let you keep a grip on me and use your scary strong strength to throw me around like a 6 foot 2 ragdoll. I'm still physically stronger than you. I noticed. Naruto leapt to his feet and shoved his right hand out at Jiraiya, which contained a familiar blue ball of spiraling chakra, Rasengan. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes and formed his own Rasengan to clash with Naruto's, I'll show you how it's done Gaki. Rasengan. The two attacks clashed against one another, both chakra balls grinding against one another forcefully. Naruto held his ground as best he could, but was steadily being overpowered. In a last-ditch effort he overloaded his own Rasengan with too much power. Jiraiya saw the evil smirk on Naruto's face and had his eyes widen as he felt the extra influx of chakra. In a flash of blue the technique exploded, throwing both of them off. Naruto landed in the water while Jiraiya plowed into the trees hiding the waterfall. Pulling himself ashore, Naruto saw Jiraiya slumped against the trees and stood to run his way over to continue the fight before he could stand. As he drew close he skidded to a stop as Jiraiya fell apart to mud. Naruto looked around but was too late as his surroundings changed. Instead of being outdoors near a waterfall he was instead surrounded by pink, fleshy walls. Naruto tried to punch his way out, but ended up sinking his hand into the wall when Jiraiya's voice rang out, seemingly from outside, how do you like that Gaki? Naruto's legs began sinking into the ground of whatever he was in, this is Kushios, Gamaguchi Shibari, summoning, toad mouth bind. There's no way out of this, it's the esophagus of the great fire-breathing mountain toad. There's nothing you can do, it's over. I could get the walls to digest you if you want to act like you're not beaten. Naruto sighed, yeah. I quit, you win. In a puff of smoke, Naruto was totally freed as his clones voiced their disapproval. He turned to them and sighed, all right guys I lose. Now get back to work so that next time I won't. The clones let off a collective affirmative and returned to their task. Naruto walked over to the tree where Jiraiya's muddy replication melted as the man himself came from the trees. Jiraiya ruffled the boy's hair, good fight Gaki, you didn't do too badly. Naruto grumbled, I didn't lay a finger on you, even my double-edged move didn't do anything. Jiraiya pointed at himself, S-ranked ninja standing here. I told you what was going to happen. You're good, but not that good. You have way more jutsus than I thought you would. 
a few of your moves were something incredible for a kid your age, I don't think I'll ever get over just what you can do. Naruto sighed and walked back to the waterfall, I guess I'll join my clones on working on the waterfall. Jiraiya laughed loudly, oh now you're all dejected? What happened to venting some aggression on me? I guess you've learned that when it comes to dealing with hotshot Noatal punks with blonde spiky mops there's no one better than the great toad sage Jiraiya. He finished while standing in his pose. Naruto got a tick mark on his head and formed his seal for Cage Bunshine, surrounding Jiraiya and copies of himself, oh, yeah, like a bunch of brats are going to beat me up. Ooh I'm so scared. Henge. Harem no Jutsu. In a puff of smoke, Jiraiya had countless nude blonde women hanging off of him. This was too much for his brain to handle as he launched back into the woods with blood flying from his nose. Naruto dispelled the clones and headed back to the waterfall, huh? I should have thought of that during the actual fight. Triple X. Two weeks later. Naruto had been steadily training with his clones to perfect his nature manipulation, but even with the clones his progress was slow. They were finally making headway, with a cut beginning to form in the waterfall, but there was an agonizingly long way to go if he wanted to master his element. He had still yet to go speak to the QB after their little episode because his seal was still visible on his stomach, even when he was relaxing. He followed Jiraiya's advice and stayed put of his mind for the time being. While he had his clones handle working on the waterfall he told Jiraiya about his interest in Fuu and Jutsu and trying to take it up, if nothing else so that he knew what was going on with his own seal. Jiraiya agreed that it was a good skill to have and put him to work, taking him off of splitting the waterfall personally and leaving that to his cage bunshine. He had Naruto start straight from the basics, which was getting his handwriting perfect so that he would make perfect strokes with his brushwork when sealing as even a small slip could be catastrophic. Much like the work with his elemental training it was bitter work and slow going. Made even slower by the fact that Cage Bunshine would do him no good here. Getting his calligraphy perfect was more along the lines of muscle memory, like learning stances and the like. As thus it was more physical than mental. He could use them later on when he got into the practical education of sealing, but until he wrote clearer than a 10-year-old grammar student he couldn't. Jiraiya had left him at their training spot to head towards a town to get more sealing supplies, as he was going to teach Naruto how to make his own ink to seal with. And the boy found himself alone one night by the waterfall. Naruto Uzumaki Naruto turned towards the source of the voice to find a boy, roughly his age standing in the branches of a tree. He had pale skin, short black hair and black eyes. He wore a collared shirt that cut off at his midsection along with black pants, black shinobi sandals, and black fingerless gloves. On his back was a tip less tanto and a backpack that could be accessed quickly in case of necessity. Naruto was sitting by the water when the boy showed himself. He stayed up in the tree, is Jiraiya of the Sanin around? Naruto scoffed, if he was here then you wouldn't even be this close. What do you want? Who are you? And why am I not killing you right now? I am here for Donzo-sama. He has been wanting to get into contact with you for quite some time now. The boy bowed slightly, I have been given the name Sai for this assignment. Naruto looked at Sai with an appraising eye and decided to test out Sai's claim to be one of Donzo's men, so Donzo Gigi decides to send out a gay hood ornament to contact me. Tell him that he needs more girls en route, it's a sausage fest, I swear. Sai didn't blink at all, getting a nod from Naruto, okay, you're Donzo's. So what's the message? I probably already know, but go ahead. Sai spoke, Donzo Sama says that you are no longer one of his tools. You were extremely useful during your time under him, but you're too risky to try and take back now. Besides that, he says that you wouldn't fur back in any way. Naruto nodded, I figured that. He's right, I can't just disappear back to HQ now, I'm too out in the open, and he can't keep risking guys like you just to make contact with me for assignments either, it's too high of a gamble now for him to have me. He looked at Sai suspiciously, so what does this mean then? Am I a loose end for him and he sent you to try and kill me? Sai shook his head, I am incapable of bringing you down Uzumaki. I was simply dispatched to bring you Donzo Sama's messages. You are by no means expendable. You carry his teachings inside of you deeper than any other, he just cannot risk trying to meet with you himself, it would seem too suspicious, and it is no longer necessary. Even without him you are true to the one thing that he put into you more than anything else, that Konoha comes first, everything we do is for Konoha. To that end he says to you to grow stronger and protect our home. The foundations of the great tree will always be rooted inside of you Uzumaki. Naruto nodded and turned to return to watching the water when he still sensed Sai's presence, yes? Do you still need me for something? 
Sai was still in place from when he first started speaking, Donzo Sama does have one last assignment for you Uzumaki. It is one that he is certain is well within your parameters to complete. Naruto turned around and stayed seated, watching Sai carefully, one last mission huh? What the hell, why not? One more for old time's sake. I owe the old cripple that at least. He gestured for the pale boy to continue with the message which he did without delay, Donzo Sama wants you to do all that is in your power to become Hokage. Naruto's eyes widened. Root training be damned even though he was in front of one of the operatives, he was surprised as all hell to hear that, Donzo Gigi wants me to become Hokage? What? I thought that was his kick, why would he want me to do it? Sai stared at Naruto emotionlessly, he has not truly given up. Donzo Sama is getting old Uzumaki. He says that the death of Haruzen Sarutobi, the last Hokage, showed him his own mortality. He is well aware of the fact that he will probably die before another opportunity to take the position ever shows itself again. You are the closest thing to an apprentice that he has, he has shown you his ways of working, he has shown you what he could about the system of the village. With you in power he would feel secure in the fact that Konoha would have a cage that would truly be strong enough to handle the job, to do what is necessary. Naruto still couldn't believe it, why me? Couldn't he have actually trained someone for something like this? Sai spoke again, who else would suffice? Even though you have Donzo Sama's backing no one knows it. He could never instill his views into someone and send them into the political world without suspicion arising. You already are mistrusted by a good portion of the population and you are slowly turning that number around, you already have the backing of a few significant names in the village due to your actions and character alone, the entire country of Nami no Kuni sees you as a hero for one, and you are close to the current Hokage herself as well as the children of the Kaze Kage and the current Rakage favors you. You inadvertently put yourself in the position for this. Naruto looked at his hands, me, the Hokage? It was a pipe dream of a foolish mindset, not something real. And he wants me to actually go for it? Sai turned to walk away, I have given you Donzo Sama's words to you, but he asked me to leave you with this in case you were having trouble. Turning around to face Naruto he looked at him firmly, where there is light, there is shadow. To be a shinobi is to sacrifice oneself. Closing your eyes to the sunlight. Distinguishing yourself in the shadows. That is the true form of a ninja. Naruto nodded in agreement, but snapped his eyes open when Sai continued, but that is not your destiny Uzumaki. The truth is, you are the leaves bathing in the sun. And I. I am the roots that grow in the dark. Naruto looked up at Sai who turned and began walking back to the woods. Before he made it to the edge of the trees he turned around one last time, you have the full support of Donzo Sama and Root. We will be in touch, Uzumaki, do not worry about that. We will not disappear. Sai gave Naruto a closed eye smile that seemed totally out of character and left the area, leaving Naruto alone with himself. Naruto looked at his reflection in the moonlit water. Splashing the water to disrupt the image he looked up to the moon inside, the last order from Donzo Gigi. Become Hokage or die trying, Naruto chuckled to himself, Naruto Uzumaki, the Raku Daim Hokage of Kanahagakura no Sato. Now that sounds like it would look good in a history book. Chapter 20, To Toil in the Mud or Play in the Clouds. Jiraiya looked over Naruto's handiwork from the last few hours and him thoughtfully before balling up the paper he was looking at just moments before, nope. It's total crap gaki. Do it again. Naruto grumbled at the toad summoner as he pulled out more paper and began copying down the practice strokes, kanji, and symbols that Jiraiya had given him to improve his calligraphy. The important physical things that Naruto needed to be a decent sealing artist were great speed with his strokes and flawless writing ability. It had been a month since Naruto had spoken to Sai and he and Jiraiya were still out in the wilderness of Tsuki no Kuni by the waterfall. His clones were starting to make some headway with splitting the waterfall. It was amazing to Jiraiya how fast he was getting the exercise with the help of the clones, he figured that he would have it down by the time they needed to return to Konoha. During the day he would have Naruto make his clones to work on the waterfall splitting while he had Naruto study the theories of Fu and Jutsu. After lunch he would make Naruto spar with him before setting him to work on his brush skills, which was Naruto's least favorite practice of the day, but it needed to be done. Fu and Jutsu was seemingly tethered to every major event in Naruto's life thus far. When one thought about it, it literally made him who he was, for better or for worse, therefore for him to know nothing about it would have been a travesty, he had been planning on delving into it even before he made his promise to Anko. However learning it was a pain in the ass. It was hard to reteach yourself how to write after doing it a certain way for as long as you could remember, but that was basically what he was being forced to do. 
every little mark needed to be perfect for Fu and Jutsu to be effective, or else terrible things could happen. Naruto was never so thankful for his quick healing, or else his hands and wrists would have been shot beyond use by now. Naruto was simply taking it slow this time, making sure that his movements on the parchment were perfect enough to avoid mistakes. Naruto noticed the light begin to fade and as he looked over at Jiraiya he could see that the man did too. Jiraiya headed off towards the waterfall, yelling over his shoulder, I'm going to go tell your clones to dispel. You can stop for the day, we're done here. Naruto nodded and sighed as he started picking up all of the discarded papers with the efforts of his daily labor on them and put them away. He finally had time to think over all of the things that had happened to him lately. He found out that his dad was the Yondaime Hokage, strangely enough when he started piecing things together it wasn't that hard to see. He was blonde and blue-eyed, hell some people called him the Yondaime's spitting image. He was also a Jinchuriki, most Jinchuriki are children of high-ranking shinobi so that they have some sort of loyalty to their village, and he had Kakashi Hatake as his sensei, he still needed to find and grill Kakashi over a myriad of things once he returned to Konoha. Needless to say, he wasn't as shocked as he should have been after he got over the initial surprise from when he figured it out. This made the second thing that had recently happened even more absurd to him. He had been asked, no, ordered, to become Hokage or die trying. Donzo had sent one of his men, a boy Naruto's age dubbed Sai for the mission to inform Naruto that Donzo had to break basically all informative ties with him, that he had to bury everything about himself and root. Naruto wasn't sure how he felt about that. On one hand, he knew the score with him and Donzo. He knew that to Donzo he was a tool to be used to protect and serve Konoha and that he was somewhat expendable, he had come to terms with that fact years ago. On the other hand, he had spent the earlier years of his life following Donzo's lead, going off of Donzo's example, doing the things that Donzo told him to do. To say that that man no longer had any sway over his life was something he had to get used to. He was to avoid any inclination that the two had any connection. Sure, Jiraiya and Sonate were the only people alive that knew of his past relationship, but for all intents and purposes, since the invasion Naruto had been his own person. Naruto had played that up to the hilt, all the while he had been waiting for some word, either from an assassin or someone to give him his orders, he knew he wouldn't have been left out the way it seemed he had been. One hell of a final mission huh Donzo Gigi? I wonder if you knew who I really was all along? That I was the son of Minato Namikaze? Naruto thought to himself as he continued to pack away his things. Was this why Donzo figured that Naruto had a better chance than him of ever being Hokage? Donzo wasn't really trusted in most circles despite having the Sandaime Hokage's old teammates on his side. When the truth about Naruto's heritage inevitably came out it would flip public opinion of him on its head and open up a whole new can of worms that he hadn't even considered yet. It did somewhat make sense though when Naruto thought about it. Naruto cringed and held his head as he fell to the ground, memories of what had transpired amongst his cage bunshine swelling his brain. Jiraiya walked back over and saw Naruto on the ground, Gaki are you okay? Naruto picked himself up off of the ground slowly while gingerly holding his head, yeah Uro Senen, I'm fine. My clones just dispelled all at once when you told them to stop. It gives me a nasty little backlash when too many of them do it at the same time. Jiraiya grinned at him, I don't know how many times I'll say it Gaki, that's one impressive little training trick. Naruto shrugged his shoulders, A, hey, you take what you get. The Uchiha had their Sharingan, the Hyuga have their Byakugan. I just so happen to have a giant fox roaming my mind, and I work with it. Jiraiya scratched his hair. So why don't you use Cage Bunshine to help with your handwriting the way you use it with your nature manipulation training? Naruto stood up straight and cracked his back, well since handwriting is muscle memory that would be physical instead of mental wouldn't it? Jiraiya palmed his forehead, you know, sometimes I forget that you're a kid and kids aren't that smart. Naruto was about to verbally lay into the white-haired man until he raised a hand for him to stop, muscle memory is mental gaki. You can use Cage Bunshine to get your handwriting to be better. Naruto just stared blankly at Jiraiya who eventually got bored and walked away, leaving Naruto standing in place. Triple X. Kanahagakur, Hokage Tower. You wanted to see me Hokage-sama? A masked man with white spiky hair asked as he demurely entered Tsunade's office behind Shizun. Tsunade had a slight twitch in her eye as she locked her eyes onto her jounin, yes Kakashi. Four hours ago. Where were you? Kakashi I smiled while rubbing the back of his head. Will you see Hokage-sama I was on my way here when? Tsunade sighed loudly and waved him off, enough Kakashi. You're lucky I need you for the swell of S-ranked missions. I didn't call you here to issue you one though. I called you here because of another reason. 
Kakashi visibly deflated, I had a good one all set up to use too. Getting himself together he got to business, so Hokage-sama. What is it that you need of me? She got herself back into an informative mode, Kakashi, I need your help. You'll be getting a reprieve from the S-ranked missions for the time being but you'll still have to go on other missions. Ever since Team 7 had dissolved Kakashi had been taking the highest ranked missions available that the village could muster. The fact that he was one of the strongest ninja in the entire village pretty much led to him doing so. Kakashi looked at Tsunade, Tsunade-sama, what do you need me to do? Shizun dropped two files on Tsunade's desk who then motioned for Kakashi to look at them. Upon opening them he found the first page of each to be a picture of Naruto, one that was the picture that went on his ninja ID, the other a picture that Tsunade had him take after he returned from Kumo. Tsunade let Kakashi look them over for a moment, notice any differences between the two? Kakashi nodded, yes. The first one is obviously Naruto's personnel file. I read it last year when he was assigned to my team and I was the one that added on to it. Pointing to the other one he continued, I have no clue what that one is for, but my guess would be you want me to begin filling out his updated file. A nod and a small smile were his answers, yes Kakashi. When Naruto returns I want you to be his leader when he goes out on missions. You will be giving me progress reports on his progress and how he operates on missions. I was tempted to promote him straight to Jounin after his promotion test all those months ago but thought that some more seasoning in the field was required first beforehand. The second thing I want you to do is to help me configure a more permanent team for him. Kakashi's eyes widened, is there any way I could get Sakura for that team? I still want them as my squad. Tsunade looked at him strangely, I was thinking more along the lines of a team that clicked with their combined skills. Sakura isn't ready for a team like what Naruto's would probably end up being. She still needs far more training, and Naruto isn't a Janan any longer, you're his squad leader for this period of time until I find him ready for a promotion. I don't think it will take long for him to get it either. Kakashi nodded, all he needs is the field experience and I would be hard pressed to say anything to hold him back from Jounin rank. So you basically want me to keep tabs on him and keep you informed on what he does and how good he's getting. Tsunade shrugged, pretty much. Until further notice you'll be keeping an eye on him. He should get stronger very quickly now that he knows that Akatsuki will be coming for him in two more years, just make sure he gets that far to worry about them. Triple X. Suki no Kuni, one week later. So now instead of the usual 100 cage bunshine that Naruto had dedicated to training he had 500. Due to him being utterly bored and sick and tired of waking up to the sound of loud crashing water every morning he increased the intensity of his workout. 250 on the waterfall training, 250 working on his handwriting, the pain in the ass that it was, and hearing 100 clones gripe to one another about the boring ass monotonous practice was getting old. Still, Jiraiya figured that his handwriting was good enough for him to begin actively practicing. While his clones were now working on increasing the speed of their strokes, Naruto himself was learning firsthand from Jiraiya about making seals. The first thing he learned from Jiraiya was how to make his own storage seals. Naruto figured that it was all a part of the learning experience, but he didn't see any use for having a ton of sealing scrolls, maybe he could sell them, but otherwise he was just going through what Jiraiya told him to do. The next step was making his own ink. Jiraiya instructed Naruto to drain a bit of his own blood into the ink and channel chakra into the mix for a responsive seal. Naruto wanted to know how to make explosive notes, but Jiraiya wasn't sure to trust Naruto with the knowledge of how to make his own high explosives. Simply put, when he started teaching Naruto things like that the boy could easily then go out and get his own things to make them. He still had money left over all the way back to the mission to Nami no Kuni a year ago, he was now taking higher rank missions and Jiraiya had seen his home, it wasn't a very lavish place, therefore now that Naruto had something to blow all of his stacked back money on besides ramen, namely ink and the material for seals, in addition to having a nigh inexhaustible supply of cage bunshine manpower to make the seals, and the normal male desire to make things go boom, as well as something akin to a blood feud with the abnormally large spiders in the forest of death. Jiraiya had learned this when he found Naruto talking in his sleep about the eight-legged bastards, and you can see how Jiraiya may have had reservations about getting the kid into making explosive notes. Jiraiya now had Naruto sitting down so that he could hope to find out what Naruto wanted to do with Fuu and Jutsu. So Gaki, what's your reason for wanting to know about Fuu and Jutsu? What are you hoping to get out of it? It's a kind of obscure art. Naruto was currently multitasking as he was testing out a seal making speed with regular ink. Well, I'm a Jinchuriki. It would be pretty stupid if I didn't know anything about Fu and Jutsu. Hell, I'm a walking example of Fu and Jutsu, aren't I? More than you'll ever know, Ningen, more than you'll ever know. 
were the rumblings from the fox within Naruto. Cryptic? Oh yes. Was he going to go and deal with it? Not now, he was having a conversation. Naruto cleared the QB's words from his mind and focused on the old man in front of him. I made a promise too. I promised Anko that I would get the cursed seal off of her. When I was in Odogakur all of those years ago I memorized Orochi team's notes on it. Some of that stuff I wish I could forget. But I have an idea of what to do to get it off of her, I just need some things first before I can do anything about it, one of those things is knowing exactly what the hell I'm dealing with, hence why I'm doing this. Jiraiya nodded, and none of this is stemming from you wanting to get the seal off of Sasuke Uchiha? He was your teammate like Orochimaru was mine. I know when Orochimaru left Konoha I was like that, I wanted to save him. Naruto snorted and placed his materials aside, Uro sent in the only way that I even care about removing Uchiha team's seal is when I sever his head from his neck. There's no saving there, he had an entire village that was willing to save him, he had a girl that was willing to give herself to him at the cost of her own career and probably her life to save him. Fuck that, he went to a traitor for power that he could have easily gotten here. I'll save him alright, I'll save him from becoming Orochimaru's next body by ending him the next time we meet, but I don't care about him. I care about Orochimaru getting the Sharingan and coming to eradicate our collective asses. Jiraiya let a smile come to his face, thank goodness I don't have to beat that save him stuff out of Yugaki. You're smarter than I was when it happened to me. Naruto shrugged, you can't save someone that doesn't want to be saved Uro Senen, every Hokage knows that. I wonder how pissed off he would get if I beat Itachi before he could get to him himself? That idiot. All he had to do was stay near me until Itachi came after me again and he could have had his shot. Naruto laughed to himself at that thought, he might come after me then. Jiraiya chuckled alongside him, yeah, seeing as how Itachi is one of the two slated to come after you I guess you'll get a better shot at him than Sasuke will. He then noticed that Naruto had said something quite interesting, Hokage? What are you saying Gaki? Naruto smirked and rubbed his nose, while I was thinking, I spent four years of my life dreaming about being a Hokage, it would be a shame to throw it away now that I have a realistic chance of getting there wouldn't it? Jiraiya's eyes widened as a smile started forming on his face, are you saying what I think you're saying? Naruto nodded, so Uro Senen, you trained the Yondaime Hokage. How do you feel about training the Raku Daim? Jiraiya simply burst out in laughter, that kid is confusing as all hell, but at least he's never too boring. Triple X Naruto's Mindscape Naruto took the time of his slumber to finally reach out to the QB. It had been over one month since Naruto's seal had been tampered with by Jiraiya and he had yet to try and communicate with the creature. Earlier in the day when the fox spoke it had been the first peep that Naruto had heard from it in forever. He had heeded Jiraiya's warning, he had waited the Kyuubi's temperament out, now it was time to see just what Jiraiya had screwed up with the seal, and the only real way to check it with his novice skill at Fuu and Jutsu was to go inside of his head and check it out firsthand. When he first entered he was relieved to see that it still looked like Konoha that was a good sign to him that not much had changed from his original setup. Wandering around he was curious as to where the QB would be. Usually he could find it in his house, out in the field beside his house, near the ravine that Jiraiya threw him into, or right in the middle of an utterly eradicated town. All of these areas came up with nothing. No QB in sight. Naruto eventually went to the top of his Mindscape's Hokage monument in an effort to wait the QB out, in his thoughts it had to come out to do something eventually right? After sitting on top of the monument looking out at the village that wasn't doing anything, no noise, no movement, nothing for seemingly hours, he finally growled to himself and let out a yell, damn it QB, where the hell are you? Closer than you know Kit. Naruto heard the voice from all around him as he stood up to look. Scanning the area around him intently he found nothing, QB? Where are you? I need to talk to you about the seal. Sai I'm well aware of that Kit. Your idiot godfather loosened the seal in an effort to allow you to draw on my power more readily without knowing what he was actually doing. I'm an entity of anger and hatred, this spilled over into you, which was why you and I were so arbitrarily aggressive towards one another and why you were so quick to anger. Naruto stopped looking for the QB as it was getting him nowhere and listened to it speak, so you're saying that Uro Senen pretty much fucked something up and forced too much of your chakra into my system as opposed to normal. So now what? Kyuubi finally emerged from nothingness in front of Naruto, the size of a normal fox, only with nine tails, well he was kind of successful in his endeavor. You can now access extra tails quicker than you could before, but now it's going to be harder to control. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the diminutive figure of the fox, what do you mean Kyuubi? 
QB sat down on its haunches and gave a look that could be construed as serious if foxes could look serious, now instead of having to take 10 to 15 minutes to build up the necessary chakra needed for a two-tailed cloak you can activate it almost instantaneously. However, without even thinking about it you can slip further and further into using more of my power subconsciously. Your anger in battle even from the tiniest things, such as someone surviving one of your lethal attacks, could force your temper to the point of you going past your limit of control. You will lose yourself to bloodlust if your battles drag on for too long. Naruto shrugged, so I'll feel a greater need to kill my enemy in a fight, big deal. If I was using your chakra to fight then I was probably going to kill them anyway so I don't think that matters too much to me. QB growled and snapped Naruto in the ankle, forcing the boy to yelp in surprise slash pain, QB, what the fuck? Continuing to growl, the QB licked the blood from the bite off of its muzzle, as happy as I am that you don't mind killing your opponents, I would be remiss if I didn't explain to your thick-headed self exactly what I mean by bloodlust. You will try to kill everything. Oh your focus will be on your enemy that you were fighting that drove you to the point of no control, but that's all you'll be concerned with. You will fight like a berserker, you will have a one-track mind, you will take every attack that your enemy launches at you and you will walk right through it. Naruto raised an eyebrow, yeah, I've got to tell you, none of what you just said really qualifies as a bad thing to me. Holding his hands up quickly in a placating fashion when he saw the QB narrow its eyes at him he stepped back a few inches. QB snorted and began pacing, how to put this so that you will understand. Okay, say that you kill your opponent while you are in this state. You won't just stop there, you will immediately find the nearest living thing, run to it, and kill it, friend, foe, or completely indifferent, you won't stop until someone stops you. Do you get the point now? You will be a mindless killer. Naruto gritted his teeth and punched the ground, God damn it. All of that work just to get this far and now you're saying that your power is too dangerous for me to use? If I use it in a fight against someone that can kick my ass I'll lose myself and become a killing machine? Fuck, Naruto continued to punch the ground, all of these years. I thought I was finally getting somewhere. I'm the worst fucking Jinchuriki in the elemental nations. If the other villages knew how much I suck then Konoha would be a laughingstock. QB sweat dropped at Naruto's breakdown, well technically they would have to know that you were the Jinchuriki of Konoha before anything could be the laughingstock of anything. Naruto looked away from beating the ground of his mindscape to glare at the QB, you shut up. You should be happy, you shouldn't have told me that. You could influence me easier and escape that way right? QB blinked blankly at Naruto, you would have to draw on all nine tails of my power and be feeble-minded enough to remove the seal from me yourself. If you lost your shit in the middle of a fight I wouldn't benefit from it. You need to learn how to fix it or else you really will be at a disadvantage. You are decent without me, but against someone like the Hachibi host you would be destroyed. Naruto frowned at the fox and wiped his hands off, that's great. Two steps forward, three steps back. Sigh alright, I think I've got the bitch out of me. I'll just have to avoid using your chakra until I know enough to fix the seal, easy right? QB took a moment to look away, uh, yeah. Sure, let's go with that. Naruto grinned at QB, great. Later QB. Naruto then phased out of the mindscape. Upon seeing its host exit, QB went to the edge of the cliff and looked out over Konoha, it's not going to be as easy as you think Kit. But I guess I'll let you find that out yourself. I'm not your damn answer key. QB yawned and donned an evil grin as it transformed to its regular size and fired off an Amari to begin the destruction of fake Konoha, ah, that's great. There's only one thing that could make this better right now. A flash of yellow appeared in front of the QB as the sounds of destruction came from below, I have to stop you from destroying Konoha, even at the cost of my life. For I am the Yondaime Hokage. An orange swirl revealed a man in an orange swirl mask with one eye hole, ah, my pet. You've jump-started my plans for me. Carry out my will and destroy Konoha. QB's grin grew even wider, Kami, I love my Jinchuriki. QB's tails were swishing wildly, not the real thing, but I'll be damned if I care. Line him up, it's party night. Triple X. Three days later. Jiraiya stood behind Naruto on the bridge in front of the waterfall. No clones this time, just Naruto by himself, are you sure you've got this Gaki? It's only been a month and a half. Naruto cracked his neck to the side, oh yeah. Just multiply that by the hundreds of clones I've been making every day. Naruto rubbed his hands together before placing them in the water, okay let's split this bitch. Naruto channeled wind chakra to his hands as he focused on the task at hand, come on. Sharper, thinner, let's go. 
Naruto yelled loudly as he lifted his hands up through the force of the water, channeling enough power to slice through the waterfall. As both Naruto and Jiraiya were showered by water from Naruto's display, the boy turned to Jiraiya with a shit-eating grin on his face, hell yeah, I can cut a waterfall. What do you think about that Urosenin? Jiraiya put his hand on Naruto's head, I think. It's time to go home. Naruto face fell off of the bridge in response. Triple X. Mainland of the Elemental Nations, somewhere in Hai no Kuni. Naruto gave Jiraiya a deadpan look, so you're telling me that you have no clue how to tighten the seal back up? Jiraiya gave Naruto a sheepish look, oh no. It was only meant to turn one way, in order to give you full control over the chakra one day. You can't put it back, you have to open it and gain full control at one time. Naruto's eye was twitching as he took in the information, so how do I do that? Is loosening it all I have to do? Let's do it then. Jiraiya moved a few steps out of Naruto's range, well, there are a few things you need to have accomplished before you can. For one you need to defeat your inner self. Naruto's brow was twitching even faster, how the hell was he supposed to fight and beat himself? He doubted that using Cage Bunshine would help, if it did then he had already beaten himself a shitload of times already, and what else? Jiraiya chuckled nervously, will you kind of need to beat the Kyuubi in combat? He finished hurriedly. Naruto stopped walking and looked at Jiraiya with a deer in the headlights look, you mind repeating that one more time? I think I just heard the stupidest thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. Did you just say I have to beat the Kyuubi? The Kyuubi? We are talking about the thing that was shoved into my gut because it was eradicating every last person in the village by its lonesome, right? Jiraiya answered tentatively, yeah. The same. Naruto palmed his face and continued to walk on, yeah whatever. I'm guessing it would be too much to ask if the QB would consider throwing the fight when the time comes. You've got that right Ningen. Beautiful. Okay fine. Just makes me feel so much better about being me. Ba-chan better have some good old-fashioned mind-numbing missions for me or I'm going to pop. Seriously, life just knows how to pile it on doesn't it? The man that trained me wants me to become Hokage since he thinks he's too old to go for it anymore. I can't use my bijou or I might end up killing everyone within seeing distance of me, which is pretty fucking far all things considered. I have to fight said bijou and beat it or else I'll never master using my demonic chakra. Well, baby steps. Right now let's just worry about getting back to Konoha, maybe go vent on some spiders in the forest of death. Yeah, that sounds good. Jiraiya watched Naruto's face roll through a gambit of emotions, overwhelmed, irritated, somewhat frightened, calm, and then strangely lucid. Jiraiya kept an eye on the boy as the look of lucidity stayed, one. Weird. Kid. Triple X. Kanahagakura no Sato, two days later. So brat, how was the mission? Tsunade said through her crossed fingers, trying and failing miserably to hide the smirk on her face. Naruto gave her a dry look, oh yeah, it was a real tough mission. Ba-chan the next time you want to swerve me into doing something, just stop and think, would coming out and telling me what you want me to actually go and do really be so bad? Tsunade moved her hands and made no attempt to hide her smirk, it wouldn't have been as fun as it was imagining the look on your face when you met the pervert so yes, yes it would have. Naruto rolled his eyes, yeah because I would have been such a bastard about taking the mission. What would I have done, turned it down? Naruto scoffed, since when do I turn down anything? Tsunade got the conversation back on track, alright. Now seriously, how was it? Naruto grinned at her, I can split a waterfall with my bare hands. Does that answer your question? Tsunade looked over at Jiraiya who was smiling in approval, in a month Tsunade Heim. It took him a bit over one month to learn how to do that. Those cage bunshine are something else I swear. He could have stayed the way he was before the invasion and as long as he knew how to train with those things he still could have been a force. Both looked at Naruto who was standing in front of Tsunade's desk with a combination of being at attention and at ease. Tsunade nodded, satisfied that something had been accomplished while they were gone, anything else I need to know about? Naruto raised a hand, actually yes. My seal, after Urosenin tried to let more of Kyuubi's chakra leak out he made it so that me using its chakra was more dangerous, I need to learn how to control it almost all over again or else I might just up and kill my entire team while I'm using it. I could go too far by accident. I'm just now getting a few people to think I'm not a demon, it would certainly suck if a lapse of control on my part threw all of that work away. Jiraiya looked at Tsunade questioningly as he let Naruto's words sink into her, so do you think I need to take him away again until he has it down? 
Naruto visibly frowned but kept his mouth shut. He really didn't want to traverse to the ass end of nowhere again only a few hours after getting back to the village, but if it was an order from Tsunade there wasn't any amount of griping that he could do about it. The most he could do was just take it and hope that it wasn't for too long. Tsunade looked as though she was seriously considering letting him go to deal with it, no. We need Naruto back for now. We're getting more missions now that the time for the Janan exam is coming up in a week and we need him to help with the influx. He can work on his control in the forest of death the way he has been, he just has to let me know what he's doing before he goes to do so. Naruto let a small smile grace his face, thanks Bachan. Tsunade gave him a smile in return, you're welcome brat. But still, I'm trusting you. I'm counting on you not going overboard with the QB's power, especially after you yourself had to tell me just how dangerous it was for you to use it right now. Jiraiya patted Naruto on the shoulder, maybe I should teach you how to prepare chakra suppressing seals so that you can have your team prepared in case you lose it on a mission. Thinking about losing his cool on a mission made Naruto bristle. Keeping his cool during moments like that was one of the things he prided himself on, but he knew that from the QB's description of exactly what he would become if he did go out of control it was the best idea, if you say so Uro Senen. I'm heading out now, if you guys need me I'm sure you know how to find me. Naruto walked over to the open window and jumped out, not getting any dispute from Tsunade on his chosen method of exit. Tsunade looked away from the window with a sigh, so how is he? Jiraiya scratched the side of his face, he just started breaking through with me when he told me he knew about his father. I really thought the kid was going to start opening up, and then this happens. He'll probably try shutting himself off again if I had to guess, out of fear of hurting someone he shouldn't. Should I schedule something with Inoiki? Maybe whatever is affecting the seal is mental. Tsunade didn't want Naruto to become reclusive. He was a good kid. It was kind of unnerving how efficient he was, but he was a good kid nonetheless. Jiraiya couldn't give her an answer, I'm not sure. He's not holding back any anger or anything. To make the kid mad you have to really grate on him. It's just when he does get mad the chances of him drawing too much of the QB's chakra is magnified, that's my fault though, I underestimated the complexity of Minato's seal. There was more to it than I could have figured before I messed with it. I need to head to Mount Mayaboku for a while. Tsunade laced her fingers and set her chin down, go and do what you need to in order to figure this out. Just keep in contact, send a toad with letters or something. Jiraiya got a grin on his face, but of course. You going to send me some revealing pictures back Heim? It might get lonely out there by myself. Triple X. With Naruto. Naruto's attention was drawn upwards as a white blur flew from the direction of the Hokage Tower. Shaking his head, Naruto continued on his way, I knew it was a good idea to leave that window open, Uro Senen is seriously a glutton for punishment, I swear. Finding himself at his destination, Naruto's stomach growled in anticipation as he threw aside the curtain keeping him from the stools of the Ichiraku ramen bar. Taking his seat he smirked to himself, Hey! I'm back and I've been deprived for far too long. Tucci came from the back, grinning as he realized it was Naruto making all the racket, well look who came back from the dead. Where have you been Naruto? We've been wondering where our primary patron was. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, yeah, I was away for a while. I'm going to start getting more back-to-back -back missions too. You know, with the village recovery and all, we need every shinobi we can get out there. Tucci nodded and pulled out a pad, so what will you have kid? Naruto thought on it for a moment, give me three bowls of miso back-to-back, -back, four beefs, and what the hell, two vegetable ramen. Variety right? Tucci laughed to himself, yeah, variety. Right. It'll be right out Naruto. Naruto tried to hide it, but the subtle tapping of the underside of the counter, along with the kicking motions his legs would sometimes make let it be known that he was actually anticipating his meal. Before he ended up getting his food he ended up getting a tap on the shoulder from a familiar face. Turning to face the person who had tried getting his attention, Naruto came face to face with the eye smile of Kakashi Hatake, how are you doing Naruto? Long time no see. Naruto let a ghost of a smile come onto his features as he faced his Janan cell leader, hey Kakashi. What brings you here? Kakashi took a seat next to Naruto, well, I heard you were back in town and I thought, why not go see my old Janan? So how have you been? Naruto shrugged, I can't complain really. I'm definitely kept busy that's for sure. I can only imagine what Ba-chan has you doing Sharingan no Kakashi, she overloading you with A and S ranked missions or what? Kakashi laughed lightly as Tuchi brought Naruto his first bowl. The boy dug in after a small utterance of Itadakimasu. 
Kakashi ordered a small bowl of chicken ramen, yeah pretty much, though she has given me something else to do these days. Naruto paused from his utter decimation of the hapless bowl of ramen to turn a curious eye to the masked Jounin, really? What's she got you doing now? I bet it's something irksome. Kakashi's eye smile never faded, you shouldn't talk about yourself like that Naruto. You may be a handful at times, but calling yourself irksome is just self-deprecating. Naruto looked up at Kakashi with the last remnants of his bowl of noodles hanging from his mouth, huh? He mumbled out through the bits of food. Kakashi pointed at the hot, fresh bowl that Tuchi had set in front of Naruto to return his attention to his food for the most part, Tsunade-sama has informed me that in your forthcoming missions I will be your commanding Jounin. Naruto started choking on his food out of surprise. After much effort with him beating himself in the stomach and Kakashi patting his back he finally got the food down the right pipe, you're going to be leading me in whatever team I get on my missions? Yep. Kakashi chirped happily. Standing up the man placed his money on the counter, well this has been nice talking to you for a bit Naruto. Hopefully we can do it more when we're working together. It'll be just like old times. Hard to believe it's only been a little over a year. Naruto snickered to himself, yeah just like old times, except instead of picking up dog crap we'll be babysitting merchants and wiping nobles asses. Something came to Naruto's attention, hey Kakashi, aren't you going to eat? As he turned he saw that Kakashi had left the stand. Looking at Kakashi's empty bowl a smile came to his face as he returned to his meal, I've got to learn how he does that. Triple X. Go home, go to sleep, find someone to bother all day tomorrow. Yep, that's a good plan. Naruto thought to himself as he again made his way through the streets of Konoha. As he drew closer to his apartment he began to realize how good of a view he had from his apartment. He chuckled to himself as he remembered what his goal had been when he had his seals and the task given to him by Donzo, ha, I never had a chance did I? Of course I was going to want to be Hokage. If four big gigantic faces were staring you in the face every morning when you left the house wouldn't you get somewhat curious about it? May, no need to worry about that now. I've got more pressing issues to worry about these days. I'm ten years off before I need to think about Hokage. Breaking himself from his thoughts he noticed the looks he was getting from the people around him. As usual the older people were glaring and wishing death on him with their eyes, but he didn't care. They didn't have the power or the balls to try anything against him these days. More importantly he saw that people closer to his own age weren't malicious in their looks at all. The combined rumors of what he had done during the invasion, with the defeat of Gara and the routing of a few squads of Auto Ninja, coupled with his feet since then had trickled down to those of his own age group, as evident by the comments he could hear from a few of them. That's the kid that made the crater a few miles from the border. I'd sure hate to have to fight that guy. I heard he lives in the forest of death. No joke, he keeps the spiders that live there like his pets or something. Those whisker marks make him look kind of cute. The second to last comment made him sweat drop, pets my ass. Who comes up with this crap? The last comment made him face fault. Picking himself up off of the ground with a sheepish smile as he heard giggles from the girls that had said it. Walking it off, he heard a familiar yell, Naruto Niazan. Naruto turned and rolled his eyes, what, did someone send out a press release saying that I came back today? Despite that thought, Naruto had a smile on his face as Konohamaru, Moigi, and Udon came running over to him, hey guys. What's up, don't you have school today? Konohamaru grinned up at the scarred blonde, boss it's the weekend, we don't have class today. Naruto looked at the trio and let out a laugh, yeah, well I guess time flies when you don't care what day it is. Remember guys, at some point you'll stop caring what day of the week it is, and when that happens then you can say that you've reached my level of apathy toward the things around you. The kid sweat dropped, not knowing whether or not he was serious and followed along as he turned to head home. Konohamaru ran up to his side, so boss, where have you been? I haven't seen you in forever. Naruto kept his gaze forward, I was learning how to cut a waterfall with my chakra. Konohamaru tripped over nothing upon hearing what Naruto had been doing while he was gone. Looking back at Udon and Moigi they both shrugged as all three ran to catch up with Naruto who had not stopped for them. Konohamaru elbowed Naruto lightly in the thigh and chuckled, that was a good one boss. What were you really doing while you were gone? Naruto looked at the kids with a smile, believe what you want to. Now is there something you guys want? All three darted in front of him and spoke at once, play ninja with us. Naruto sweat dropped, fine, but it's you all against me. Understood? Yes boss. Was the simultaneous cry from the youngsters. Naruto shunshine just out of their sight, start counting. 
As they obeyed his command, Naruto made a cage bunshine, play ninja with them, don't lose, but don't be too hard on them. Give them some hope that they could have won. The clone nodded with a smirk and went off in the direction they had just came from while the original. Naruto shook his head in amusement as he heard the sounds of the kids beginning their chase, let's see. It's still daylight out. It's too early to sleep without being called a lazy ass. Naruto made his way towards the main gate to go and mess with Kotetsu and Izumo who would probably appreciate the distraction from the monotony of their usual job. Landing on top of the booth that both were seated in he started stomping on the roof to get their attention. What the hell? Kotetsu walked outside and looked on top of the booth to find Naruto smiling and waving at him, oh hey kid, how are you doing? Naruto hopped down to let Izumo see him, I'm doing just fine, how's gate duty? Kotetsu shook his head with a smirk, as boring and monotonous as ever. Wanna take my spot? Naruto waved him off, I'll pass on that. I just got back into town anyway, I couldn't stop to talk because Tsunade Bakken wanted a report first thing after me and Uro Senen got back. Izumo looked around nervously, Naruto, are you crazy? Tsunade-sama will kill you if she catches wind of you talking about her like that. Naruto grinned smugly at Izumo, she tried to already and she couldn't get it done, so now she just lives with it. I call him like I see him. Tsunade Bakken is 50 years old, therefore she's a grandma. Jiraiya is a pervert and does nothing to hide it, hence the name, Uro Senen. You guys are lucky I haven't named you anything yet. Naruto walked inside the booth and took a seat. Izumo gave Naruto an amused look before turning towards the path outside the gate, all right, time to go to work. The Kurenai led Team 8 made their way towards the gate, Kurenai Yuhi, reporting back from a C-ranked escort mission. As she looked behind the booth and saw the uncommon sight of blonde spiky hair she raised an eyebrow, Naruto? Naruto waved to her and the rest of her team, hi guys. Kiba grinned and bumped knuckles with him, hey, what are you doing in there? I thought you were out of the village. Naruto shrugged as he passed the sign in ledger to Kiba for him and his team to sign, I was, as you can see I'm back. And I'm in here because I'm bored, and it's too early for me to go to sleep. What did you guys just get through doing? Kiba passed the clipboard off to his other teammates, just some escort for some guy. We didn't even get to fight anyone, it was completely boring. Shino finished signing himself in and passed it on, Kiba you can't get a fight on every mission. Combat isn't ideal, times when you don't have to fight should be valued. Naruto nodded, that's deep Shino. So how have you guys all been? I've only seen Kiba recently. He looked up at Kurenai who was looking him over sternly, oh come on, you can't still be pissed off at me for beating your team. It was a fight, I fought. Kurenai's lips quirked slightly, they were your comrades. You sent Kiba to the hospital. Naruto pointed at the boy in question, look at him, he's just fine. I sent him to the hospital once before that, only the first time I did it I got my ass kicked worse than he did. Kiba are you mad about how I won? Kiba shook his head, no, I'm mad that you won, not how you did it. I'm getting my wins back one of these days Uzumaki. Naruto grinned at him, feel free to try whenever you like. If you can find me in the forest of death then you can fight me. He looked at Shino, are you mad that I beat you? Shino pushed his glasses further up on his face, no, it would be illogical for me to be upset with your victory when it occurred months ago. However much like Kiba I will be getting even with you one of these days. Naruto smirked, same thing applies to you that I told Kiba. He turned to the one that had yet to speak, Hinata. How are you doing? Come on, how are things? Kiba grabbed the girl and pulled her forward, Hinata-chan's really strong. She came up with a new jutsu that kicks ass. It's awesome. Naruto smiled, I need to see that jutsu. Whenever you guys want to find me and I'm not at home just leave a message or something. Unless you actually feel like skulking through the forest of death to find me. The entire team paled at hearing that as Hinata of all people spoke up, Anyo, Naruto-kun, do you actually live in the forest of death like the rumors say? Naruto sweat dropped, whoever started that stupid rumor is going to get their ass kicked. No I don't I just go in there all the time to train, it's a better workout than any other training field that's for sure. Kurenai decided it was time to break up the rabble while there was still daylight, alright, come on guys, we have to report on our mission. You can find Naruto and talk to him later. It would be nice if you could spar with the team one of these days Naruto. Naruto grinned at her, so you're not going to try and genjutsu me into a coma? Kurenai let a small smirk come on her face, I thought about it, and nope, I'm not. Naruto nodded, good, because it wouldn't have worked anyway. 
I keep my mental mind extra secure, nothing gets in. The team started to walk towards the Hokage Tower, but Kiba got one more shot in before they got too far, oh, so that's why you were dead last in the academy? Naruto jumped out of the booth and flipped him off, dead last that Kiba. I'll be happy to show you how dead last I am again if twice wasn't enough to get the point across. After a moment of silence Naruto nodded, satisfied that his threat came across loud and clear before he turned to leave. However he was stopped in his tracks before he could even take a step, fuck you Naruto. Naruto whipped around to only see them as dots in the distance. He left grumbling to himself as Kotetsu and Izumo were seated in the booth snickering. Triple X. Welcome home shithead. Tuya chirped from her place on Naruto's couch. Naruto had a dry look on his face as he walked inside his apartment, you know when I asked you to watch my place I didn't really think you would be over here when I got back. Tuya shrugged, you have a TV. Therefore, I consider your place better than mine. Hence the reason that I'm here. Where did you go anyway? Naruto looked through his refrigerator before giving up on finding something and heading over to the chairs, Suki no Kuni. Fun fact, I can now split a waterfall into two with my chakra alone. Killer. Naruto grunted and plopped down next to her on the couch, garnering a confused look from her, there are two other places to sit you know? Naruto gave her a tired look, this is the best chair. This is also my house, you're lucky I didn't just flop face first on the couch like I usually do. You're sitting where my face would traditionally go by the way. Tuya blushed at Naruto's implication and was about to call him on it until his next move, uck. Naruto fell to the side and landed with his head in Tuya's lap. Which ended up with the girl's cheeks becoming dangerously overcolored. Shithead what are you doing? She squeaked out. Naruto smirked up at her, ha, huh, well I told you that you're sitting where I place my head on this couch, or would you like me to go full on traditional with how I lay on this chair and turn face down? Tuya stammered before narrowing her eyes, still blushing, you don't have the balls. Naruto's smirk became a mischievous grin, oh really? You've obviously forgotten who you're talking to. Allow me to refresh your memory. Triple X. Team 10, alongside Sakura, were sitting in a park. Kuji and Shikamaru were laying on a hill watching clouds, while Ino and Sakura were sitting next to a lake, so forehead, house training with Tsunade-sama. Sakura looked over at her rival and smiled, it's definitely the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but I'm glad it's happening. I really owe Naruto one for setting the whole thing up. Sakura noticed Ino's discomfort at hearing Naruto's name, you're not still sore at him for winning during that test he had to take are you? Ino shook her head, it's not that. I just don't think everything is right with Naruto. I know I told you already, the things I saw in his head weren't normal. It's scary how different he became in almost no time at all. Sakura rubbed the back of her neck, well honestly it was kind of unnerving at first, but he's still Naruto, just a faster, stronger, more powerful Naruto. Shithead. I regret nothing. Get back here so I can RIP you apart. You know you liked IT too ya chan. Why else did you let me stay like that for 15 seconds, I was counting. Die you bastard. Sakura and Ino blinked as the clear-cut voice of the person the conversation was about rang out across a distance, followed closely by another irate female voice. Sakura palmed her face, you see, same old knucklehead. Triple X. Somewhere in Konoha where a large white-haired man picked himself out of a body-sized hole a tear fell from his eye, way to go Gaki. I knew I'd get you on my side eventually. Chapter 21, Follow the Breadcrumbs. Well Naruto is this familiar or what? Kakashi said as he gave the young blonde an eye smile. Naruto rolled his eyes, yeah Kakashi, real familiar, except we aren't going to Nami no Kuni this time, we're going to Mizu no Kuni. I still have no idea how the hell we're even pulling this one off. Isn't there a civil war going on right now? Kakashi nodded, well it's mostly over. The anti-bloodline forces were all but wiped out, now it's mostly just cleanup duty for the victorious side. We should be just fine. The new Mizukage sent out a message of goodwill to the other villages so nothing should go wrong. Naruto sighed, Kakashi what's my track record with you when it comes to easy detail missions? Kakashi raised a finger in dispute, we've only had one true easy detail. Naruto snapped his fingers, there you go. One for one, that's 100% on the bullshit ratio. That's why I brought a shitload of explosive notes. He then fished through his gear and pulled out a fat stack of explosive notes, flipping through them like paper money. Oh yeah. Fu Winjutsu is the greatest thing ever. Kakashi sweat dropped, and what pray tell are you going to do with? 
Kakashi lifted his hitty 8 to use his Sharon Gon for a quick count, minus 34 explosive notes? Naruto grinned at him as he put them where he got them from, any damn thing I want, I have 34 explosive notes. Troublesome. Why am I here again? Shikamaru stated as he caught up with Kakashi and Naruto, you took me away from my team and sent me on a mission that has a high probability of the you know what hitting the fan. What did I do to you guys for this? Naruto glared lightly at the lazy Chunin, you made me do an entire day's worth of menial labor without the use of cage bunshine. I didn't forget that, but Kakashi was the one that requested you, so deal, or would you rather be on gate duty like Kotetsu and Izumo? Shikamaru yawned, actually that sounds right up my alley. Doing nothing all day, sure beats traipsing off to Kami knows where with you. Tuya walked up and looked at Shikamaru with a scoff, how the hell did your lazy ass get promoted to Chunin? Naruto and Shikamaru looked at each other before Naruto pointed at Shikamaru lamely, uh, he's really, really smart? Tuya frowned and looked Shikamaru over, can he beat you shithead? Naruto shrugged, I don't know, the last time we were supposed to fight he just quit. I guess he was just too unmotivated to go up against me. Shikamaru palmed his forehead, don't make me out to be like that Naruto. You broke my cage main no jutsu, shadow possession jutsu, without even trying. Remember, I tried it the second the fight started. Naruto scratched his nose and looked up at the sky, oh, so that's why it was so damn hard to move my arm. Or anything in general. I swear, I had a crick in my neck that was totally stifling. Shikamaru face fell and jumped up with the quickness, so you're telling me that you had no idea that you were caught in my jutsu? Naruto grinned, nope. I just thought you were being a lazy ass and didn't want to fight. I didn't say anything because by the time you came out to fight I was sick and tired of beating up all the Janan. You actually made my job easier. Tuya barked out a laugh, shithead bluffed you into quitting a fight without even knowing that he did it. That's great. So what are we doing anyway? I doubt we're going to Mizu no Kuni to see the sights after the civil war. Naruto grimaced and thought about why they were heading out to Chidri no Sato in the first place. Flashback. You've actually got something on the Akatsuki? So I'm not going to get blindsided randomly out in the middle of nowhere? Naruto asked as he stood with Kakashi in Tsunade's office. Tsunade gave Naruto an apprehensive look as Shizun laughed nervously at her side, we're not saying that Naruto. Jiraiya just said that he found some interesting information about Akatsuki, but he needs someone to go to Kirigakura to investigate. Naruto filled in the blanks, and by someone you mean me, right? Me too. Kakashi chimed in with his ever-present one-eyed smile. Me and Kakashi. Anyone else coming on our little getaway to a glorified war zone? Naruto griped at the blonde woman. Shizun cut in, I'm Naruto-kun, the civil war in Kiri has been over for upwards of a few months now. There's a new Mizukage and everything, it's not a war zone anymore. Naruto chuckled slightly and looked at the black-haired medic, Shizun Nichin tell me, what happened to the old Mizukage, the one that was there while the war was going on? Shizun gave Naruto a sheepish look. I don't know Naruto-kun, no one does. Naruto nodded, and that's the point. Until the leader can be accounted for, we all know that nothing is over. What is this ranked? If it's anything less than A rank I'm calling your sanity into question Ba-chan, I'll have to ask if you're going senile. A paperweight to the face was his response. Naruto spit some teeth on the floor and ignored the looks of shock he was getting from Kakashi and Shizun, they'll come back in an hour from now. Kakashi peeled his eyes away from the bloody mouth Chunin, right. Well then, we're to search as much of Mizu no Kuni as we are permitted to look at and come back with anything we can find on Akatsuki. Correct? Tsunade nodded, yes, Kakashi you have free reign to select two other Chunin to assist you and Naruto on the mission. This will be run on your orders as you will be the ranking shinobi in charge. Take care and make sure you get everyone back alive. And flashback. Naruto. Naruto came back into focusing as Shikamaru shouted in his ear, the troublesome redhead asked you a question. Why are we going to Mizu no Kuni anyway? Naruto scratched his cheek and looked away sheepishly, um. Cloud watching? Yeah, red cloud watching. Kakashi looked at his young charges, we're going on a reconnaissance run, to see what the landscape of Mizu no Kuni looks like. Also to see if we can set up some kind of rapport with the new Mizukage, seeing as how the old one was deposed. Naruto looked over at Tuya, so Tuya-chan, ever been in Mizu no Kuni before? You were Orochimaru's bodyguard right? You've probably been all over the place. Tuya chuckled, you would think so wouldn't you shithead, but that fucker never let us go anywhere. 
He just kept us cooped up in that stupid little underground rat's nest of his. He only let us out to go on missions that kept us in Ta no Kuni, so no, I'm not as worldly traveled as you think I fucking should be. Naruto held up his hands in defense, damn, it was just a question. No need to bite my head off. He turned to Shikamaru, I think you might be on to something with the whole women are troublesome thing. I would say that out loud, but as often as you say it, it might make people wrongly think that you're gay. Shikamaru gave Naruto an irritated glare, but let it pass as he figured it was too much hassle to stay mad about something like that. Tuya had another question however, so why exactly do we need to go for reconnaissance in Mizu no Kuni? Kakashi answered her, well it's been about 10 years since any reliable information came out of that place, what with all of the on again off again fighting that was always taking place, so we're heading in to get good scope of what Kiri has as far as military, or anything really. Triple X. The next night. By nightfall of the previous day they had made it to the shores of Hai no Kuni and had boarded a ship heading out towards the island nation of Mizu no Kuni. In order to barter passage aboard for the entire squad, Naruto had to enlist the services of his cage Bunshine as deckhands. This led to Naruto being cursed out every single time he came on deck by his clones turned sailors. As the rest of the team were below deck, Shikamaru was doing absolutely nothing, while Tuya was practicing with her flute, Naruto was up above, ignoring his belligerent clones bumping into him and giving half-assed apologies. Hey Naruto, what are you doing out here? Kakashi came up above and found the real blonde amid the batch of fakes that were hard at work. Naruto dispelled one of his more rowdy clones with a punch after it elbowed him in the ribs, not much, just thinking. Hey Kakashi, when you make cage bunshine do they ever try to mess with you, or is it just me? Kakashi chuckled as he looked over the side of the ship alongside his one-time student, it's just you Naruto. Only you could have disgruntled copies of yourself. Naruto let out a small laugh, I'm not sure if that compliment was backhanded or not. Hey, you were on my dad's team back in the day right? Kakashi looked around for eavesdroppers, it's okay. Ever since I made clones to work through the night the regular sailors took this as their cue to slack, they're all down below getting sloshed right now, we're alone up here. Yep, all 45 of us. Right boys? He yelled over his shoulder. Fuck you boss. Was the response from one of his clones. Naruto gestured to the clones moving about the ship, see how much respect I command? So you knew my dad right? Kakashi nodded, yes I did, he was a great man. You low. Naruto rolled his eyes, yeah, yeah, I look just like him, I know. I know tons of stuff about him from Uro Senen, what I want to know about is my mom. Did you know her? Because I can't get anything on her. Come on Kakashi, you've got to give me something here. Kakashi stroked his chin and made exaggerated thinking sounds, hmm. Well I guess it couldn't hurt. He then turned to Naruto with an eye smile, call me Kakashi sensei and I'll think about it. Naruto gave Kakashi a dry look, Kakashi. He growled out. Kakashi wagged his finger chidingly, ah, ah, ah. Kakashi sensei. Naruto leaned on the railing, well if you teach me something I'll call you Kakashi sensei. Otherwise you're not getting that one out of me. Kakashi shrugged, all right fair enough. Do you know how to make your own jutsu? Naruto shook his head in the negative. He knew that the ninja that were able to did so, but he had never been taught how exactly to go about doing that for himself. In truth, his one original move was more of a kick-ass henge that no one else could do as complete as he could, so knowing how to come up with a way to actually utilize all of the crazy little things that he had swimming through his head at all times of the day and night was damnably useful. Naruto looked up at Kakashi and smiled, deal. Kakashi sensei. Kakashi smiled and ruffled Naruto's hair, okay, now you're pushing it. Kakashi removed his hand from Naruto's head, okay, so you know the two forms of chakra manipulation right? Shape transformation and nature transformation. Well from what I've heard you've already mastered both, what with you learning the Rasengan, the pinnacle of shape transformation in ninjutsu, and with you mastering your elemental affinity over wind. That means that there's only one thing left for you to be able to do. Naruto waited for the rest of his speech, and that is? Kakashi stalled for dramatic effect, and apparently it was working too because all of Naruto's topside cage bunshine were waiting nearby with their attention set on listening, nothing, you should be able to make your own jutsu now. Are you sure that you're just not imaginative enough for it? 44 face faults were his response. The cage bunshine all hit the deck so hard they dispelled. The original hopped up and glared at Kakashi with a twitching eye, Kakashi I'm going to. Kakashi waved him off, ma, ma, Naruto. Calm down, I was kidding, 
But I was mostly serious though, you already have all you need to start making your own jutsu. Just experiment with things that you think could work, you can pretty much do anything you want with the level of skill that you possess in the necessary areas. Maybe you can even succeed where I failed. Naruto raised a scarred eyebrow, what do you mean Kaka-sensei? Kakashi extended his right hand as a spinning blue ball of chakra that was quite familiar to Naruto took form. Naruto stood gaping at the Rasengan in Kakashi's hand, you know how to do the Rasengan? Kakashi had a pleased look on his masked face, yep. Minato-sensei taught it to me in the hopes that I could take it to the final stage of the jutsu's development. Uh, is there something wrong Naruto? Naruto simply stared at Kakashi with a tick mark on his head, yeah Kakashi I think there might be. Now when you went off for a month before the Chunin exam finals with Sasuke to teach him your shaki, stabby chidori why oh why did you not leave me the instructions to the Rasengan? That would have been so much more helpful than getting thrown off a cliff by a pervert. Especially seeing as how it was my old man's jutsu anyway and you knew I was his son. What the fuck? Naruto's eyes flashed red for a moment. Kakashi rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, would it help if I said that it slipped my mind? What with all of the Orochimaru putting the curse seal on Sasuke and telling me that he was seeking to take him away and whatnot? Naruto sighed and shrugged, dismissing his ire for the moment, never mind, it's cool. So wait, you're saying that you were going to add something to the Rasengan? What? Your elemental chakra? Kakashi nodded, exactly, it's how I ended up making the Chidori in the first place. It was an accident when I was trying to combine Rasengan with my lightning element. I failed, but ended up getting my own jutsu out of it. If I were you I would start by trying to combine your own element to the Rasengan, maybe you can make it work where I failed. Naruto formed his own Rasengan and smiled before looking up at Kakashi, thanks Kakashi-sensei, I know what my next major projects are going to be now. So, did you know my mother at all? If you didn't that's okay, I can't seem to find anyone that would tell me anything so I thought I would come to you. Kakashi looked at the hopeful look on Naruto's face and paused, your mother's name was Kushina Uzumaki. You got most of your looks from Minato, and when you were on my squad I could swear you got your personality from her. I think you've still got some of it actually. She was something of a hothead, a trait I see in you quite often these days whether you try hiding it or not. Naruto smirked and shrugged, getting a chuckle out of the mask Jounin. Kakashi looked up at the moon, your parents were wonderful people Naruto. They were both excited to meet you, I have no doubts in my mind they would have given anything in the world to see how you turned out, I think they would be awfully proud of you. I know I am. Naruto looked away bashfully before turning back to Kakashi, so if you were my dad's student doesn't that make you like my godbrother or something? Kakashi looked up curiously, huh? Well when you put it that way. Naruto's eyes widened, oh no. I've got a pervert as a godfather and as a godbrother and both of them are my senseis. I never had a chance did I? Naruto's eyes shrank back to normal size and he let out a dismissive noise, whatever. No use fighting the flow, I might as well enjoy the fruits of my affliction. Though I could do without taking Uro Kyofu's ass beatings, you guys are crazy to flaunt it in public the way you do. Hey by the way Kaka-sensei, do you like being insane? Kakashi gave Naruto a thumbs up, I enjoy every waking second of it. It definitely makes things a hell of a lot more interesting I'll tell you that. Triple X. Two days later. Sweet fucking land. Tuya ran off of the ship as it docked in Mizu no Kuni so fast she left a scorch mark where she had been standing on deck. Being seasick for the duration of the trip wasn't fun for Tuya, which meant it wasn't fun for anyone on her squad as she invented new ways to curse someone out even when hanging off the side of the ship for most of the journey. Shikamaru yawned and rubbed his eyes as he stepped off of the ship and got an eyeful of the port town they had docked at, I was rather enjoying just doing nothing on that ship the whole time. Maybe I should be a sailor when I retire? He shook that notion from his head and watched Kakashi and Naruto get off of the boat. You're welcome on our ship anytime boy. Come back soon kid. Did you ever think of being a sailor? On this ship? Naruto turned around and growled at the sailors bidding him farewell, fuck you, you lazy bastards. My ass I'm getting back on this ship, shit you should be paying me. Naruto grumbled down the boardwalk as he sat on a bench next to Shikamaru who was staring at clouds and Tuya who was sucking in wind to kick the seasickness out of her system. The redhead with a colorful vocabulary turned to Naruto with a questioning look, what pissed you off so damn badly shithead? Naruto glared at the ship of still waving sailors, well if you weren't up chucking overboard for three days you would know that I pretty much made up all of the physical labor of the ship. How else do you think we all got on? 
I think I can captain my own ship now with as much practice doing everything as I've got now. Kakashi walked up with an eye smile, all right team, let's get moving. We can get a good start towards Mizu no Kuni now if we leave immediately. All three kids groaned as they stood up, getting a raised eyebrow from the scarecrow, what's wrong with all of you? Tuya rubbed her stomach, I saw everything I ate for the past three days twice and now we're probably going to be running. Shikamaru rubbed the back of his neck, this mission is going to get troublesome and you seem way too eager to get started with it. Naruto glared back at the ship they had all disembarked from, I just did the equivalent of an entire ship's work without pay for the past three days and as you can see I'm absolutely ecstatic about that. Kakashi I smiled, you know what can fix all of that? Getting a move on. Come on kids, let's go. Kakashi marched off with the three tuning following behind. Triple X. So Kakashi sensei, we're here to basically commence with espionage on Kiri, more or less right? Kakashi's eyes were on his orange book while he traversed the misty roads of the country, leading his team, yes Shikamaru. Why do you ask? Naruto sighed as he kept his eyes peeled for trouble along with Shikamaru and Tuya, I don't know Kaka sensei, maybe he was compelled to ask due to the fact that we're out in the open for all to see. Naruto gestured widely around himself, this is what I was talking about before my chunin test. Aren't we supposed to be ninja? Why the fuck are we out in the open in what could be a hostile environment? Kakashi sighed and shut his book, Naruto, Kirigakura is home to some of the best sensor ninja in the elemental nations. If we tried that and were caught it could cause a war between our villages. And with both of our countries being weakened by war so recently it would leave us open to attack from one of the more opportunistic villages elsewhere. Basically, blatant, flat-out espionage like what you're suggesting would start the next great war. Naruto sweat dropped and looked away, point taken. So why are we going to Kiri again? Kakashi I smiled at Naruto, well the new Mizukage is instituting something of an open-door policy to the village until everything is back on the up and up. Mostly so that immigrants and others that Kiri will need to help rebuild and regain some stability can enter the area easily. It's a pretty double-edged sword. Tuya chuckled, Orochi team didn't have that kind of thing going for Otto, that's for damn sure. Not particularly the most pleasant place ever fucking devised. Naruto smirked, oh I know. Naruto met Tuya's eyes as the two of them shared a silent laugh with one another. Shikamaru rolled his shoulder with one arm, so what exactly are we looking for? I think Naruto is kind of right. If we get caught looking around where we shouldn't we can get busted, and I don't think Chunin level ninja get diplomatic immunity. You might Kakashi sensei because you're a jounin, but the rest of us are screwed if this goes south. Kakashi nodded, true, which is why we are really trolling for secrets or anything. Just a basic layout of the land. Like I said, any reliable information on Kiri at all, even if it's just an estimation of how big the village is, would be useful. Shikamaru sighed in realization, so you're basically saying that we're supposed to be tourists? Kakashi chided Shikamaru's dismissal of his role, ah, ah, ah. The word you want to use is diplomats Shikamaru. Shikamaru rolled his eyes, fine, we're here to be diplomats then? Naruto laughed at Shikamaru's expression, yeah, you guys are meant to be tourists. I'm here for the real deal. Uro Senen said that Kirigakura was the birthplace of Akatsuki. How else would I be able to find out anything about them? I'll be damned if just sit pretty and wait for them to come to me. Alright everyone, ship up, we'll be at Kiri within the hour, Kakashi snapped his book shut, all of you, these people are going to be on edge. Shikamaru, keep an eye on everything. You're the smartest of the three of you and being able to piece together anything that seems off will be paramount. Tuya, do not antagonize these people, they just spent the last several years fighting a war with their own people, a fresh foreign tuning would just piss them off. Naruto. Make yourself scarce. Naruto saluted Kakashi and Shunshined out of the lineup. Tuya and Shikamaru both had their jaws dropped as Kakashi walked along like nothing had happened at all. Tuya pointed at the spot where Naruto had stood just a moment ago, leave signifying his past presence, wait. What the fuck just happened here? Shikamaru mumbled and followed after Kakashi, troublesome. Triple X. Six hours later, Kirigakur hotel room. All right Kakashi, where the fuck did shithead go? Tuya hadn't calmed down since she walked into the village. Shikamaru had made sure to keep a body between himself and her at all times. Namely Kakashi's body, for self-preservation purposes, why did you split him off, it doesn't make any sense. Shikamaru was standing by the door, she's right. Why did he come all this way to Kiri just to bug out right before we got here? And why didn't you tell us? 
Kakashi was laying on the bed, little orange book in hand, sigh my cute little chunin certainly don't like to leave things as they are do they? Kakashi flipped a page and acted aloof as usual, Naruto has an alternate objective from us that in truth really has absolutely nothing to do with Kiri at all. As long as I state that we have another coming in a few days we should be seeing him very soon. And if we don't, well I'm sure he'll reach us somehow. Tuya felt like grinding her teeth together, but where did he go? He just up and left the moment you gave him the cue to go. Shikamaru now had something else to think about, the way he up and left without a trace was way too smooth for a chunin, let alone a rookie chunin in his second year as a ninja. And secondary objectives? What kind of things are you into Naruto? Kakashi sighed as he saw the look of pondering on Shikamaru's face and decided to run damage control, fine. Naruto is on his way to Nami no Kuni, land of waves, as we speak. Kakashi clenched his teeth under his mask waiting for the outburst. What? Tuya felt like strangling Kakashi now, why the fuck would you let him go off by himself to a whole Nuta country? Why the fuck is he even there in the first place? Kakashi lowered his book and met Tuya's gaze with one eye, locked on her seriously, that is Naruto's business. If you need to know or if he wants you to know he'll tell you when we meet up again. Until then drop it and get ready to record what you see tomorrow. But. Kakashi's eye narrowed, he'll be back before you know it. If anything happens to him I'll know. Triple X. Two days later, shores of Nami no Kuni. And then they made me their king. Naruto finished to a group of sailors huddled around him. The grizzled sea hand sat silently as the boy finished up his story, it seems that all of the other animals in the forest of death really don't like those bastard spiders I told you about either. Those stupid things are actually the reason why everything in there is so damn vicious and oversized, they needed to be just to survive. They were absolutely delighted when they found out I'd been killing them for sport for months. Naruto was starting to get unnerved by the stares from the bigger men, okay. Well, I've got to go. Places to see and people to do, you know. Naruto sighed under his breath as he left the ship, Kami, sailors are weird. They all stared after him before one turned to the rest of them that was the kid that saved this place wasn't it? Another sailor pointed, okay, after hearing that shit I have to say. The thought of the kid saving the country from one fat bald midget with a superiority complex doesn't seem too far-fetched anymore. Naruto quickly made his way to the outskirts of the port town while his ever-present companion sounded off, you're really reaching for a way to control me aren't you kid? Do you think going to this place is going to give you any advantages when the time comes? Naruto frowned, it doesn't matter whether it does or not. I have to try. Unless you feel like being generous and fighting me blind and with your back paws bound then I'm not going to win. If you weren't full strength anyway I don't think I would want the victory. Naruto bared his teeth, and besides, either way I get to find out something about myself so who cares? I still can't believe I convinced Kakashi to let me go. QB scoffed in his head, oh please kid. That man is a sentimental sucker when it comes to anything regarding your parents. All you had to do was what you did and seem curious about your origins. Naruto smirked but put a serious look back on his face, do you think Kakashi can dig anything up about Akatsuki before I get there? QB rumbled lowly from inside his head, kid I don't think either of you could dig anything up. If your pervert of a godfather couldn't come up with any kind of info what makes you think you and the Cyclops can? Face it, you're stuck waiting until you get attacked. That will be your only chance. Naruto shook his head, I can't believe that, I won't. I'm not going to sit and wait around for the best shinobi from every corner of the world to come knocking at the front gate asking for me. We know what they want, we know what it takes for them to get it, and we know how many of them there are. All we don't know is how to find these fuckers. They've done a very good job of keeping that a secret. It's never that simple kit. I'm telling you, going out of your way to find them all will mean nothing if you're too weak to take them down. Take the time that you have and improve. I will not be captured by anyone ever again, I'll devour you when you challenge me for control and until that day you and I will be with our backs against the wall so to speak. So I'll say this, after we're done here you need to get your shit together Ningen. Fight for me, fight for yourself, fight for your mission, get strength for these reasons, and for all of the people that have put their necks on the line to keep you alive and gotten you this far. Naruto sighed and spoke out loud seeing as he was alone and running across the countryside, let's just find this place before nightfall. We only have a small window of time to get what I need and get back to Kiri to link back up with the team. Triple X. Kirigakur, with Kakashi and company. Kakashi walked out of the main building where the Mizukage's office was situated with a dumbfounded look evident in his one visible eye, that was the Mizukage? Oh sweet Kamishi's perfect. 
and I could swear she was hitting on me. Kakashi put his features back to normal and started to think, though that kid with the sword kept glaring at me like I stole something. Weird. There's probably a story there or something. Shikamaru and Tuya met up with Kakashi outside where he left them for his meeting, so Kakashi sensei, why were you looking all gobsmacked just now coming out of the building? Tuya followed up, yeah, are we getting kicked out of Kiri or what? Shikamaru shook his head at the negative mindset of the girl. Kakashi smiled and waved it off, oh nothing at all, just some elite, high-ranking ninja stuff. Nothing you all need to concern yourselves with. Kakashi took the lead, orange pervert book out in front of his face for the world to see, and planned to lead the team around the village when Tuya saw something hanging from his back pocket. Moving with the quickness, Tuya snatched a piece of paper from the pocket of Kakashi, what the hell is this? Shikamaru peered over her shoulder to see just what had caught his former enemy's interest. Shikamaru's eyes widened as he read over what Tuya had taken, no way, is that? Tuya looked up at Kakashi with wide eyes, this is the Mizukage's personal information, address, full name, and. Are those her measurements? Shikamaru had a small nosebleed after reading that part, how the fuck did you get this shit? Kakashi turned around to his young charges and returned the paper to his pocket with what they had to believe was a stupid grin under his mask, ha, huh, she must have slipped it in my pocket when I left. I knew that wasn't some kind of traditional Kirigakur farewell. He scratched the back of his head sheepishly before shrugging, I'm Kakashi Hitake, and that's all you need to know about that. Turning back around he motioned for the two to follow him, come on, this is a rare opportunity for kids like you. We have a foreign village to see. Shikamaru shook his head, why is everyone on Team 7 so confusing? First Sasuke goes clinically insane and goes to Orochimaru, then Naruto runs through our entire graduating class like a hot knife through butter, and now Kakashi is getting hookups in. That whole team is a big pain in the ass. Triple X. With Naruto, unknown area in Nami no Kuni. Naruto kept a frantic pace as he tried to arrive at his destination before midnight, man, I feel like a real heel for not going to see Inari, Tsunami, and Tazana, but this is for business not pleasure. I'll try and catch up with them soon. I wonder what they'll say when they see me? Naruto was broken from his musing when a flock of bats swarmed in his face. No matter how he tried to shoo them away they stayed in his personal space until he had to stop entirely, fuck off. Naruto grabbed one of the bats only to be surprised when it melted into ink. Finally taking notice of the situation, Naruto saw that the bats were black and white. What the fuck? Naruto thought to himself as he began pummeling the bats and reducing them to ink, ink? A roar drew Naruto's attention to see two black and white lions bearing down on him. Naruto drew his sword and ran at them. The first one tried a direct pounce that Naruto avoided by sliding under on his knees. The second lion rushed Naruto in his moment of recoil from the slide before he could make it to his feet. Naruto ended up driving the blade right into the lion's maw, turning it to a puddle of ink. The first lion slashed at Naruto's back with its claws only to be blocked by Naruto's ninjato, however the lion's raw power against Naruto who was off balance and defending from his back, sent him flying across the area. Naruto recovered and rolled to his feet, glaring at the artificial beast, alright. Time to slay this overgrown kitty and find the asshole pulling the strings out here. Naruto made a stutter step motion to feint the lion into attacking and cut the lion in half with his sword, smearing ink all over it. Now alone in the area, he turned his senses abroad to search for any sign of exactly who was after him. A rustle of the breeze caught Naruto's attention as he rushed off in a seemingly random direction. He eventually came upon the form of Sai sitting in a tree with his scroll sitting in his lap and a brush in his hand. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the root agent and cleared his throat, Sai. I wish I could say it was nice to see you, but it would be a bald-faced lie. Especially after just getting attacked. Those animals were yours I assume? Sai smiled a smile that Naruto obviously knew was fake. Jumping down from his branch, he landed in front of Naruto and rolled his scroll back up, yes Naruto. I had to make sure you weren't getting rusty and I've honestly wanted to fight you for quite a while now. Naruto looked Sai over, hey, you're my age. Why don't I remember ever seeing you around? Sai's face returned to its dull, normal, emotionally devoid look, you never worked on a team. Donzo sama always had you work solo, and besides, no one and Root knew each other that weren't regular partners. I had my own. Other than that I did not appear until I was nine, right before your ill-fated mission to Odo Gakur. Naruto nodded, it sounded about right, okay, now why are you here? Did you just want to drop in and see your old buddy Naruto? 
Naruto finished with a grin. Sai simply stared at him, blinking. Naruto dropped the grin from his face, okay, whatever. Seriously Sai, what do you want? Sai's fake smile surfaced once again, you should know the answer to that Naruto. After all, I'm the main reason you're even here in the first place. Flashback, the night after Naruto's return from Tsuki no Kuni. Naruto sat meditating in the forest of death. Slowly dragging the Kyuubi's chakra out of the seal, goddammit. This seal isn't meant for me to use Kyuubi's chakra the way I want to, at least not as it is. It's like I'm missing something. Uro Senen's holding something out on me. Again. Well after our first little smattering about seals he shouldn't try any mischief with them, especially now that I'm learning about them. Naruto heard rustling in the trees moving towards him rapidly. Naruto sighed and drew his sword from his back as he stood up and cracked his neck, come on down. On cue a blur burst into his vicinity, followed by two other, significantly larger, blurs. Naruto moved into the path of the first blur as it jumped over him and channeled wind chakra to his blade to slash twice at the attacking blurs moving right for him. A splattering of guts let Naruto know that he had just killed two more spiders. You have the same elemental affinity as Danzo sama I see. Naruto recognized the voice as Sai, the boy he had met while he had been training with Jiraiya. Sai had his tanto drawn but upon seeing Naruto deal with his assailants he placed it back into its sheath. Turning around he swung his sword to clear the guts from the blade before setting the dull side on his shouter, Hi there Sai. Did you have fun tracking me down? Sai let out a sigh to let him know just how tired he was, it wasn't the tracking you part that was difficult. However fighting through all of those spiders was a tiring endeavor. Naruto grinned and nodded, never been in the forest of death before? Welcome to my world. Now I hope you didn't brave the treacherous nightlife of our little slice of hell on earth just because you miss me Sai. Sai blinked dully, humorous. Now I actually have come with something that may interest you. Danzo sama is aware of your issue with utilizing the Kyuubi's chakra. Naruto cut him off right there with a serious expression. Wait, how does Danzo Gigi know about that? Naruto thought about it and palmed his face and raised his hand before Sai could speak. Actually, you know what? Never mind. I know how he knows. Kami, if you guys weren't on my side. Sai's fake smile surfaced again. We have information on a place you might be interested in knowing about. A lost village that went by the name of Uzushiogakura no Sato village hidden in the whirling tides. Naruto's raised eyebrow signified his interest, go on. Sai did as asked, this village was well known for its proficiency in fuu and jutsu, one clan above the rest in particular. Naruto rolled his eyes, I can tell Danzo Gigi had an active hand in training you. You both have that annoying penchant for halfway explaining things for kicks. Get to the point already, the corpses of these stupid things are going to draw more of them any minute. Any annoyance at being cut off by his blonde predecessor was not evident on Sai's face, it was your clan, the Uzumaki clan of which I speak. The entire village was so feared for its skill in the difficult art they were wiped from the map in war. The lost country it was situated in was known as Uzu no Kuni, Land of Whirlpools. As it turns out, your surname used to be synonymous in the shinobi world with seals. Naruto frowned, so this place is lost? I've never even seen that place on a map. Sai shook his head, yes you have. In fact you've been there yourself in the past, whether you knew it or not. Upon the fall of Uzu no Kuni it was renamed. You now know of this land as Nami no Kuni. Naruto stood in contemplative silence for a moment as he mulled around what he had just learned in his head. As per the course, Naruto took up the topic with his unwilling life partner, you fucking knew this already didn't you? Kyuubi simply awoke for a moment and yawned, nope. Not I. Naruto scoffed out loud, bullshit. You pretty much waved it in my face all the time. So what do you have to say for yourself Kyuubi? Kyuubi? Zzzzzzzzzzz. Damn you Kyuubi. You miserable big fuzzy asshole. Wake your ass up so I can rant at you. Sai simply waited patiently while Naruto dealt out his inner monologue. Naruto eventually gave up and focused on the pale boy in front of him. Alright, so I actually do have a clan. We had a different village, and then it got wasted by people that were afraid of our sealing skills. Well that settles it, I'm going to Nami no Kuni the first chance I get. There's too much I can get out of heading down there to just let this slip my mind. And flashback. Naruto stroked his chin, this is true. Naruto pointed at the pale teen with a deadpan expression, don't smile like that, you look like you're about to start some international bullshit when you give me that look. Who the fuck are trying to fool with that shit anyway? Sai dropped the smile, 
I am trying to learn about emotions so that I may be more useful on the outside much like yourself. So that I may support you in your endeavor to become Hokage when the time comes. Naruto sighed and placed a hand on Sai's shoulder, wow, Donzo really broke you like the rest of them didn't he? I see you and I have a lot to work on. But that's okay, Naruto senpai has got your back. He looked around, and now I'm lost. I presume you're here to tag along with me for whatever reason, correct? Sai nodded, Naruto looked around, okay. It couldn't hurt I guess. Well, since you were waiting for me I assume you know the rest of the way. Sai turned around and started walking off, that is right Naruto senpai. I have coordinates of the former location of Uzushio Gakur. Naruto gave him an amused look, really? Did you really just call me Naruto senpai? Seriously? Sai stopped walking and turned around, yes I did. I realize that you are technically correct. You are my senpai in truth. You have more experience than me, not just in root, but as a ninja overall. So it is only appropriate that I refer to you as my senpai. Naruto wiped a fake tear from his eye and wrapped an arm around Sai's shoulder, that was beautiful Sai Kouhai. I think this will be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Naruto looked around before sweat dropping, so where do we go now? Sai pulled himself from Naruto's grip and turned around to walk in the other direction. We're heading the wrong way Naruto senpai, follow me. Naruto frowned and slunk behind, you know what Kouhai, I don't like your attitude. Triple X. A hidden location in the vicinity of Amiga Core. A figure standing in the dark of a cave looked out amid the rainy plains of the country he sought to gain control over, this is too good of an opportunity to pass up. Konoha's Jinchuriki will undoubtedly be the most well-guarded of the nine. Rumors have him placed on the island nation of Nami no Kuni, too far for any assistance from his allies in Konoha. I have Zetsu following up on this lead. Upon confirmation of his location I will dispatch agents to capture him while the chance is opportune. The sound of a woman's voice sounded in the chamber, yes pain sama As you wish. A pair of legendary eyes shone through the darkness of the cave, it is only a matter of time until my will shall be carried out. The world will know the true meaning of pain, and I will be known as the god that will lead this world to peace, one way or another. Omake. QB's top 20 list of people slash things that just need to die by its hand. Number 20. Minato Namikaze, the bastard had a giant slimy toad try to hold me down and then he had the gall to seal me into his fucking son. Other than that his hair is too bright and with his special move, the Hiraishin, he was a pain in my ass. He's also such a good target to heap hate onto, the look on his face at all times just makes me want to eat him, no joke. Number 19. Mito Uzumaki, my first Jinchuriki, the one that started the chain of me looking at the inside of people's heads instead of the outside world. She sealed me in herself, herself. She sealed me in herself and didn't do a half bad job of it whatsoever. The kid knows nothing about her because I'm not his damn storybook, but if he did he would be more inspired to learn that few Jutsu shit. The worst part is that she never tried to even utilize any of my power, I was bored as hell in there. Number 18. Glitter cannons, these horrible contraptions are too evil, even to me. Cruel and unusual. And obnoxious. Number 17. Kisame Hoshigaki, apparently he has enough chakra to earn the nickname Bijou without a tail. I'll wait and see him fight my container before I believe a word of that shit. That creepy ass sword of his eats chakra does it? Well I would love for it to eat a concentrated blast of my chakra and see how much it likes snacking on that. Number 16. Soy substitutes for meat, if it looks like beef, cooks like beef, sizzles like beef, but fucking tastes like asparagus then there's a fucking problem. If I want that then I'll tell the Ningen I'm sealed in to eat the leaves off of a tree. The hands down worst food that the kid has ever picked up and tried at the behest of that black haired medic woman. Disgusting. Number 15. Mito guy, I would have him higher, but he freaks me right the fuck out and he'd probably enjoy that. There comes a time in every man's life where he has to put up the form fitting green leotard for good. That time came for guy about 7 years ago. He makes me regret making my deal with the kid because seeing him in that shitty green suit and listening to him scream like an epileptic cheerleader about the power of youth makes me want to eat him, it's an insult to the senses. The only reason I would back off from doing that if I had the chance is because I'm not entirely sure that whatever is afflicting him can be passed over to Bijou. I already know it's contagious, his little mini-me that he totes around is proof enough of that. With that knowledge I don't feel like risking it. Number 14. Jiraiya, he's slowly getting off my shit list, but he's on here for more than a few reasons. Now the kid I'm sealed in is a pervert, I'll admit that, 
and I doubt he would deny it himself if you prodded him on it, but this man is one of the highest degree, so much so that it is creepy. When he met Naruto before the Chunin exam he wanted him to stay in Oiroke no Jutsu form, even though he knew damn well that the kit was a boy. What the fuck? Other than that he trained the bastard that sealed me away again, without him I wouldn't even be here right now, and he was a lesser reason that the kit had to go through four years of life as an utter moron. He's slowly dropping down the list, I did have him higher, but I am a benevolent being, therefore he's working his way off the list, but he won't be off of it anytime soon. Number 13. Rock Lee, you need to be part of the solution kid, not part of the problem. Hell, even if I'd never seen or heard the kid he'd still be on the list for drinking the Kool-Aid that guy heaped into his bushy-browed little head. Why not become my mini-me? I'm at least 10 times better than Mito guy. Number 12. Fangirls, enough said. Number 11. Alcohol-free beer, the kid hates this stuff too. It utterly defeats the purpose of drinking in the first place, if you're not drinking to get drunk then you should just go ahead and mix yourself some lemonade and sit in a corner. The only thing worse than drinking a warm Schlitz tall boy is drinking a warm Schlitz tall boy and realizing that you did it for absolutely no good reason. The kit's words, not mine. Number 10. Game Ubuntu, this ugly warded son of a bitch held me down and stabbed me with that goddamn tonto of his long enough for the bastard Yondaime to seal me in his son. I gave the toad a nice little gift to remember me by though. He he he. How he was able to look at the kit the first time he saw him use my power and not shit himself on the spot I'll never know. Number 9. Orochimaru, just rubs me the wrong way. It's not the need to destroy Konoha, fuck that place. It's not the jumping bodies thing either since I technically did that myself, though not by choice. It's not even his ahem life choices. It's basically his entire personality. Orochimaru is capable of doing anything he wants and he chooses the most impossible life goal in existence, to learn every jutsu in the world. The only way that would ever work is if he could kill every single person in the world and get their bloodlines and list of jutsu before he tried it, and that would be redundant because who would he brag to about it? What a stupid goal, and he was supposed to be a genius. Number 8. The guy that introduced ramen to Kanahagakura no Sato, I curse this person every day of my existence. If I never hear the word ramen again I would be just okay with that. I would curse that family of ramen chefs, but that wouldn't be the root of the problem, if they weren't in Konoha any longer my container would somehow find some other way to get his fix, so I'm cursing the source of my flavored noodle misery. Number 7. Sasuke Uchiha, first of all, the kit doesn't like him. The kid is usually a good judge of character and if he doesn't like you then there's a damn good reason behind it. I personally don't like the brat because of that damned pink eye of his that he calls a dujutsu, but that's more personal than objective. He reminds me of Madara, he's also laughably easy to manipulate, it's ridiculous. Genius my ass. He has an attitude problem and no amount of adjustments, i.e. a skickings, will ever get through to his thick skull. Whoever said that children are the future never got a look at this punk psyche, or else they would have had him committed to a mental facility. Mark my words, that Uchiha runt is going to bring about the ninja apocalypse if no one stops him before he gets too big for his britches, and he'll probably laugh while he watches the world burn. Number 6. Kirabai, do I really need to go through the reason that I want to eat this guy? Try and have an hour-long conversation with the man and see if you can keep your temper and sanity in check. Number 5. Kabuto Yakashi, he's like a cockroach. He'll live through the worst of the fallout and pop his head out to sift through the remains. The boy has no redeeming qualities as far as I can see. He smells of snakes and oiled wood. Those two things just do not go together, and that makes me mistrust him even more than I already should. He's troublesome, and whenever he shows his face he never sticks around long enough to take too much of a beating. At least Orochimaru is man enough to go toe-to-toe with someone when the need arises. Number 4. Hiruzen Sarutobi, he really thought that the people of this village would see my container as a person, shouldn't a ninja of legendary stature have a better understanding of human nature? Now other than creating an ahem enforcing the rule that had adults inspiring their kids to try and bully him and keep him away at all times he really didn't do that much and this is not the reason that he's up this high, but I am insulted that he didn't think my Jinchuriki had what it took to be a ninja. He was my prison, of course he had what it took when he was young. This actually led to the best thing that had ever happened to the boy, getting actual training and being able to prove to the world my superiority, as my container was a force to be reckoned with at a young age, until the old monkey got paranoid and sealed away years of hard work. I may be petty, but I'm immortal and a being more ancient and powerful than any on the planet, I can afford to be petty. Number 3. 
the first guy that called for Naruto's death when he was revealed as the QB's container, the two Jinchuriki I had before him barely had to deal with the crap that this kid had to put up with, hell Mito didn't have to deal with anything adverse at all. Well with an angry crowd all it ever takes is one dumbass to open the floodgates and let the ire of the masses come out. After my attack, emotions were high, and everyone was low on logic and understanding, therefore loud and opinionated idiots like this held sway, as in most near-anarchy situations. Whoever this guy was I hope that Sarutobi's Anbu axed his ass on the spot, he made Naruto's life, and by proxy my life, much harder than it already was going to be. Number 2. Hashirama Senju, the son of a bitch held me down with his stupid Makutan and let his wife seal me inside of herself. Almost 100 years of consecutive life sentences inside of passed down hosts with supposedly ridiculously long natural lifespans for humans. All because some guy could grow a tree around me and hold me in place. If Madara is the reason I'm sealed then this ass is the trigger. Number 1. Madara Uchiha, where do I start? Well how about the fact that the sadistic piece of shit freaks me the fuck out sometimes. Me. Me of all people. This ass is the reason I was sealed the first time and the third time. I must have his head. I will hound the kid until the day I feel Madara's blood run across his fingertips. Fuck Madara Uchiha and his hijacked eyes, the next time we meet I'll show him who's in control. He has a damn god complex and enough arrogance to just come out and make puppets and tools of forces that should not be trifled with, myself included. He's manipulative, sneaky, and conniving, even to the extent where I find it overbearing. Yes, a world without Madara Uchiha in it would seem like utopia to me. He keeps his eyes on the times and picks the most opportune moments to risk his neck by coming out into the open, and that makes him all the more dangerous since he has always ended up on top, or at least in control of the situation. Chapter 22 Two Sides of the Same Coin Tuya let out a huff as she, Kakashi, and Shikamaru sat in restaurant after finishing another day of information gathering which was pretty much them being tourists. Looking around at the lazy Jounin and the lazier Chunin she felt her temper slipping, all right Kakashi. Seriously, can you tell us when shithead is getting back? At least if you were here this would be mildly entertaining somehow. Kakashi let out a sigh, she had been asking him about this for the last three days, Tuya, for the ten thousandth time. He'll come back when he comes back. I'll know when he's on his way and I'll let you all know. Tuya grumbled and crossed her arms, shithead. He'd better have a damn solid excuse for ditching us here like this. Shikamaru yawned, whatever, you troublesome woman. All I know is that this is my kind of mission. No fighting, no running around, just relaxing and doing nothing. Maybe I should try and go on more missions with Naruto and Kakashi sensei more often. Kakashi, I smiled at Shikamaru, see Tuya? Shikamaru has the right idea here. Tuya let out an undignified groan and dropped her head on the table with a thud. Triple X. Two fast-moving blurs shot through the brush, one following the other. They were moving swiftly through the wilderness of Nami no Kuni in a specific general direction. Naruto kept close on Sai's heels as they ran further into the country. Hey Sai Kouhai, I kind of figured that a village name for whirlpools would be by the ocean or something. Sai kept a dull look on his face as he lead the blonde Chunin along, it would seem like the most logical place Naruto Senpai, that's why it isn't anywhere on the coast. Uzushiogakur was actually one of the villages that were hard to find. Naruto nodded in understanding as he kept up with the root shinobi, so you've got the terrain memorized completely? That's actually very impressive. I haven't seen you pull out a map once. A map would have been too dangerous to bring Naruto Senpai. Sai admitted as they continued on, remember, there can be little to no evidence of your relationship with Donzo Sama other than to those that already know. And even then, it would be far better if they didn't know that you are still in contact with us. Naruto could only imagine the shitstorm that would commence if Tsunade or Jiraiya found out that he was still in contact with Donzo. There was no way that Naruto could convince them that Donzo was simply doing the duty he swore himself to doing when he said he would protect Konoha. If he came to them with that argument they would just say that Donzo had brainwashed him like the rest of Root when he was a child and that would be that, he would be locked in a cell, or even worse, sealed again. Naruto liked being able to think clearly and logically, thank you. Naruto's thoughts wandered towards the capabilities of Sai. He didn't know how good he really was. Chances were he was probably better in practice than the majority of the other ninja his age, as Donzo would never have made him his contact if he wasn't. He still had no idea what Sai could do. He figured that Sai was able to draw animals and bring them to life as evident by the attack he launched when Naruto was unaware of his presence, but what else could he do? Now wasn't the time for that. He was searching for something, 
Sai was helping. He had more important issues to think on. What would be waiting in Izushiogakur? Would anything even still be standing? Does Sai really even know where he's going? Keeping his thoughts to himself he followed his paler rude companion, we are close Naruto-senpai. Naruto frowned, how do you know Sai Kouhai? They jumped through one last patch of overgrowth before coming to a massive valley. Sai gave Naruto a fake smile, I just do. Naruto sweat dropped, I can see that. Within the valley there lied Uzushiogakur. Not far from where Naruto and Sai stood there was a waterfall leading to a massive river that split cleanly through the village. On the other side of the valley there was another waterfall doing the same. In the center of the village there was a whirlpool where the two directly conflicting waterways met. Around the whirlpool were four massive cylindrical buildings at least 100 feet off of the ground while what used to be houses and other assorted buildings dotted the landscape around them. Naruto sighed, well, shall we? Sai nodded and the two jumped into the valley to begin their search. Triple X As they walked along the remains of the ruined village, Naruto routinely created cage bunshine while Sai drew an ink rat to go with them to investigate places of interest. Sai and Naruto kept moving towards the center of the village to the massive cylindrical buildings in the middle of the village. Naruto whistled as they continued on, this place is huge. When did this village fall? It's just as big as Konoha. Sai kept his eyes peeled as well for anything to pay attention to, it fell during the Second Great Shinobi War. This village had many enemies, the war opened with Sunagakur, Amigakur, and Iwagakur temporarily combining forces to sack the village all at once. This brought Konoha into the war to defend its ally, however it was too late. Your clan had been scattered to the winds and the village was destroyed. Naruto frowned, that's a very morbid breakdown of what happened Sai Kouhai. We need to work on you sugar-coating stuff like that. If it wasn't me, and I wasn't used to you root guys talking like that, that might have creeped me out. Sai didn't spare Naruto a glance, Naruto senpai those were the facts. Uzushio Gakur was destroyed by a combined effort of two of the five great shinobi nations and one minor one, however that village is lead by Salamander Hanzo, perhaps the strongest man alive today. Bullshit. Naruto almost jumped at the QB's timely interjection into the conversation, what do you mean QB? I know Hanzo, he beat Uro Kyofu, Tsunade Bakken, and Orochi team at the same time back in the day. That seems pretty damn strong to me. Why would he not be? The QB huffed, because the strongest man alive definitely isn't Salamander Hanzo. Hanzo is a gnat compared to the man that is truly the most powerful, you've got to go further back into your history for that. It laid down on its haunches and yawned, you're not even close to who the strongest is Ningen. Naruto rolled his eyes, whatever fuzzy, he's old as hell. He was old when he fought the Sanin, and he's still considered the best. Why won't you just tell me who it really is already so we can end this conversation? QB growled lowly from inside Naruto's mind, because I intend to kill the strongest man alive myself. I truly hope you challenge me before you run across him so that after I kill and devour you I can take out my anger on him. Naruto thought once again of his fated battle with the QB, why do you have to be so angry all of the time? Why can't you just help me? I've done everything I can reasonably do for you without letting you go since it would kill me and I couldn't do it anyway. Not to mention the fact that if I did you would utterly annihilate Konoha. QB shut its eyes, no I wouldn't. Naruto raised an eyebrow, getting the attention of Sai, but he was busy at the moment, wait, what? Run that by me again, I don't think I heard you correctly. QB bared its teeth at Naruto's disbelief, you heard me Ningen. If I were released and weren't already directly in your puny village I wouldn't touch it. I have more important things to worry about than the weak mortals that populate your town. Naruto thought about that. He figured the QB would raise Konoha to the ground regardless just for shits and giggles. There was something out there more important to him than destroying the place that had been his prison for years. Not only that, but whoever this person was that the QB was talking about had him convinced that he was going to be in Naruto's future somehow. Udo Senpai are you alright? Naruto snapped back into the real world from his thoughts by the emotionless voice of Sai, Naruto Senpai do you need to rest? You were just walking ahead blankly when I tried getting you to stop. I thought I would have to do something physical to get you to stop. Naruto grinned sheepishly, sorry Kouhai. It was a conversation between me and the fox, nothing but Jinchuriki stuff, you know? Sai nodded, come on, we've arrived at the main buildings. Sai entered through doors that were blown off of the opening, leaving Naruto outside. Seeing a brat like that makes me glad that I got sealed inside of you. 
I can just imagine that kid's head being a wall of white. The QB cringed, then I really would be pissed. Naruto mentally agreed with his tenant and followed Sai inside to keep up the search. Triple X. The inside was worse than the outside. Despite looking relatively sturdy and intact it was a wreck on the inside. Naruto's whistle echoed throughout as he looked around the main, massive room, man, father time sure took a sledgehammer to this place didn't he? It can't be helped Naruto-senpai. Sai appeared behind Naruto, this general area was clearly where the defenders made their last stand. With these buildings still intact it must have been an amazing battle. Naruto raised an eyebrow at his sudden appearance, were you just waiting behind the front door to try and scare the shit out of me when I came in or something? Sai looked at him blankly, never mind, and if this is where the last stand was made then where are the bodies? Blood? Weapons? Anything. I mean, yeah this place is beat the hell up, but other than that I don't see any sign of past warfare. The room was basically a large chamber, it had an ornate spiral symbol in the center of the room with a spiral staircase on the walls. The stairs were collapsed however. No big deal, nothing a little wall walking couldn't fix. Naruto turned toward Sai and pointed up where there was a ledge with a large ornate door on it, shall we then? Sai and Naruto channeled chakra to their feet and began running up the wall. Until they were forcefully shoved backwards with a burst of energy. A ceiling array appeared on the wall as the building began to shake and a wall sealed off the entrance. The boys looked around rapidly, shit Sai. Please tell me the building isn't coming down. My luck cannot be that bad, there's just no way. Sai had a bead of sweat going down his face, it should have been expected. A mistake on both of our parts. We should have figured that a village feared for its forays in Fu and Jutsu would have set some traps for intruders. Any use of our chakra must have triggered it. The floor opened up, forcing the two to jump back as a statue emerged from the opening by way of an elevator, the elevator was covered in blood as were parts of the statue, signifying what had happened to any of the attackers. Naruto and Sai were prepared for combat, however the statue did not move. It was an elaborate statue 40 feet high of a bearded man with long hair and an Uzushio Gakur Hideate as well as old armor reminiscent of the days of the Shadaim Hokage. It simply stood in a still pose. Naruto looked at Sai and shrugged, so. What? Are we just supposed to sit here and admire the pretty statue until we die of old age in here? Maybe that's how they killed the invaders, locked them in here with their big stone guy here and bored them to death. Sai shook his head, do not let your guard down Naruto-senpai. We are still in grave danger here. Naruto scoffed, I know Sai Kouhai. It's just that when I say stupid things like that it's like I piss off some deity with direct control over the random shit that happens to me. I just said that so that something cool would happen and then we could move along. Sai sweat dropped, so you're intentionally provoking a negative situation because you're impatient? Naruto glared at him, I do have a previous engagement that I need to attend to. If I'm gone for too long and my team gets back to Konoha without me I could be declared a missing nin. We need to get the fuck out of here. How we're going to do that is another question entirely, the wall apparently repels chakra. Sai nodded, using chakra again in here might trigger another trap, perhaps one with fatal ramifications this time. Naruto looked at Sai with a dry expression, maybe it's me. Sai looked around the room for anything of relevance, what is you Naruto-senpai? Naruto groaned in disappointment, it is me. Bad stuff always happens to me and the people around me on missions. If I get a C rank I might as well pack as if it would be bumped up to A ranked because chances are it will be. Naruto looked at his hands and sighed, we have to do it Sai. There's no way we're getting out of here any other way, especially if this wall repels chakra. Sai frowned and pulled out his drawing scroll, are you sure? This could be putting us in unnecessary danger. Naruto and Sai both looked at the still statue, what are the odds that I'm just being paranoid? Sai placed his brush in his fingers, there is no such thing as being paranoid to a shinobi Naruto senpai. Right. He placed his hands in a ram seal, you ready? Sai looked unsure of Naruto's actions but nodded. Naruto took a deep breath, okay, let the sparks fly. He channeled his chakra into a hard outward pulse. At first nothing happened, but the sound of stone sliding against stone started ringing out. Sai's eyes widened as the statue began to move slowly from its position, I knew that was going to happen. What exactly was your plan? Naruto shrugged and drew his sword, I don't know, I was winging it, I cannot be held responsible for the things that I do in the heat of battle. Did you have any better ideas? Sai sighed, we weren't even fighting when you came up with that asinine idea. Naruto rolled his eyes, oh I'm sorry, 
you probably had a much better idea huh? Yeah your idea probably would have made my idea look stupid right? Shut up and fight or get squashed kouhai. The two were forced to dodge as the statue lowered a massive foot on their previous position. The guardian statue turned its head towards them with an audible sliding noise as the stone slabs comprising its body parts rubbed against themselves. Sai and Naruto looked at each other before Naruto nodded and rushed in with his sword, charging it with wind chakra to cleave the golem's head off. Sai stayed back and began drawing on his scroll, Kuju Ugiga, Super Beast's imitation picture. Lions of ink emerged from Sai's scroll and began stalking the statue down. The statue simply looked at them and destroyed them with a swing of its hand. Naruto sweat dropped at the display, Sai. Ink won't hurt the damn thing. You've got to have another jutsu you can do right? Sai shrugged and pointed at the statue that had targeted Naruto, it was now gearing up to swing on him. Naruto cursed and dodged as the massive fist hit the ground and shook the building. Naruto jumped at the statue's head with wind chakra circulating around his sword, however when he made contact with the statue's neck a seal array appeared on the area that he made contact with and repelled him violently. Naruto bounced across the ground and stood up with his head swimming, damn it. The statue has the same seal on it that the walls do. It will just absorb any of the jutsu that we launch at it. Please tell me you have something that can break stone. Sai shook his head and Naruto once again cursed. And dodged another fistica from the statue, damn it Sai. Some backup would be nice at the very least. Sai shrugged again and pointed again as Naruto heard stone sliding once more. Naruto turned, fuck. The statue actually had a fully functional stone sword on its back that it had just unsheathed. Naruto reached into his pack and pulled out a roll of explosive notes that he chucked over to Sai. The pale ninja snatched them up out of midair and took one that he wrapped in a kunai and threw at the statue. It simply bounced off with the explosion being set off in its face. What is this damn thing made of? Naruto wondered as he dodged the first strike of the behemoth sword and ran at it again. He formed a swirling blue ball of chakra in his hand and launched at it, Rasengan, spiraling sphere. Once again he bounced off of the stone figure as a seal array appeared on its body. Naruto fell next to Sai and picked himself up again, what are we going to do Sai? We can't escape, we can't use ninjutsu, and if it can take an explosive tag to the face and walk right through it I'm not strong enough to crack that stone without doing something that will hurt you, that is if it even works. All that would probably happen is I'll get my demonic chakra absorbed. Sai shut his eyes in thought as the statue lumbered back over to them. Sai's eyes snapped open as he turned to Naruto, Naruto-senpai, how good are you at fuel and jutsu? Naruto's eyes flickered back and forth from the statue to Sai, I don't know. Only Uro-senen is able to properly gauge my skill and I haven't seen him in a while. Why? Sai started drawing again on his scroll, what if you were able to get a good look at that array, could you think of something to break it? Naruto tapped his chin in thought, I don't know, it's worth a shot though. What do you have in mind? Said didn't answer and finished his drawing, Kuju Ugiga, Super Beast's imitation picture. A mass of bats came out of his scroll and began flying around the statue's head, not making contact however. The statue stopped and tried swatting at the bats, far too slowly to actually take them out. Naruto took advantage of the distraction and made a dozen cage bunshine, sending them all on a one-way trip to the towering stone figure. The second the first cage bunshine made contact with the statue it dispelled as the seal array formed. Naruto whipped out a scroll and a brush as the array vanished, the array appears for 4 seconds at a time. Run into him at 4 second intervals. The clones all nodded and did as was commanded while the statue was stuck being distracted by size ink bats. As the array appeared on the golem's body, Naruto quickly copied it down just as his last kedge bunshine dispelled, Sai, can you give me some time to work this out? I need to figure out what went into this thing's seal. Sai nodded and made a hand sign. All of the bats that were flying around the statue melted into ink all over its face, blinding it. The golem started swinging its sword wildly as it searched for the two root trained ninja. Naruto kept out of the golem's range as did Sai. Eventually, Naruto's eyes lit up as he quickly wrote on a seal tag. Naruto placed his stuff away and looked at the statue with a determined expression. Naruto channeled chakra to his feet to activate the seal in the room and alert the statue to his location. As it turned, Naruto placed his fists together, Fuuten, Fuujin Seiken, Wind Release, Divine Fist of the Wind God. Naruto shot off the ranged wind jutsu and hit the golem flush, just as the seal array appeared once again, Naruto rushed in at full speed and slapped a tag right on the array right before placing another on himself, Fuuin Jutsu, Jinkaku no Yuise, Sealing Technique, 
Dominance of Personality. Few in Naruto and the statue were covered in a dull yellow glow that barely covered both of their bodies. Naruto smirked as his glow began to shine brighter while the statue's own faded out of existence. He moved his arm and surely the arm of the statue moved in exactly the same manner. Naruto let out a victorious whoop of joy, Sai Kouhai get over here, quick! I don't know how long this will last for. Sai did as he was requested and stood by Naruto's side. Naruto began to walk towards the statue as it began walking towards him. Sai felt apprehensive about approaching the murderous stone effigy, but since Naruto was doing it he followed. Naruto made a bending a scooping motion, directing the statue to pick them up, going up? Naruto cocked his hand back, as did the statue before he launched it forward, sending him and Sai flying up towards the top of the tower to the area where the ornate door was located. Naruto and Sai ended up smacking the door hard and breaking the decrepit metal door down. Naruto and Sai picked themselves up as Naruto made a one-handed ram seal, Kai. Once again he glowed yellow before it faded. Sai dusted himself off, what was that Naruto senpai? Naruto cracked his back, it's a new seal of mine. I read that real few Uenjutsu masters come up with their own stuff so I made my own. I was going to test it in front of Shikamaru to piss him off, but here was just as good a time as any to use it right? It forces the wills of the recipients into a struggle. The winner ends up with temporary control over the other's body. Sai nodded, are you sure you should have released it? Naruto waved off his concern, what the fuck is it going to do all the way down there? The sounds of stone hitting the ground re-attracted their attention to the statue below as they saw it pick itself off of the ground and try climbing the wall. It only made it slightly off of the ground before dropping back down onto its back, it then repeated the process. Naruto sweat dropped at the sight, let's get the hell out of here. He pointed at a bridge linking one tower to the next. The two dashed from their first location to their next destination as the sounds of the statue attempting to pursue them sounded out. Triple X. Kirigakur. Tuya sat on the edge of a cliff on one of Kiri's surrounding mountains, looking out at the village while simply playing her flute in boredom. She looked over at Shikamaru who was sprawled out on the ground staring up expressionlessly. Kakashi had told them to scope out surrounding areas and vantage points of the village that they could get away with seeing. Tuya could feel the Anbu watching them but paid them no real mind. They weren't really doing anything wrong. While they had been off doing that, Kakashi had some. Kakashi stuff, as he dubbed it, to attend to elsewhere. Tuya finished up a song and looked up with Shikamaru, how fucking long are we going to be here? I want to go home already, this is boring. Shikamaru remained silent, staring at the clouds, apparently ignoring Tuya. The redhead got a tick mark on her head, are you listening to me you lazy bastard? I'm trying to speak to you here. Shikamaru sighed, I know that. But I don't have the answer to your question or anything that I could say to make you feel better. It would be too troublesome to try and rack my brain to come up with something. Tuya placed her cheeks in her hands, shithead would have tried. Shikamaru groaned in apathy, it's always, shithead this or shithead that. You haven't stopped asking or talking about Naruto since he left us outside of Kiri. Even when Kakashi said he wouldn't tell you anymore. If you're that worried about the guy then chain him up when he gets back, or even better, marry the guy, he laughed to himself, yeah, then you would have a legally binding reason to be so troublesome about him. Shikamaru then had a heel firmly planted in his stomach. Tuya looked down at Shikamaru with her foot on his belly, do not say that about me and shithead. We could never work out, he's a shithead. Shikamaru spoke in a pained tone, calling him names just shows me that you care. You might as well be calling him Naruto-kun. Who am I kidding? You probably will be calling him Naruto-kun. A grunt escaped his throat as Tuya began stomping on him, shut up. There's absolutely nothing between me and shithead. Shikamaru coughed with each stomp, your mouth says no but your heel says yes. Tuya eventually tired of stomping on him and sat back down, hey, you're friends with him right? Why is he so damn good and you're so not? You're the same age aren't you? Shikamaru readjusted himself on the ground, I don't know. Eight months ago we were forced to fight him all at once, everyone from our graduating class. We didn't know he was that good, he beat us all. Tuya scoffed and chuckled, well I could have told you that was going to happen. You were all what, Janan? That guy was a right destroyer of men, even years before this. He made me think that all Konoha had were superheroes coming out of the woodwork if a kid was as strong as he was. It just didn't seem natural. Shikamaru's attention was now firmly on Tuya, what? Naruto was never much in the academy. It was scary, 
seeing where all of his power came out just suddenly like that. No one can tell where it came from. Tuya rubbed her cheek, well he's been like that for a while. When I first fought the bastard he couldn't have been any older than an academy student, that was what scared me about Konoha. You know the cursed seal that the little butt Peduchia has? Well we were all fighting with it on, and we knew what we were doing. We were still going to lose until our fifth man showed up and took the advantage. Shikamaru was confused, how many years ago was this? Tuya thought for a moment, I would say about six years or slightly less. Shikamaru sat up abruptly, wait you're saying that Naruto fought you and the rest of your auto-kidnapping team when he was eight years old? That's impossible, he first enrolled in the academy at the age of eight. Tuya shrugged, I'm only telling you what happened. He had a weird plain white mask, but it got all carved up during the fight. The blonde hair and whisker marks were a dead giveaway when I saw him again though. I thought I saw my life flash before my eyes when I did. I was more worried about fighting him than you and your little fat friend at the time. Shikamaru simply looked away and thought, seriously Naruto. Why do things have to be so troublesome when you're involved? Who are you? Triple X. Uzushio Gakur, with Sai and Naruto. Naruto and Sai emerged from the top of the third tower singed and with shallow cuts on their bodies. Naruto sighed, what the hell? That wasn't anything at all, it was like the entire top floor of the building was one big trap. Sai winced slightly as he touched a cut on his side, maybe that was a training facility for Uzu Shinobi. It certainly worked like one. Naruto growled, shouldn't there be some way around this stuff? We still have one more of these things to check and with our track record the next one might just spontaneously combust when we get within five feet of the entrance. After leaving the building housing the Statue of Death, Naruto and Sai entered what looked to be the administrative building. The skeletons of fallen enemy and Uzu Shinobi alike told them both that a fierce battle had gone on inside of this building. Of course the corridors to the main office were booby-trapped, once again with a seal array that locked them inside of a long hallway and began to cook the boys alive. Naruto was luckily able to locate the seal array on one of the walls and mentally shut out the heat roasting him alive until he could break down the seal and deactivate the trap. Naruto took notes on that seal before they left, hoping that it could be applicable elsewhere, it was a pretty nasty trap. Upon reaching the main office they found that it had been ransacked. There was nothing, the vault was empty, even the desk had been stripped bare. They boys then left and entered the next tower, which was basically a chakra-less run through a building filled top to bottom with a ridiculous amount of traps ranging from ceiling arrays that shot fire, collapsing floors leading to spike pits, ranged kunai and shuriken triggers, and the pool filled with water that had a live current running through it. Naruto looked up at the sky and yelled, All I've learned in this place is that I know nothing about booby traps. How did these people get beaten again? Sai took a moment to bandage his wound, should we rest before entering the final tower Naruto Senpai? Who knows what will be in there? Naruto nodded and sat down on the walkway looking out at the raging whirlpool they were standing over, that is one imposing landmark. Naruto saw Sai wrapping bandages around his exposed midsection, are you okay? You aren't hurt too bad are you? You should tell me if you are, because you don't have a six-story fuzzy red physician in you like I do. Go fuck yourself Ningen. Physician that. Sai grunted in affirmation, they are just flesh wounds senpai. I will be fine after a short rest. Naruto accepted his answer before deciding to chew the fat a bit with the boy, so Sai Kouhai, did Donzo Gigi finally let any girls join Root or is it still just full of dudes, because I told him about that. Sai paid close attention to his wounds as he spoke, Root has females Naruto senpai. Riva san is a girl, as is Maki san. They came up around the same time you did and are within a few years of your age. How did you not notice them? Naruto's eyes widened, what? Maki and Riva are girls? Damn it I was never able to tell, Maki always kept her hair so short and wore baggy stuff, Riva didn't sound like a girl nor did she have the figure at the time, and not to mention that both of them always wore those damn masks like they would lose them if they weren't attached to their faces. Sai gave Naruto a fake smile, that just means that you were more concerned with your work Naruto-senpai. Naruto snorted in an amused fashion, I wonder if they were good looking. Oh who am I kidding, of course they were. They were Kunoichi, it's like a prerequisite as a ninja that all Kunoichi must be at the very least, cute. They're still alive right? Sai nodded, ever since you were captured, Danzo-sama has scaled back on our mission intake. Losing you when he did gave him a significant hit. A lot of the operations he had planned centered themselves around you. He had to revamp everything, right down to the training, to pick up the slack. Naruto frowned and looked over at the tower, 
I think I should sweep for traps before we go inside, since we had so much fun during the last two towers. Naruto made six cage bunshine, go in two at a time and scout out the building for me. The clones saluted him and ran off towards the tower in groups of two. Naruto turned back to Sai, are you ready to go? It's almost nightfall, are we planning on staying outdoors or in one of these stupid towers? Before Sai could answer a massive explosion rocked the tower, there were cage bunshine eradicated in the blast and some sent flying off of the walkway. Naruto looked at the tower in shock, I was just joking when I said it would just spontaneously combust. Well then Kyubi Jinchuriki you weren't caught in the first blast. It looks like you get to see a little more of my art, un. Naruto and Sai looked up at the setting sun to see a man flying above them on a massive bird. He had blonde hair up in a half ponytail, one bang covering one eye. His eyes were somewhat slitted and blue in color and he had a scratched out Iwagakur hideate on his head. The most noticeable thing about him however was the black cloak with red clouds on it. He had only seen that on two people before, and they. Oh. Naruto kept his eyes on the flying man, Sai. What are the chances that we can get out of here? Sai pulled out his scroll, not very good as long as he's in the air. Do you know this person Naruto-senpai? Naruto shook his head, no. But he's wearing the same stuff that Itachi Uchiha was wearing when he attacked me. Last time they came to capture me, I'm assuming that it's much the same this time since he hasn't tried taking out the bridge and dropping us into the whirlpool yet. Sai figured his line of reasoning, so he's after the QB. Got it in one Kouhai. Naruto drew the blade from his back, what are we going to do? He's long range and I can't really reach him from here, I have some distant stuff, but I doubt anything I have can hit him from here. Naruto looked around, we need room and the tops of the towers looks like a good bet, but we can't wall walk them to get up there, or use chakra when in contact with them. Kuju Ugiga, Super Beast's imitation picture. Sai drew a pair of birds onto his scroll and made two large ink replicas that he hopped onto one of, get on Naruto Senpai. Naruto gleefully jumped onto one of Sai's ink birds as they took off to the skies, Sai Kouha you can fly? Wait, why the hell did we walk all the way here then? We could have been here hours ago. Sai directed traffic with his birds, it requires chakra to do so. I do not like wasting my chakra when moving on my feet would be a much better way to save my chakra. Naruto nodded and turned his head, I've never done this before. Is this thing going to keep me safe Kouhai? Sai gave him a fake smile, it can take one or two hits senpai. Naruto sighed, great. Fine, how are we getting away? Just as he said that a voice rang out. So you're going to run, un? I hope your art is as effective as mine. I know it isn't nearly as much of an explosion, un. The man sent out multiple small clay birds at the boys. Sai was able to maneuver out of the way and cut them down from afar. Naruto however had no experience moving a bird and as such ended up surrounded by the little clay creations. The man smirked and made a single hand seal, Katsu. Naruto's eyes widened as Sai flew near him. Naruto took the chance and jumped from his own bird over to Sai's just as an explosion from the clay birds destroyed his ink bird. Naruto looked back at the man as he and Sai did their best to attempt to lose him, who the hell are you? Does it really matter? I'm still going to catch you whether we're on a first name basis or not on. The man grinned amusedly. Naruto pulled out a bunch of explosive notes and began preparing his kunai with them, while I try to make a habit of learning the names of the people that want to suck out my bijou and leave me a soulless husk on the side of the road. The man's grin widened, I am Datara, the master of art of a single moment. Your friend's art cannot compare to my own, however with the assistance of my own art, his can be something to behold, because true art is an explosion. Datara made more clay birds to send at the boys. Sai maneuvered the ink bird to avoid the clay bird, what can we do senpai? I'm not as good at fighting in midair and fighting like this will wear on me eventually. Naruto frowned while racking his brain, we're not long range fighters. If he was out to kill us he might have been able to right now instead of just trying to shoot us down. Once again, it's that S rank superiority complex, so let's take advantage of that. Naruto picked up one of his prepared kunai, before lobbing it at Datara who simply dodged it. The kunai exploded in the distance, I knew he was going to do that. Naruto had his sword in hand, Sai, get me close. Close range is our best bet right now and he's chasing us so that we'll make it easy. Sai looked apprehensive, are you sure senpai? Naruto nodded and Sai drew his tanto in response, very well, in we go. Sai ordered the bird around, sending it directly at Datara. 
He had been reaching into his pouch of clay when he saw the boys turn their ride around and head straight towards him with their blades gleaming in the light of the moon. Datara I widened, damn brats. Un. Naruto and Sai closed in. Both boys slashed at Datara as they passed, but his bird was more maneuverable than theirs with only one person on it, nice try, noticing and acknowledging that I'm a long-range fighter, un. But if you can't hit me then it's useless. Naruto thought frantically, at this rate they were never going to win, they weren't even going to escape, any good ideas to get us out of this would be lovely right now Sai Kouhai. Sai squinted and looked behind them at the man they just missed, can you fly for a moment senpai? Naruto nodded determinedly, as long as I don't have to fly it towards him I can. Sai nodded and handed the front over to Naruto before taking out his scroll. Sai created a bunch of bats using his jutsu and had them carry Naruto's prepared explosive kunai over to Datara in an effort to attack. Datara matched the explosives with some of his own, negating Sai's attack. Sai retook the front of the bird while Naruto returned to his position of man on point. He pulled out a handful of shuriken, come on. Give me something here. Raiten, Kaminari shuriken, lightning release, lightning shuriken. Naruto threw his handful of shuriken over Datara head. Before Datara could mock him for his shoddy aim he was forced to dodge as he found himself caught in a mini lightning storm as electricity dropped from the throne shuriken, trying to take him out. Datara experience flying with his clay sculptures kept him out of harm's way as he outlasted the jutsu, ha! Huh. Nice try, un. Naruto saw Sai beginning to sweat. Keeping up the flying of the bird coupled with the day's events were getting to him. Naruto saw Datara catching up and cursed, Sai, turn this thing around. We're not going out like this. Sai was now panting in exhaustion but did as requested. Naruto reached into his pack and carefully pulled out an abnormal black tag before tapping into Kyuubi's chakra to trigger it. The kanji for explode glowed red upon being pumped with the demonic power source. Sai channeled his chakra into the bird to give it enough of a boost to get near Datara. Datara threw clay insects at them, but Naruto knocked off their trajectory with a handful of shuriken, sparing them another explosion. The bird almost dropped from the sky as Sai's consciousness wavered momentarily. Naruto almost dropped the tag, Sai, can you keep this thing up for a little bit longer? Just a little more time is all I need. Keep us close Kouhai. Sai looked haggard and exhausted, I will do my best Naruto-senpai. Naruto nodded and held the tag behind him as it began to sizzle down. Sai got the two birds near one another again. Naruto jumped from their bird to make an attempt at Datara. The explosive specialist threw more clay spiders at Naruto, who ran through hand signs, Fu Uten, Senpu Kaku Sui, Wind Release, Whirlwind Pyramid. A fierce wind burst around Naruto's body, knocking the clay spiders away as he landed on Datara Bird. Datara turned and lashed out with a backhand strike that Naruto ducked. Naruto shot a kick at his head after getting under the punch, but was blocked and thrown off of the bird. Datara cursed as he watched Naruto's body freefall down towards the whirlpool. Fuck. I was supposed to catch him, not kill him. Sasori no Dana is going to bitch me out when I get back, un. Naruto fell towards the ground but was rescued by Sai's bird. Naruto sat up on the back of the bird and patted the pale ninja on the shoulder. Good save, I thought I was gone there for a second Sai Kouhai. No response, Sai Kouhai? Sai's eyes were glazed over, signifying unconsciousness, fuck. The bird they had been riding on dissolved into ink due to the creator being indisposed, dropping them both from the sky. Naruto grabbed onto Sai and pushed Wind Chakra out through his feet to direct their motion towards the tall cylindrical building instead of the water, which would have ended with them drowning. Naruto positioned Sai onto his back and fired off a few Uten, Fuujin Seiken to cushion the impact. As the two hit with Sai on Naruto's back, the aforementioned blonde coughed up blood. Naruto allowed the feeling to re-enter his body before rolling Sai off of his back and looking up at Datara. Datara chuckled at the display, that was a good little bit of survival technique, un. You're one pesky kid, I have to say. Suddenly he heard the sound of a rumbling sizzle. Under the wing of the bird there was Naruto's black explosive note. From his place on top of the building Naruto smirked, boom. Datara leapt off of the clay bird just as his clay bird was engulfed in a mid-air firestorm. That looked like a miniature sun from where Naruto was, I can see why Uro Senen was so reluctant to teach me how to make explosive tags, because I ended up making that piece of demonic hell. Now that showed some artistic prowess, un. Naruto saw Datara alive and well below the explosion that took out his bird. Now however, he was on a massive clay dragon, you are very tricky to pin down, un. 
Witness the next level of my art. C2 Dragon. Oh come on. Naruto palmed his forehead, you've got to draw the line somewhere with stuff like this, S ranked or not. Datara chuckled, I can see why Kisame no Dana and that Asatachi found it somewhat difficult to take you, but you've got nowhere to go as long as your little friend is unconscious, un? Naruto looked at the down sigh, he had to be suffering from chakra exhaustion there was no other explanation. He was getting beaten even with Sai's help, he was a sitting duck on this roof, he couldn't fly, he could barely even generate chakra as his guess was right. The building absorbed or repelled chakra from both inside and outside contact with the wall. How did this place get conquered again? Now then. Datara clay dragon opened its mouth, you lot lose. Witness the beauty of my art, un. Datara dragon spit up many smaller dragons that flew at Naruto. Naruto cursed and grabbed Sai, running towards the edge of the building as explosions rocked it from the mini dragons. He had no clue what he was doing. It was either stay there and die on the roof that they couldn't escape when Datara finally found a way to incapacitate him, or jump off and die by way of catastrophic fall into the water, and on the off chance that they did survive the initial fall from at least 100 feet in the air. Naruto bit his lip as he neared the edge, whether we end up in heaven, hell, or somehow survive this, Sai is going to be pissed off when he wakes up. Jumping off the rooftop with the root agent in his grasp both fell into the raging waters of the joining rivers, being quickly swept up by the whirlpool. Datara watched the happening with a massive sweat drop on his head, Sasori no Dana is really going to kill me, un. Chapter 23, Land of My Forefathers. Waking up after getting your ass kicked is never a very fun thing to do. Waking up after getting your ass kicked while stuck down under a pool of water? Well. Cough cough cough. Naruto emerged from an underground lake, dragging Sai to the rocky shore before collapsing on his back, clearing his lungs of the copious amounts of liquid he had ingested. Cough cough you all right Sai Kohai? Naruto frowned and took Sai's pulse. He was still alive and well, but it was now abundantly clear that the pale ninja was indeed suffering from chakra exhaustion. Naruto checked to see if he was still properly breathing and the results gave his eye something of a twitch, how can I be the one that actually woke up and dragged us out of the water and yet he's the one that didn't get a drop of excess water in his lungs? Naruto sighed and let Sai be for the time being. He took the time to look around the cave they were stuck in. From the roof, the water from the whirlpool was coming through, obviously how they had gotten in, but where was all of the water going? Naruto formed a cage bunshine and had it jump into the water to look for a path to move towards while he rested and took stock of the situation at hand. As the clone submerged itself under the lake, Naruto leaned against a rock near Sai. Well their mission was an utter failure he had to say. All of the things that they looked through brought them nothing but misery, pain, anger, if Sai could even get angry, Naruto wasn't sure, and a lot of wasted time. Before they could even check the last tower to see if there was anything of use in there the thing was blown to hell by Datara, an explosive specialist. After a short fight, Naruto had attempted to flee from the rooftop they had managed to be trapped on by jumping into the raging waters below, right into a whirlpool. Needless to say, the fight didn't go so well for the two Konoha ninja. Datara's ability to keep the battle at a range that Naruto and Sai couldn't contend it was the real issue of the battle. Datara and his clay bombs were far too versatile for them to attempt fighting him at a distance, and with their inability to close the distance it was only a matter of time. They had been fighting all day long, whether it be the traps they were forced to survive, or the soulless golem that tried to kill them in the first tower, by the time they fought Datara they had been fighting all day long. Naruto started checking his equipment, but when he reached for the ninjato on his back he got an unpleasant surprise, fuck. My sword is broken again? Naruto's sheath and blade had been busted possibly when he fell onto the rooftop from so high in the air during the fight with Datara. A few explosions caught him as well when he attempted to flee towards the edge so there could have been another way they broke as well. Who knew where he had deposited the broken pieces? There was no way for him to repair at this time. This was just not his day. He and his partner had been run ragged the entire time and were attacked by a fresh opponent with superior tactics and the means to execute his game plan. Naruto's body didn't really register the fatigue, the things he did for his own personal training saw to that. However Sai didn't have his level of stamina, nor his ability to instantly heal the wounds he suffered getting through the traps, and injuries accumulate. Naruto sighed as he looked at Sai's unconscious form, damn it Kouhai, I told you to tell me if you were hurt or overexerted. Naruto checked himself over, he didn't have anything hurt on him, he was absolutely fine other than his pride. And that had taken a vicious beating, as he didn't land a single shot on Datara the entire time. 
Even his new supercharged explosive tag wasn't enough to finish him off. Why didn't you use my chakra? That would have made the results of the battle an afterthought. The QB decided to chime in. Naruto couldn't say he was ungrateful for the distraction, there wasn't much he could do at the moment and reflecting on what happened with a second opinion until Sai woke up was as good a time waster as he was going to get. Naruto checked his gear, Sai was right there and we were flying on one of his flimsy ink birds. Even if Sai was able to stand up to a decent amount of exposure to the chakra his bird couldn't. We would have dropped from the sky like a stone and died. I just have to face it, Datara had our number up there. Kyubi growled from inside Naruto's head, if you had come alone you could have destroyed that fool. Naruto shrugged, mostly to himself, maybe, but there's no such thing as a fair fight. Coming without Sai might have been easier, but he has his mission and I didn't see anything wrong with the help. Donzo Gigi wouldn't have sent him if he was weak. He just had a bad draw as an opponent. Datara seems troublesome. Kyubi agreed, Donzo was not one to undertrain his people. While he had a penchant for treating his ninja like pawns often, it couldn't be argued that he didn't make absolutely sure that they were ready for the missions that he planned to send them on. If he sent Sai then he thought that Sai was close to if not the absolute best that he had. Like Naruto said, Datara simply caught them at the worst possible time on the worst possible terrain, if you come across that man again I want you to eradicate him, no questions asked. Understood? Naruto scoffed, you don't control me. But you're right, if I see him again I'm going to drag him to the ground and rip his arms off and not particularly in that order either. Where did he get all of those explosives from, and how did he have time to shape them? That's what I really want to know. Get some rest. You cannot do anything while your partner is unconscious and weak. The bomber human must think you two died being thrown into the whirlpool so there is no one pursuing you at the moment. Take advantage of that and regain what strength you both can for the time being, Kyubi said somewhat sagely. Naruto hated doing nothing but after flaring his chakra one good time eventually buckled and began to focus on the sound of the falling, crashing water to lull him to sleep. Triple X. I'm so dead. I'm so dead, un. Datara repeated to himself as he flew over the whirlpool that the two boys fell into, looking for any sign that Naruto had survived and getting none, I'm so dead, un. Datara get down here. Datara paled somewhat at the sound of the gruff voice calling his name. Looking down at the abandoned, ruined village, he saw a thick, hunched figure in a black robe with red clouds and the large straw hat that Akatsuki members are known to wear, Datara get down here now. Datara swallowed his nerves and landed his clay bird before pasting a nervous smile on his face, Sasori no Dana. You made it down here at last, un. Sasori simply looked right at Datara, I thought you were going ahead to capture the Jinchuriki since you could move faster than I could through the air. Datara grinned apologetically, well you see, I did find him and fight him. He had another guy with him and we ended up getting into a little fight. They were kind of troublesome, but in the end they weren't that hard to beat. Sasori kept his tone even, and? You're not telling me everything Datara, don't treat me as if I were a fool. Datara held his hands up in a placating fashion, I never said that Sasori no Dana, un. But when I beat them and moved in to finish the Jinchuriki he took his partner and jumped off of the building I had him trapped on. And then he landed in the water and got sucked into the whirlpool. Whoops. Un. Sasori stared at Datara for a long minute before sighing, your stupid excuse for art jump the gun did it not Datara? Datara got a tick mark on his head, hey. My art is better than your boring rust and we're attracting excuses. Besides, how was I supposed to know he was audacious enough to jump off of a building into a whirlpool? People don't do that, un. Sasori scoffed and walked away, apparently this person did. Datara simply watched Sasori walk away, Sasori no Dana, shouldn't you be angrier about this? The Jinchuriki is dead. Leader Sama is going to tear us limb from limb for this. Sasori never broke his stride, he's dead is he? Did you see his body? Datara shook his head even though Sasori couldn't see it, then he's not dead. Tell me he's dead when we find his body. And then I'll show you how angry I can be. Datara followed behind Sasori slowly, sure thing, un. How is he not dead? Sasori spoke once more in his straightforward, gruff voice, it's just as I remember it. Datara gave him an odd look, but chalked it up to Sasori just being weird like that. Triple X. Undisclosed amount of time later, underground cavern in Uzushio Gakur. Thud. 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 Naruto cracked an eye as the loud pounding noises filled the cavern, uck. What the hell is up now? Don't tell me they're attacking the river bottom now. 
Naruto got up and walked over to Sai while the loud thud still rang out. Naruto kicked Sai in the hip sharply, Sai Kouhai wake up. You've been lazy enough for my tastes. Sai slowly opened his eyes, Naruto senpai where are we? What happened? Naruto looked around in order to figure out what was making that hellacious racket, long story short, you blacked out on me when the tide was about to turn in our fight with that Akatsuki bomber and I had to jump into the whirlpool in an effort to escape being blown up on top of one of the towers. I sure didn't see this one coming. Naruto gritted his teeth in annoyance, what the hell is that noise? Sai rubbed his head and sat up, what are you talking about senpai? What noise? Naruto gave him a dry look, you really can't hear that? Thud. 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 Naruto gestured around as grandly as the sound rang out, that noise. What is it? Naruto shook his head and put that in the back of his mind for the time being, my cage bunshine found out that there's a waterway path leading out but it's under the water. Can you hold your breath for a while so we can get out of here? Sai nodded and pulled himself to his feet, I should be fine. How long have we been down here by the way? Naruto rubbed his head, I'm not sure. I can't tell how long I've been asleep since we got down here. How's your chakra exhaustion? Sai generated some chakra before dropping it with a breath, I should be okay with a soldier pill. It will get me out of here at the very least. Sai reached into his pack and fished out a pill before popping it, that should hold me until we're safe enough to rest for real. Thud. 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 Naruto started gnashing his teeth as reasonably sized chunks of rock started falling from the ceiling into the water nearby, this is perfect. The place is caving in. Come on Sai, we need to get out of here before we get stuck in here. We lucked out up there but our window of escape is closing. Thud. A boulder twice the size of the teenage ninja dropped into the water, literally. Naruto dove into the water, followed closely behind by Sai. Once inside of the water it actually became more treacherous for the two, as swimming made it harder for them to dodge wayward debris falling in with them. Naruto brought Sai to an underwater tunnel that took them further under Uzushio Gakur, where exactly, he wasn't sure, but it was better than sitting in a cave waiting for no one to save them. Eventually they wound up in another underground aquifer, but upon their heads breaching the water they were forced to jump out to dodge a giant stone foot crashing into them. Naruto and Sai stood on the surface of the water to see the same statue from previously, pulling its leg out of the water and turning its gaze on them. Naruto palmed his forehead, how did that thing even get down here? Sai pulled out his drawing scroll, worry about that later senpai, we need to fight. Naruto nodded and reached for his sealing paper only to pull out a soggy, messy wad of wet paper. Naruto sweat dropped at the sight of his most versatile ninja tool falling to the ground in pieces, that is so not good. He looked over at Sai, how do you still have ink in that scroll? You were underwater too. Sai spared Naruto a glance, my scroll keeps my ink and brush inside as well and when it's shut it is airtight, nothing gets in. Naruto sighed, damn that's useful. I need to invest in something like that apparently. He was cut off by being forced to dodge another attack from the statue. Landing ashore, the two boys ran past the sentinel, dodging swings of its massive hands that ended up pounding into the wall hard, causing rocks to drop dangerously from the ceiling and narrowly miss them both, that's the thing causing the damned cave-in? Sai looked back as they both began running down a corridor, it must be the protector of Uzushiogakur's inner sanctum, not just that one tower. You must have accidentally stumbled upon a secret area of the village when you fled from our attacker Naruto Senpai. Hard thudding footsteps sounded out behind them at a louder and louder pace. The boys turned around to find the statue gaining on them, Naruto's eyes widened at the speed that it was walking at, why is it so much faster down here? Sai looked and turned around before pulling out his ink, it must be the momentum that it can gain down here on this long straightaway as opposed to the room we had it in the first time. Sumi Nagashi, Ink Flush Sai poured some of his ink onto the ground and made a few hand seals. Many ink snakes burst from the ground and attempted to ensnare the statue but upon making contact, the seal array reverted them back to ink. Was there any part of you that thought that would work? Naruto gave Sai a dry look as they continued to run, Sai Kouhai, nothing has changed since the last time we fought this thing, except this time I can't take control of it to beat it. Our jutsu will still disperse upon even touching this thing. Sai nodded in agreement, Uzushio Gakur truly were fearsome seal masters if they could make buildings and living golems resistant to chakra-based attacks. Naruto shot a look over his shoulder, marvel at my ancestors' workmanship later, we still need to lose this thing and find the way out. My cage bunshine didn't find an exit, it just found a different path to use. 
When Sai gave him a questioning look he shrugged, I told it to find me a path and that's what it did. I never said to go any further. Naruto and Sai had to separate as now the statue had gotten close enough to nearly squash the both of them with its foot. It began swinging across at both boys, hitting more walls and causing more things to fall. Naruto and Sai sped up as the cavern began collapsing, what is this thing's problem? It's going to bury itself too if it keeps this up. The emotionless root ninja rejoined with Naruto as they started putting more distance between them and the statue, it must not care as long as it is able to repel all invaders. It possibly won't leave us alone until we are dead. I wonder how it knows where we are. Naruto shook his head, I don't know, but it's just a stupid statue. We might not be able to destroy it but we can outsmart it. They then entered a clearing where there were several possible tunnels to take, leading further underground, so how are you at labyrinths and mazes Sai? Sai stood for a moment, the statue closing in behind them before grabbing Naruto and dragging him down a random path, he dragged Naruto so abruptly that Naruto didn't even have time to steady himself and channel chakra to his limbs. Now that he thought about it, Sai wasn't doing that either. After rounding a corner, Sai grabbed Naruto and pulled him against the wall, keeping him from speaking with his hand over his mouth. As the sound of thudding got lower and lower, Sai eventually removed his hand and gestured for Naruto to stay quiet. Naruto spoke in a whisper, what was that all about? Sai responded, I know how it found us in the cave. When we last saw it we had left it in that tower with the elevator platform coming from the ground, correct? Naruto nodded, well I believe that the statue can sense bursts of chakra anywhere within the inner workings of Uzushiogakur, like the way the wall absorbed our chakra when we tried to climb it at first, I believe it sends signals of our location to the statue, like some kind of radar. Naruto's interest was piqued, so you're saying that we're actually somewhere important in Uzu? But what about the statue, that bastard will just keep coming for us the entire time we're down here. Sai shook his head, it responds to bursts of chakra. If we refrain from using any at all then it won't be able to pinpoint our location and will return to its hibernation mode on its platform. Naruto stroked his chin, he could see how that could work. He did flare his chakra before going to sleep in the cave, that left ample time for the statue to come from wherever its resting place was to somewhere it could attack them from, wait. Is the platform our only way out of here? Sai shrugged, I'm not sure Naruto senpai, but it's certainly the most blatant way out of here should we find it. Naruto groaned lowly, so to get out of here we pretty much have to go to the big, ugly, killer statue. That's just great. Naruto looked around where Sai had pulled him to, where the hell is this? Sai looked as well. The room, if you could call it that, was a dead-end area with one ornate door on the far wall. There were skeletons and old shinobi armor strewn about the vicinity. The two boys looked around, inspecting the skeletons. Sai picked up some old rusted kunai and shuriken before deeming them utterly useless and throwing them aside. Naruto scooped down near one of the deceased skeleton ninja and picked up a dusty-looking book. He blew the dust off of it and opened it up before reading it aloud. Autumn War three days after the primary defenses shattered. The enemy alliance has fought their way into our border and are now moving towards the main citadel. In an effort to retreat and take stock of our resources and chances of launching a counterattack in the near future we secretly fled to the hidden whirlpool catacombs beneath the village. There are approximately 32 of us remaining as the rest elected to remain above, leading the enemy fools into the towers to their deaths. The sounds of the fools screaming from the first tower ring out through our chambers as I write, they just seem to keep sending their men inside, knowing that the sentinel awaits them. The moment the commotion up above stops we will strike. Six days since the primary defense is shattered. The battle above still rages. The village leader will not acquiesce to our request to rejoin the battle above. The sounds of our brethren still combating the foe ring out as clear as day in our ears as we sit and wait down below. The men are growing stir-crazy and bitter at our inaction, however we must go with the will of our leader, he knows what is needed for Uzushio Gakur to survive. Konoha will come. They will not let us fall, not after so many years, not after all that our alliance has gone through. We sit and wait for our moment, one cue. That is all we need to unleash hell upon the invading bastards. Two weeks since the primary defense is shattered. The battle grows quieter above. We still hear the sounds of combat, but they are more sparse now, not the cacophony of noise that one would associate with the assistance of our allies as we initially estimated we would receive, however it has been weeks since the assault on our home and no aid from Kanahagakur has been received. Suna, Kumo, and Iwa are cowards. They preyed on our civilians, forcing us to divert a good amount of our Janan and Chunin to evacuation stations. 
many of our warriors were lost to this purpose that I will not say was worthless, our civilians are as much a part of our beloved home as our shinobi forces, however, many of our troops were picked off keeping the people safe. To prey on our nation who has never intentionally slighted them in the least, this is treachery at its highest form. Our village leader has had enough and is casting away the contingency plan. He is heading up with volunteers for one final battle with the invaders. I will be among the ones that head up to link up with any survivors for one last ditch effort at casting the allied force out. This will be our finest hour, they will tell legends of our valor. Blood smeared the pages of the final passage as there was no time span listed. Akasuna no Sasari. We believe that the invading force was an alliance of the three villages I have been cursing throughout these passages, but it was just him. Him and him alone. He commanded a force of such overwhelming numerical superiority we figured it was an alliance, the numerous Hitty 8 visible did nothing to give us any belief to the contrary. But we were mistaken. Never have I seen such mastery of Sunagakur's most sacred art of war. He was able to keep the remainder of our shinobi busy and combat our leader directly with his puppet force, but the ones he used on us at first were nothing compared to what we saw when he started feeling the pressure of our attack. He released one puppet, just one. This puppet was horrifyingly effective, I have never and will never see anything like it ever again. The Sandaime Kazekage had gone missing shortly before his attack. His whereabouts and well-being were unknown to all, but we now know just what happened to the Wind Shadow. He is now Sasori's most destructive tool of violence. The Iron Sand bloodline is fearsome, and Sasori somehow retained his ability to utilize it even in his death. One jutsu was enough to take us all out of action. The village leader gave the few of us left after Sasori's jutsu instructions to come down here and place all of Uzushio Gakur's valuables in the most secure place in the village. That was the last thing we were all able to do. A terrible paralysis had stricken us once the vault door closed. We cannot move, we cannot utilize our chakra, even breathing is becoming increasingly difficult. It is taking me the last of my strength to write down the events that have led to our demise. So long as the village's greatest treasure resides behind the impenetrable vault of Uzushio Gakur's premier clan we will never be lost. Naruto shut the journal and shook his head sadly, Akasuna no Sasori? Sunagakur's greatest puppet user ever Naruto Senpai, he was unmatched in the art. He went rogue almost 20 years ago however, Sai said to the blonde shinobi, he must have been brought in as a closer when Uzu's defenses inflicted heavy enough losses on the ninja. Naruto nodded at Sai's logic, so. He turned towards the ornate door where many skeletons were positioned, impenetrable vault. You want to see if we can get into it? We did come here to see if we could get something after all. Sai looked apprehensive, with all of the luck that we've been getting out of everything else around here I don't think tampering with the safe would be wise Naruto senpai. Naruto walked over to the vault and gave it a look over, Sai Kouhai, do you know anything about safe cracking? I was more of the direct assault type myself. Sai reluctantly made his way over and gave the vault a look himself before shaking his head, there's no conceivable way for me to break into the vault. We need the key or else this door stays shut senpai. Naruto looked at the door intensely before his eyes widened, whoa. This is an elaborate blood seal array. Like, really elaborate. It's very, very precise about who it lets in, and I believe that anyone not of proper lineage will get a nasty little surprise for their troubles. Sai walked around, pacing in thought before he stopped and looked at Naruto, what was that last passage in the journal Senpai? Naruto pulled it straight from memory, so long as the village's greatest treasure resides behind the impenetrable vault of Uzushio Gakur's premier clan we will never be lost. Naruto's eyes widened, you don't think? Sai nodded, they were the most famous clan of the village. Go ahead and try it. Naruto scowled at Sai, says the guy that won't get fried if he attempts to use it. Fine. Naruto pulled out a kunai and cut his palm, coating all of his fingers in blood before looking at his hand, then at Sai, and sighing, when I die, you stay the hell away from my funeral. Sai gave Naruto his smile, if you die from this then I'll just leave you here with the rest of your family's village of origin. That's what you would want, right? Naruto's eye twitched, you're an asshole Kouhai. Naruto turned back to the door and placed his bloody hand against it. Wincing in anticipation for a violent rebuttal from the door he got a pleasant surprise as he heard the tumblers open from within, finally opening and revealing the contents within to the boys. Looking within he saw that the vault wasn't very large. It was big enough for both Naruto and Sai to stand in and that was about it. There was no treasure of financial value, no stockpiled money, nothing of the sort. There was a shelf with a dozen scrolls on it. Sai reached for one and attempted to open it. 
Naruto watched him struggle before sighing and dragging a bloody finger across it, opening it. Sai grunted in, thanks and began reading, ending up squinting at what was on it, there's nothing on it at all senpai. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the scroll and swiped his bloody finger on the parchment as symbols appeared on the paper. Naruto handed it back to Sai, there you go. Now read. Sai looked at it again, I can't read this senpai. Naruto sighed and took it from him, what are you dyslexic? It says clearly, scroll one of Uzushio Gakur's listed existing seal array combinations. Get your head in the game Mr. Chakra Exhaustion. Sai gave him a confused look, I didn't see that at all. It looked like a bunch of random squiggles. Naruto looked back at the scroll, he could read it as clear as day when Sai could not. Naruto smirked, wow, that's really, really good fuel in jutsu. You can't even read this unless you're an Uzumaki. Sucks for you and everyone else still in root Sai Kouhai. Sai nodded, quite, I assume. So I guess your Uzumaki blood is why it was nigh impossible for Donzo Sama to place his personal fu and jutsu on you and have it stay effective. Naruto shrugged, I guess. Let's load this stuff up so we can get out of here already. Naruto and Sai packed all of the scrolls into Naruto's pockets for the time being, seeing as how any chakra used to seal them in a storage scroll would have tipped off the ever vigilant and uber tough guard statue that had apparently been killing things for over 20 years. After reading that, Naruto and Sai really didn't want to see exactly how good they were, not against that thing. Naruto noticed something behind the shelves as they finished loading his pockets with scrolls, what in the? Naruto pulled the wooden shelves down to find another door behind them, a sheathed sword held in a groove on the door. It was a ninjato like Naruto's utterly eradicated sword. The sheath was black with silver and gold spiral designs all over it. The handle looked smooth and well made, but very plain. Sai tried to pull it out, getting Naruto to push him back, you'd think that you would have learned with the vault door and scrolls. Naruto latched onto the blade and tugged on it, getting no give whatsoever. Naruto sweat dropped as he could have sworn, if Sai showed emotion he would have been giving Naruto the equivalent of an I told you so look, one moment. I've almost got it. Sai watched Naruto tug away at the sword for the better part of a minute, yes, you've got it all right Naruto-senpai. One more tug and I think you might peel some of the sheaths covering off on your hands. Naruto grunted in effort as he continued pulling, now planting his feet on the sides for leverage as he used his entire body to pull, fuck you Sai Kouhai. You sure don't show emotion, but you've got that sarcasm shit down pat don't you? Why don't you be useful and shut the hell up so I can concentrate, this is man's work. Sai shook his head and sat down outside the vault as Naruto kept pulling at the sword inside, damn it, I'm not leaving without this thing. It looks sweet and I need a replacement. Naruto kept yanking at the sword with all of his might, don't you know who I am? I'm Naruto Uzu fucking Maki. You're a stupid goddamn sword. Apparently upon utterance of the word Uzumaki, complete with the colorful swear and loud proclamation something in the groove holding the sword clicked and released the blade to Naruto in a burst of cold smoke, sending him flying backwards. Sai looked at the inside of the vault as the smoke cleared and his eyes widened in uncharacteristic surprise. Naruto stood up with a triumphant grin on his face, how do you like that you piece of archaic crap? I rule you. Naruto looked up at Sai, alright Sai, we've got everything I think, so let's get out of here before our luck turns again. Sai didn't move, Naruto-senpai, I think you should come here and see this too. Naruto walked over inside the vault with Sai and found that the wall he had taken the ninjato from had collapsed. Naruto swung his arms about to clear the strangely cold smoke from view. When it cleared out, Naruto's jaw dropped at what they had found. Encased in what seemed to look like ice was a white-haired girl. Triple X. Uzushio Gakur, above ground. Sasori no Dana why are we still here, un? Datara asked as he sat by a fire, looking bored, the Jinchuriki is gone, and we aren't even looking for him. Shouldn't we have reported back into Leader Sama right now? Sasori kept looking towards the trio, now duo, towers of Uzushio Gakur, when Uzushio Gakur was first attacked many years ago, it was believed that the defenders were wiped out after a two-week battle. However there were many surviving ninja that came out of hiding, fresh, for one last ditch effort at victory. Nothing is as it seems in this place. A few of the last defenders were never accounted for. He turned to Datara, as long as I haven't seen any bodies they aren't dead. They will be back topside soon enough and that is when we will finish them. Datara looked at Sasori and nodded, Sasori no Dana why do you know so much about this, un? Sasori remained silent, forcing Datara to sigh and pout about him being such a bastard so much of the time. Triple X. 
Kirigakur, with Kakashi. Kakashi sighed as he once again retired to the room he was sharing with Shikamaru for the night, where the hell are you Naruto? It's been a week since you left. I can't keep Shikamaru and Tuya off of my back about this forever. You need to make it back before we have to leave or I don't know what I'm going to have to do. He looked over at Shikamaru who was sleeping on a bed nearby, should I send Pakun or another one of my Ninkan? Would they even be able to find him? He's in a completely different country. I knew this was a bad idea. Thudding footsteps sounded off down the hall, stirring Shikamaru from his slumber. Kakashi cursed to himself and stood by the door, here we go again. Knock knock knock. Kakashi opened the door with perhaps the most artificial eye smile he had ever given anyone for any reason ever, why hello Tuya. What can I do for you tonight? Tuya stood in the doorway with an irritated scowl on her face and her hands on her hips, where the hell is the blonde asshole? Kakashi gave her a look, what have I been telling you since day one? Where Naruto went was his business. If he wants you to know he'll tell you when he gets back. Tuya got a tick mark on her head, well then in that case could you tell me exactly how long it's going to take him to drag his whiskery, borderline homicidal, scar-faced ass back here? Because he's been gone long enough to file a missing persons report three times over. Kakashi leaned against the doorframe, are you saying that you don't trust him? After all that he's done for you and you don't trust him enough to handle his own affairs elsewhere. Trust me when I say, this is as personal as any undertaking Naruto is going to attempt. Tuya looked down, it's not that I don't trust him, he's the entire reason I'm not in a tiny cell or even dead right now. Honestly, I trust him a hell of a lot more now than I probably will ever trust you. She looked up at Kakashi, no offense. Kakashi gave her a true eye smile, none taken. Tuya ran her hand through her hair, and I know he's strong. If he could beat Kimimaro then that's saying something, but I'm saying that he can't trust us? Why can't he trust us? You were his Jounin sensei when he was a Janan weren't you? That lazy bum over there was his classmate in your ninja academy wasn't he? And me, we're friends. I'm his friend. Aren't I? I live next door to him and I see him pretty much every day. Oh hell. Emotional female distress. I should have known even a girl like her still qualifies as a girl. Let's see, I need a way out here. Kakashi thought to himself as he feigned interest as he subtly looked around the room, damn you Shikamaru, you have an easy out. I know your ass isn't asleep. That lazybone stigma saved you today. Those times he saw me when I was in solitary confinement. I mean, why would he just go and do something like that, spend time with me when he didn't have to, and then just up and leave like this without a single word? He trusted me enough to give me my weapon back inside of his own home and not now? Is it something I did Kakashi? Kakashi sighed to himself and resigned himself to his fate, no Tuya I don't think it was anything that you did. He's just a secretive kid these days. But why now, and why to me? She asked, it's not like I would have even tagged along, I just want to know what he's doing. Sai. Triple X. With Naruto and Sai. Naruto and Sai both spent the longest time staring at the girl. Naruto wiped some fog from the clear barrier keeping the girl suspended. Her eyes were closed as she had a very serene look on her face, her heart-shaped face. She had long white hair that went down her back with sharp clawhammer bangs in front of her face. From her body type, Naruto and Sai figured that she was somewhere within their age range. How were they able to do this you ask? Well she was naked, that's how. After a long time of the two boys just staring, Sai pointed at her, so are you going to get her out of there Naruto-senpai? Naruto kept his eyes on the girl because. Well come on. How often in life are you going to get a 100% valid reason to look at a girl you don't know naked and not feel somewhat like a deviant in the process? How the fuck do you figure I'm going to go about pulling off that miracle Sai? I don't know any cat and ninjutsu and this shit doesn't even look like ice anyway. Sai gave him a dry look, you opened and activated everything else we've come across so far. I don't see how you couldn't come up with a way to get this girl free as well. Naruto shrugged, maybe, but do you think she'll be able to walk when we get her out? It's kind of dangerous to be around us right now if you haven't noticed. Naruto rubbed his chin in thought, actually, more importantly, do you think she'll be able to chase us? Because if I woke up butt naked like her and found out that two guys had been staring at me for the better part of an hour I would run to the nearest living thing and kill it. Sai frowned, who knows? But aren't you curious right now? You said you wanted to come for everything in Uzu. Well she's in Uzu, she's right here in front of you and I think you can get her out. Will you just leave her here until the end of time? Naruto looked down shamefully, that would be pretty messed up huh? 
But Sai Ko Hai, what in the blue hell am I going to do with her? I mean, she doesn't even look like she's related to me. Her face is too different. Her eye structure isn't as big as mine, her nose is more, I don't know, regal I guess. Seriously, who the hell is this girl? There's only one way to find out Senpai, Sai said as he gestured to the frozen girl. Naruto rolled his eyes and cut his hand once more before sticking it to the stuff encasing the girl. It rapidly started to melt onto the ground. Naruto looked at his hand in surprise, man I've got some good blood. Did you see that? Like it was molten lava or something. The girl almost collapsed onto the ground before Naruto and Sai caught her. The two stared at each other in confusion as neither had the slightest clue as to what to do in this situation. Slowly her eyes fluttered open to reveal amber eyes. Naruto watched in interest as the girl looked into his eyes and blinked in confusion before finally speaking in a sweet voice, um, hello. Naruto's face was unchanging as he answered her right back, hi there. She looked around blankly, um, who are you and what am I doing here? Naruto shrugged, in order asked, my name is Naruto, this is Sai, and we have no clue, we thought we could get that part from you. She seemed to accept this as a reasonable answer, I see. Okay. One more question. Naruto nodded, shoot. Why am I naked? Naruto and Sai looked at each other before Naruto turned back to her and answered, we don't know that either. Naruto gave her body a good once over look, good on you though. Bravo. The girl simply looked up at him from her back, not a single indication of discomfort towards her current situation. She crinkled her nose in a cute manner, I hate to trouble you, but would either of you happen to have any clothes on you that I could wear? My own seem to be missing at the moment and this floor is cold. Naruto and Sai looked at each other before Naruto pulled a ceiling scroll from his pocket and unsealed a change of clothes. The two boys gave her some privacy as they vacated the vault to allow her to change. Sai took this time to whisper to Naruto, what are we going to do now senpai? Naruto glared at Sai, I don't know. We definitely can't leave her here, that's for damn sure. Can you take her back to Konoha with you? Sai frowned, and keep her where? I have only enough space in my lodgings for myself and Danzo-sama isn't accepting anyone else in route either, he wouldn't take her regardless. She's too old to be trained by him properly now. Naruto started pacing, this is all turning into one massive clusterfuck, I swear. I came here looking for scrolls, maybe a family tree, you know, the usual stuff. I found Akatsuki a statue with a grievance and a hot naked girl sealed in a vault. What is it with my luck? So who are you two again? Naruto and Sai turned around to see the girl with her white hair tied in twin ponytails going down her back. She had on a black pair of Naruto shinobi pants rolled up to her knees with a black pair of sandals. She had on one of Naruto's black muscle shirt, and the sight of the girl adjusting it on her chest was actually quite appealing to Naruto, but it was business time, Kami, I'm so stiff after being stuck in that place. Me too, Naruto said before he slapped himself, uh, what I meant was, shouldn't you give your own name before asking for someone else's? The girl's mouth opened in realization and she quickly bowed, I'm so sorry. My name is Hamako Kiyomizu. Level 9 Seal Master Apprentice of Uzushio Gakur. Naruto stared at her in shock, you're a seal master? No way, you're so young, how can you be level 9? My sensei isn't even level 9, he says he's level 8. She put her hands on her hips, well I just said I'm a seal master apprentice. I'm not a fully accredited seal master yet until sensei promotes me to level 10. She blinked in thought, wait, there's a battle going on right now. She looked around rapidly, w where's sensei? Where is anyone? She then noticed the hitty eight on the heads of the two boys. She broke out in a huge smile, Konoha is here. Sensei said they would come. You must have beaten all of those jerks up top. She looked at Sai and Naruto fondly, so I'm sorry, I'm such an airhead sometimes, what were your names again? Naruto answered, well he doesn't really have a name. I just call him Sai, it seems to fit him. Sai nodded in acknowledgement, and me, like I said I'm Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Hamako's eyes widened upon hearing his surname, Uzumaki-sama. From Konoha? You must be related to Mito-sama somehow. Naruto looked at her in confusion, Mito-sama? Who is Mito? And Sama? Why am I Sama? Hamako latched onto Naruto's arm, to be saved by a member of Mito-sama's family in Konoha. This is truly a blessing. Have you and your partner seen Sensei yet? Others will probably call him village leader or something. 
Naruto looked somewhat hesitant to accept her thanks, um, Hamako, I don't know how to tell you this so I'll let this guy do it. Tell her Sai. Sai nodded, Uzushio Gakur fell while you were in that chamber. You've been asleep for the better part of nearly 20 years Hamako Kiyomizu. Hamako just stared at them for a moment before a grin broke out on her face, you guys need to stop fooling around. If Konoha is here that means that we won, you shouldn't fib like that. What if I had taken that seriously? She finished with a small giggle. Naruto looked down sadly and Sai simply kept emotionless eyes on her. Hamako stopped smiling, you guys? Right? Tell me I'm right. Tell me that you're just messing with me, that Uzu is still okay. She asked in an increasingly desperate manner. Thud. 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 Naruto and Sai both turned towards the nearest wall and spoke at the same time, shit. With that the wall crashed down as the sentinel came through, its eyes set firmly on Naruto and Sai. The two prepared to grab Hamako and run until the girl stepped towards the statue, stop being a nuisance Koma Inu-kun. She spoke with utter authority. The statue stopped moving at the girl's behest, shocking Naruto into a stupor, how the hell did you do that? Do you have any idea the hell that thing put us through for the past two days? Hamako turned to Naruto, what do you mean, how did I do that? I was the one that made the seal that animated him, why wouldn't I have control over him? Now tell me, she said I in an increasingly dark tone, what? Happened? To Uzu? She was starting to shake as she spoke. Naruto moved quickly and wrapped Hamako in a hug, I'm so sorry Hamako, but Sai wasn't lying. This is real. Uzushio Gakur was sacked a long time ago, you're the only person we found here alive and that's because you were in that odd hibernation chamber. Hamako stood silently, leaning on Naruto's shoulder until she finally broke down and began to cry on him. Naruto simply held her and let her get it all out. He moved them over towards an unruined wall and let her weep for her lost land on him, it was the very least he could do for her for now. Chapter 24, Last of a Dying Breed Once again, Kakashi sat aboard a ship, however the ship wasn't bound for the mainland, this ship was going elsewhere for the time being. It had been a week since he had let Naruto go on an excursion that should have taken him five days at the most. Kakashi was needless to say worried. He had no idea where Naruto was, other than the fact that he was somewhere on Nami no Kuni, and he knew he couldn't go home without Naruto anyway, not that he would if he could. Naruto was his comrade and after his monumental failure with Sasuke he was going to keep that boy safe. However he also had to consider the fact that the boy was fully capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him by this point and would have a better than fleeting chance of winning if they were to ever face off, especially if Kakashi was still deluding himself into thinking that Naruto wasn't as powerful as he carried himself as these days. The idea of him fighting a few of the Jounin of Konoha to prove a point seemed rather appealing to the masked man. He wondered who would end up having a good match with him and who would end up getting destroyed. A few of the thoughts of potential Naruto vs Konoha Jounin face-offs made Kakashi nod his head and a few made him snicker. So we're finally going to get the blonde idiot are we? Kakashi was brought back into focusing on the task at hand by Tuya, it took long enough. Kakashi sighed, she seemed angry, but honestly she was way happier than she had been all week that they were finally going to look for him. Now that the chances of actually seeing him were well increased she was way more manageable. Kakashi shook his head at that. He had heard from Genma about what Naruto had gotten up to in Kumo, it was common knowledge among quite a few elites due to Guy heading to his house three days straight while he was on medical leave that he had shared a bed with the Kazekage's daughter during their stay in Konoha following the retrieval mission. Did that kid even openly recognize the caliber of women he was attracting to him? Kakashi thought it best to play the responsible adult and burst Tuya's bubble somewhat before they got there, now Tuya. It may be far more difficult to find him than you know. It's been a few days since he's landed here so chances are his trail has long since gone cold, and that's if it didn't rain. Tuya visibly deflated while Shikamaru groaned at the prospect of actually having to work on this mission, so what are you saying we have to do Kakashi-sensei? Kakashi scratched his hair sheepishly, if I can't pick up Naruto's trail I'll have no choice but to have us wait for him here to return. There's not much else we can do if we can't even find him. Tuya raised an eyebrow in confusion, wait. If we can't find him and he ends up getting whatever he needs to do done, what makes you think you can wait him out? Won't we just end up missing him? His dumbass will probably end up heading back towards Mizu no Kuni, or even Hai no Kuni once he's done with whatever he's doing. Kakashi gave her a knowing eye smile, ah, but there's one place that I'm certain he'll end up making his way to at some point. Either he already has, or he will at some point and if he's already been there it's all the better for us. 
that can be a jump-off point for us to search for him. Shikamaru was intrigued, Kakashi was talking like Naruto had been there before, where exactly are you talking about Kakashi-sensei? Kakashi simply smiled at Shikamaru and Tuya, I guess you'll both find out when we get there. Triple X. Uzushio Gakur, Underground Catacombs. Naruto and Sai had allowed Hamako to sleep after telling her the entire story about what had occurred during the destruction of Uzu. They had refrained from telling her exactly what it looked like up there. Well Naruto did. He had to elbow Sai in the face to keep him from blurting it out. Not exactly the most subtle in social situations that Sai. After telling her all that they knew and had found out about what happened they let her cry herself to sleep, and after coming to the conclusion that letting her rest was the best plan all around, they both took up positions against the stone walls and got some rest themselves. During this time period, Naruto almost grabbed Hamako and dislocated her shoulder when she startled him in the middle of the night. Sheer willpower kept him from doing so, as all she was attempting to do was just lay against him. Instead of pushing the distraught girl off of him rudely, like Sasuke Uchiha would have, he wrapped an arm around her and let her stay with him. He was obviously the closest thing to her old life that she had, and the only person showing any empathy to her situation, as Sai's face stayed as plain as a brick wall the entire time they explained the situation to her. The only thing he simply could not get used to was her calling him Uzumaki-sama. That was just weird. So the next morning, they were taking a guess as to the exact time of day seeing as how they had spent an undisclosed amount of time underground, Naruto gently shook Hamako awake and looked across the room to see Sai simply staring at the two of them blankly. Pretty creepy thing to wake up to, um, good morning Sai Kouhai. Sai took that as his cue to stand up, I believe it's time we exit the premises Naruto-senpai. Naruto nodded and let Hamako adjust her eyes to being open before he let go of her and stood up to start stretching, I agree. But what are we going to do about Hamako? He looked to her as she yawned and rubbed her eyes, what are you going to do when we get out of here? Hamako immediately woke up properly upon having that question sprung on her, I'm not really sure Uzumaki-sama. I don't have anywhere to go. The massive statue that seemed more akin to her pet now walked up to her and kneeled down. Hamako gave it a sad smile and patted it, it will be okay Koma Inu-kun. We'll be fine. She then made a few hand seals and placed her hand on the statue, Kai. The statue, or Koma Inu, shrunk to the size of a four-inch doll that she wrapped a rope around and placed around her neck. She looked at Naruto and Sai, one who seemingly didn't care, however his eyes lied on that front, and the other, who just stared in awe, what? Naruto pointed, you can control that damn statue and shrink it? How the hell are you doing this stuff? Hamako shook her head, don't you know anything about Fuuinjutsu? Your clan are the best Fuuinjutsu users in the entire world. Naruto rubbed his neck sheepishly, I guess it skipped a generation. Or several. He noticed Hamako staring at him, what's the matter? How old are you Uzumaki-sama? Hamako asked, her voice deadly serious, and what level of seal mastery would you say you were at? Naruto and Sai looked at each other, um, 14? And I don't know. I can't tell all of the seals that go into Koma Inu, but I was able to stop him for a bit. What does that make me? Hamako's jaw dropped, you're not even level 3 yet. You're 14 and you aren't even at level 5? Naruto shrunk under her yelling, yeah, I guess so. Is that a bad thing Hamako? Hamako grabbed him by his collar and pulled him close to her face, everyone in your clan can at least say that they were level 7 before they were 15. And you mixed overlapping seals without knowing all that went into one of them? What kind of Uzumaki isn't good at Fuuinjutsu? Naruto sweat dropped, an Uzumaki that wasn't even introduced to the art until a few months ago. Give me a break Hamako. I'm better than pale and listless over there, he said while pointing at Sai. Hamako palmed her forehead, Kami. There's an Uzumaki out there, a real true Uzumaki. And he can't even do Fuuinjutsu. Naruto took offense to this, hey. I can do stuff. I can make tons of stuff. I make sealing scrolls, customized explosive tags, and check it out. He pulled out the seal he used to control the statue, I even made this temporary control seal that helped us beat your statue when we first ran into it. Those things are beginner stuff. Hamako took the seal note away and inspected it, frowning more and more the longer she looked at it before balling it up and tossing it aside, it's completely shoddy. How can you be proud of that? Naruto's jaw dropped, what? Do you know how hard that was to come up with? Hamako pointed at the statue on her necklace, compared to what I did to animate Koma Inu-kun you might as well have scribbled your name in crayon and handed it over to me. Your seal has so many deficiencies I'm surprised it didn't kill you. 
First of all, simply using it puts you in an internal struggle against your target. The only guaranteed way that you could ever use it was if you tried it on something with no will whatsoever, and even then you could still lose. Although it would be utterly hilarious to see someone lose a battle of wills to an end table. She laughed slightly at the thought before reassuming lecture mode, second of all, it's so temporary that even if you won the initial struggle there isn't much you could do with the control you just fought for. And finally and most important, it's a mimic array, did you know that? Instead of having the target's movements be an extension of your thoughts you had it so that the only way they could do anything was if you did it first. That's so stupid. Naruto visibly deflated, well you don't have to put it like that. I've been basically teaching myself after Uro Senen pounded the basics into my head. I thought I was doing rather well until now. Hamako sighed before walking up to Naruto and winking at him, well at least I know what I'm doing now. Upon seeing Naruto's questioning look she elaborated, there's no way that I can in good conscience leave an Uzumaki to their own devices with such shoddy seal work. So until you actually become passable at Fuu and Jutsu I will be your teacher Uzumaki-sama. Naruto stared at her for a few seconds, you're going to train me? Hamako nodded, yes because basically. You're not very good at Fuu and Jutsu at all. If anyone told you that you were they were either lying to make you feel better, or they never saw an Uzumaki from Uzushio Gakur at work. Naruto looked at his hands, well when you put it that way. Hamaki clasped her hands together, so it's my responsibility to teach you the right way of going about with your sealing techniques. I owe the Uzumaki clan a debt that I can't repay them now that. Well you know. So I'll have to pay it off through you. That makes me feel so special, Naruto said sarcastically as his eye twitched, but Hamako, I don't want you to do anything that you don't have to. Naruto could see the benefits of having Hamako with him. Yes, he had the scrolls from Uzu that pretty much would make him jump up in skill, but simply looking through the stuff that was listed the other day had him a little hesitant to try them out. Some of them were ridiculously absurd sounding. Other than the chakra draining seal that would have been a boon in battle there was a seal that could store chakra. Store chakra. Store chakra and transfer it between people to recharge their reserves, like an adrenaline shot of chakra, and he didn't even want to know what could happen if he screwed that one up. Hamako frowned and walked closer to him, Uzumaki-sama, there is nowhere else for me to go, she said as her natural bangs from her white hair somewhat shadowed her amber eyes from his full view, what would I do? I'm completely out of place here, I know nothing of this current world I now find myself in, and you are the closest thing to my masters that have been so kind to me for my entire life since they found me and taught me everything I know. She bowed to him, I would be honored if I could go with you. Naruto looked at Sai who didn't have any helpful facial expressions to help him out. Or any facial expressions at all. Thus Naruto was forced to go with his gut on this one, that and Hamako seemed like a good girl, although the sooner he could break her of that Uzumaki-sama crap the better. Naruto picked her up by her shoulders to get her to stand again, Hamako, no bowing. I'm not noble, I'm just some guy with the last name Uzumaki. But I have a question, why were you stuck inside that vault? Sai came forward, finally speaking, I would like to know that as well Hamako-san. Naruto Senpai and myself were very surprised to find you in there. Hamako took up a thoughtful look, I don't know. Sensei said that he was going to leave the future of our village up to me. I thought he was going to let me head up with him to fight, but then I ended up unconscious, and when I woke up I saw you too. Naruto shifted his new sword on his back and turned to head down the corridor, we can figure this stuff out later. We still need to get to the surface. Hamako, can you get us out of here? Hamako smiled and nodded, yes, I remember my way through here like it was just yesterday. Naruto sweat dropped, technically for you, it was just yesterday. Hamako growled at him lowly as he backed off, okay, bad attempt at situational humor. Let's just go. Triple X. As the platform in the first tower rose back to the ground floor once more, Naruto and Sai felt deja vu as this had been the place they had fought Hamako's statue Koma Inu. Naruto looked around and saw that the door was still sealed off, how are we going to get out of here Hamako? Hamako walked towards the door and started writing a seal on the door before biting her finger and adding her blood, Fu in Kai. The walls all shimmered before the wall in front of the entrance dropped. She looked back at Naruto and sighed before sighing heavily, I guess it's time for me to see what's left of Uzu. She frowned as she looked around the destroyed tower, if this is any indicator I'd better prepare for the worst, huh? Naruto and Sai walked behind her as she headed outside. She stopped and looked around at the battle-scarred village. She sighed deeply but did not shut her eyes or look away. Naruto put a hand on her shoulder, you want to take a minute for yourself Hamako? She shook her head, no. 
there's nothing more that can be done here. Uzushiogakura was my home, well this isn't Uzu anymore. It's nothing but ruins now. Even if I stayed, what would I do? Live like a hermit on the grounds of a destroyed village? I'll go with you instead Uzumaki-sama, my entire life has been to serve your clan, it's all I know, thus it is all I'm willing to do. Naruto looked at her strangely, she's kind of like Haku. Only knowing how to really serve. Doesn't she have her own dreams and goals? The way she's talking it's as if as long as there is an Uzumaki about she can move along. No Uzumaki-sama Hamako. Sai walked out ahead of both of them, let's go then. Naruto-senpai, I think it best if Hamako-san travels with you. I cannot take her with me into Konoha, and even if I could I couldn't get her set up as a citizen. Naruto nodded, at the very least I'll see you out of Nami no Kuni. I need to re-up with my squad though. Kakashi's going to chew my butt out once I get back. This wasn't supposed to take this long to do. Sai shrugged, it could not be helped senpai. If you tell him of your encounter with the Akatsuki he should understand completely, but do remember to keep my involvement a secret. Naruto watched Hamako pick through some of the rubble nearby, understood. Though how in Kami's name I'm going to explain Hamako to him and everyone else is beyond me. But I'm not leaving her here. No way in hell I'm doing that. I'll come up with something by the time we meet back up with the others, don't you worry. He called out to the white-haired girl, Hamako, are you ready to leave? Sai nodded as she came back over, I wasn't worried at all senpai. If nothing else you could actually tell the truth about where she came from. I don't think that would matter too much if you did. Hamako made it over to Naruto, I'm ready to leave master. Naruto palmed his face, master? Really? Hamako come on. You're not my servant, you're not under my command. You're a girl that's my age, aside from owning any person, owning you would be strange. Strange and Uro Senen and Kakashi Sensei would never let that fact die. Hamako shook her head vehemently, that is highly inappropriate master. You won't let me call you Uzumaki-sama and now you dislike being called master. Your clan are my retainers, how else am I to show you your proper respect? Master? She finished with a smirk. Naruto grumbled and turned to Sai, Sai Kouhai, help me out here. Talk to this girl for me. Sai gave him one of his trademark smiles, she is apparently your property now Naruto-senpai. That would make that your job. Naruto gave Sai a dry look, you sure don't treat me like a senpai Sai. Aren't you supposed to listen to me? Kit shut up and pay attention. Naruto's eyes snapped to attention as he began to look around for any sign of trouble. Sai caught on to Naruto tension as he quickly followed suit and began looking around, back to back with Naruto. Naruto's fingers drifted up to his sword that he was grateful to have as his last one had been pieced apart during his last confrontation, can you tell me where they're coming from Kyuubi? A growl came from within his mind, whoever it is, they are doing a great job of keeping themselves concealed. All I know is what you know, that there is someone's presence around here. Be careful, you're not getting us killed in this wasteland. Naruto's eyes panned over to Hamako who was looking around in confusion, Master, what's going on? Is there something wrong? Naruto's eyes widened. Couldn't she sense the intent rolling around the area? The way she handled seals she had to have been a ninja, right? Hamako, what ranking were you? Hamako gave him an odd look, I wasn't a registered ninja master. I had basic training like a lot of people did but everything I did was focused on seal making. I was trained alongside the few Jutsu corps. I don't really know any other ninja arts. Naruto would have sighed deeply in grief at that moment. If it was Daedara again, the only advantage they would have in the fact that Sai now had enough strength to fight all out and the fact that the entire village was now their playground would be negated by the fact that they now had to protect someone. Naruto quickly made a dozen cage bunshine and sent them over to Hamako, keep her safe, no matter what. I don't care what you have to do. He looked over his shoulder at Sai, let's take this elsewhere. Sai nodded as the two disappeared in a leaf and ink shrouded sunshine. Hamako tried running out to find them, but were kept back by the cage bunshine, I need to go with Sai San and Master. Why are they leaving? The cage bunshine in charge shook its head, I can't let you go after the boss Hamako. Things are about to get ugly out here. Triple X. Appearing elsewhere in the village, Naruto drew the blade from his back with a loud ring of steel, if it's Daedara again I promised QB I would cut his arms off. I really hope it's Daedara. Sai pulled out his scroll, how will we go about fighting him this time senpai? Naruto grinned, that's going to be the easy part. We have tons of space. You can try to take it to him from the air if you like while I have my own method of reaching him. 
Sai nodded, that will do for now senpai. Upon both coming to an agreement on how this was to be handled, they were both caught in a fiery explosion. Datara watched from a distance laughing loudly, and there you go. What happened to that strategy of yours boys, Un? He then blinked blankly, oh. I wasn't supposed to kill the Jinchuriki, Un. Datara was then bound by ink snakes that emerged from around him. As he struggled to escape, a sword was driven through his chest, freezing his face in an expression of pain and horror. Naruto smirked as he buried the sword through him up to the guard before the blade stuck fast as he tried pulling it out. Datara quickly lost his color and turned to the color of clay. Naruto panicked and channeled wind chakra to his blade to pull it out and get distance as the clay figure of Datara exploded. As Naruto landed from his evasive action, Sai came to his side, that was a nasty little surprise. It looks like he has a clone technique of his own as well. Naruto looked around, where is he now? He isn't flying above us, so where could he be? Sai didn't speak, instead drawing on his scroll as snakes came off and burrowed underground. After a moment of waiting, Datara came out of the ground a good distance away from the two boys, launching his clay explosives at the snakes. Naruto rushed in, trying to stay close with the long-range expert, but despite the speed that he came at his opponent with, Datara saw him coming and dashed away, reaching into his pouch for more clay. As Naruto cursed at the speed that Datara had, simply running backwards he noticed that both of his hands spit out clay sculptures. Naruto shook his head as if he had been seeing things, I must have been underground too long. Naruto closed the distance enough that he was finally able to engage Datara up close. Datara avoided a thrust of the blonde teen sword and maneuvered out of the way of a spinning slash. When Naruto spun for his attack however, Datara was fast enough to plant one of his explosives on Naruto's back. The little clay spider crawled on Naruto's back while Datara jumped away from him and made his hand seal, Katsu. The explosion rocked Naruto and sent him to the ground. Naruto grit his teeth in pain as he could feel the damage he had just taken rip at his nerve endings, I'm so tired of you. His eyes flashed red as he started leaking Kyuubi's chakra, you've turned this entire trip into a massive headache. One tail of chakra formed behind him. Datara had a small grin on his face, fighting two of you, with one of you being the Kyuubi Jinchuriki. Not exactly my design of an ideal battle, un. Naruto growled at him and rushed at him, gripping his sword double-handed, don't you run from me. Datara had another clay figuring that so happened to be a bird in his other hand and expanded its size before taking off on it, leaving Naruto to miss his swipe. Naruto growled in anger and leapt into the air to cut down Datara ride. The missing nin paled at seeing him leap at his bird and quickly formed another clay spider that he threw down at Naruto. The enraged Jinchuriki cut right through it, forcing it to explode on contact and pushing him back to the ground where he landed on his feet, smoking from the blast. He then noticed which way he was going, Sai. He's going back towards Hamako. Cut him off. Sai nodded and immediately took off on one of his ink birds while Naruto kept up and pursued from the ground. Triple X. Well it looks like the Jinchuriki left me a way to get him to cooperate. Hamako jumped at the sound off the gruff voice suddenly calling out. The clones took a defensive perimeter around her, but most were cut down by an iron tail extending from a blind spot and running right through them. The initial attack left two of Naruto's cage bunshine remaining and they picked up Hamako before jumping away from the scene of the mass clone slaughter. Clone Sama who's attacking us? Hamako asked, clutching at the Koma Inu necklace tightly. The clone she had spoken to stood in front of her while the other was behind, keeping a watchful eye out for any movement that could be perceived as hostile, I don't know Hamako, but if I had to guess it would probably be Datara partner because that's who boss and Sai Kouhai went off to fight. It seems this one isn't as much of a muscle head as most are prone to being. The voice said once more, or maybe his clones are just smarter than him, but if that were the case they would have just dispelled and saved themselves the pain of death that they're about to feel. The clones reached on their backs for their swords, as if we'll just let you hurt Hamako like that. Her eyes widened upon catching sight of markings that ran all along the blade in the clone's hands, but she couldn't bring herself to speak quickly enough. I guess it's easier to just kill you than to try and talk to a clone that is standing orders. With that, Senbone came flying at the clones and Hamako, forcing her two protectors to burst into smoke, but as it cleared there was no sign of the girl. I thought my clone said that I wasn't just going to let you hurt Hamako like that. Came Naruto's voice from a short ways off. He was shrouded in the Kyuubi's chakra, holding Hamako close to him, Sai. Sai's bird landed behind Naruto, who placed her on its back alongside him, Naruto-sama. Naruto gave her a small smile, it's okay Hamako. He looked at Sai, take her with you. 
she'll be safer than if she were down here with me. This fight is more along my alley anyway, you take Datara, just remember to sever his arms from his body somehow for me. He gave him a questioning look, can you take Datara all on your own? Absolutely. Sai looked at the figure who had appeared while they were talking. A hunched, grotesque-looking man wearing the Akatsuki robes, but are you sure senpai? Naruto followed Sai's line of sight and narrowed his eyes upon seeing what his root comrade saw, I'm absolutely sure. If you can, get her somewhere you know will be safe and keep her there while you deal with Datara. I know you'll be way better equipped to fighting him this time, but she could still get hurt up there with you two going at it. Sai nodded, understood. Good luck senpai. Sai then took off and left Naruto to his own devices amid the ruins of Uzushio Gakur. Naruto faced down his opponent and drew his sword from his back, well you must be Datara partner. It sucks for both of you, because you're obviously strong or else you wouldn't be here. And now you're going to die, a long way from home or away from anyone that would even care in the slightest. The gruff laughter from his would-be opponent raised the hackles on the back of Naruto's neck. Man using Kyuubi's chakra made him super aggressive. It was taking everything he had to not rush him blindly like he had with Datara, which was the main reason he was happy that there was another person to fight. The man began to speak, I would say the same thing to you Uzumaki, except I can't. You technically are home. That and I'm not going to kill you, I'm going to drag your subdued carcass to have your demon extracted. Then you'll die. Ha ha. Morbid humor, how quaint. Naruto lowered himself, not that I actually care, since I'm going to kill you and everything but as I said to your friend when we first met, I try to make it a habit to learn the names of the people after my bijou. Naruto's Akatsuki opponent sighed in reminiscence, you know, I don't remember doing most of this. I actually didn't. This village was mostly eradicated by the time I had gotten here, there were just still many of Uzu's ninja out and about. A remarkable amount come to think of it. It just goes to show how dedicated they were. But I can't believe I missed one. Again. Tell me, how did you escape Datara? Not that it matters at this point, but we fell into the whirlpool where there were hidden underground chambers. Naruto's grip on his blade tightened, who the hell are you and what do you mean you missed one again? He laughed deeply, underground chambers of course. I wondered how those last defenders popped up like cockroaches last time. How ingenious to use the whirlpool, a certified death trap, to escape ruin. And I mean I missed one again because the girl is obviously an Uzu survivor. Where else would you have gotten her? Who the hell are you? I won't ask you again before I stop being so cordial and start cutting things off, Naruto yelled at the man. He laughed at Naruto's anger, from the way you're yelling at me and gripping your weapon so hard, I think you know already. Naruto bared his elonged canines at him, you're right, I do. I just want to hear it from you. Very well then. I am Akasuna no Sasori. Naruto smirked, that's who I thought you were. Before vanishing in a blur of red, now die. Naruto reappeared right in front of him, his sword drawn back to cleave him into two. Triple X. With Sai and Hamako. I have to go back to Naruto-sama. Hamako tried to reason as she held on to Sai's ink bird tightly out of fear of falling off, I have something he needs to know. Sai kept his eyes peeled for any sign of Datara. The man was a right bastard when it came to sneaking up on them and attacking from a distance. He didn't spare the girl a glance as he kept guiding his ink bird. The only reason Naruto Senpai would tell me to leave the area is if he was planning on drawing on the Kyuubi's chakra. If that is the case then allowing her to return to him would do more harm than good, for everyone. I cannot let you go back to Senpai Hamako-san. It would be best if you stayed with me for the time being. Hamako's eyes darted back to where she had been placed on the bird from, but he needs to know something, something important. I need to tell him how to use his sword. Sai peered back at her slightly, his sword? the one he picked up inside of the vault? Why didn't you tell him about it when he first took it? Hamako frowned, I didn't know he had taken it. I wasn't paying attention to Naruto-sama's weapons when you first found me, but when his clone drew the sword and I was able to see the markings on the blade I realized what he had. How did he even get it anyway? Sai remembered the events that lead up to Naruto getting the blade, he pulled it from the wall. That triggered the entrance that led us to you. What is it anyway? Hamako sat up straight on the bird's back, it is the Senenki no Ken, Millennium Sword. It's an heirloom of Uzushio Gakur. And. Wait, what are you doing drawing? Sai looked back at her and gave her his forced smile, don't worry about it. Now please, continue. Triple X. Naruto vs. Sasori. 
Naruto's blade was blocked by an iron tail appendage stretching from Sasori's back within his robes. As Naruto struggled against the tail, it proceeded to stretch and maneuver over his head swiftly in an attempt to impale him. Naruto rolled aside and lashed out once again, the blade once more blocked his sword strike and pursued him in an effort to pierce him. You're a fast little bastard aren't you? Sasori taunted as his tail retracted back within his robe. Naruto set his sword in a defensive stance, staring Sasori down. So much of him was covered by that damn robe he couldn't tell what other nasty surprises he might have under there. What did this man have that could have possibly taken down the bulk of an entire shinobi village all alone? He rushed at Sasori again, slashing at him from any side he could get a favorable angle at. Each time he was blocked by Sasori's iron tail. For a guy that didn't move his body. At all, he had damn good reflexes with such an obscure appendage of his body. Was it even a part of his body in the first place? Damn that cloak. Naruto got upset at his lack of any progress whatsoever even using his QB boosted speed, block this. Raiden, Kaxen no Jutsu, Lightning Release, Live Wire Jutsu. After making his hand seals and placing his hands on the ground, a speedy stream of arcing lightning ripped across the ground at Sasori. Sasori finally found it prudent to move as he jumped away from Naruto's attack, lest he find himself with a few thousand bolts of electricity running through him. Naruto smirked, I finally got him to move. He's got some pep in his step when I actually get him to jump out of the way of something. Naruto rushed in with his sword primed to strike at the oddly built enemy when Sasori gave him another surprise. Sasori blasted Senbone at him in a rapid spray from his mouth. Naruto thought about trying to use his sword to deflect them, but settled on that being a stupid idea the moment he realized he couldn't even count them all and rolled out of the way. What the hell? Did those things fly out of his mouth? Who does that? Naruto didn't have long to ponder this as Sasori threw his tail out at Naruto again, missing repeatedly in his attempts to finish the boy off. The foot of the young Jinchuriki caught itself in the rubble that they were fighting on. Naruto saw the metal tail fly at him and clasped his fists side by side before thrusting them out, Fuuten, Fuujin Seiken, Wind Release, Divine Fist of the Wind God. The wind projectile barely held the blade off as Naruto frantically tried to lift his foot out and evade before he ended up being a human shish kebab. The wind-based attack eventually died off and the tail shot at Naruto as quick as ever, however he found it in him to evade by the skin of his teeth, although the leg of his pants did get cut when he got his foot free. Naruto now had the back of his shirt blown open by the explosive attack from Daedara and his pants leg shredded from the unstable surface of rubble that he and Sasori were fighting on. Naruto inspected himself. The wounds on his back had long since healed and the cuts and scratches he got pulling himself free were mere trifles. Sasori's tail swung menacingly around him, you must have an extra life to go with each tail of your bijou. Naruto flipped him off and started running circles around Sasori, making him appear as a blur while a red trail left behind was the sign of his wake. Sasori sighed in annoyance as he tried to use his tail to swap, see, stab, the annoying fly. All he hit was nothing, as simply penetrating the red haze that settled in Naruto's path while he continued running around him, you're really beginning to work my nerves boy. Naruto's response was a reasonably sized chunk of debris flying from his shroud that he was running around Sasori at a high speed. Sasori's tail moved swiftly to intercept it. Soon thereafter even more debris flew at him at an even higher pace, the speed steadily increased, forcing Sasori to give his iron tail a good workout to block them. This pattern continued until Sasori tired of blocking chunks of building and stuck his tail directly into the circle, getting a series of rapid popping sounds for his trouble. The shroud disappeared, confusing Sasori as to Naruto's whereabouts. Doten, Shinju Uzanchu no Jutsu, Earth Release, Inner Decapitation Jutsu. Naruto emerged from the ground directly behind Sasori and slashed his body up repeatedly before landing a distance away and sheathing his sword, and that's how you do that. That was a good move kid. Sasori's Akatsuki cloak was cut to ribbons, finally dropping off of his frame, that might have worked if I was normal. On his back was what appeared to be a demon mask with the iron tail extending from the mouth of it. Naruto palmed his forehead at the sight of this, what are you? You barely look human. Sasori laughed, that's because this is a puppet boy. My puppet armor, Hiruko. Naruto's teeth made a loud clicking noise as he found himself undeterred by this news, well then I guess I'll just have to smash your puppet armor to get to the soft, squishy puppeteer underneath won't I? Sasori laughed again, you can try boy. Sasori raised the right arm of his puppet which looked like a torpedo and fired it at Naruto who easily dodged, however this was only the beginning. The torpedo rotated and launched tons of wooded cylinders from within. 
Naruto didn't like the looks of them whatsoever and tried to get more space when the cylinders broke open, launching a large amount of needles in all directions. The boy crossed his arms in an X pattern frantically, Fu Uten, Senpu Kakasui, Wind Release, Whirlwind Pyramid. Naruto's defensive wall kicked up, violently pushing the deadly needles away and shrouding the area in dust and debris. As the battlefield cleared, Naruto was nowhere in sight. Triple X Naruto had taken cover in a crater outside of the area that he and Sasori had been fighting. To get to Sasori he had to crack the puppet armor, but that damn tail. He couldn't cut it, and he had been trying to use his wind chakra through the blade the entire time, it was like it wasn't chakra conductive which made no sense, it was in a vault, in a ninja village. How could it not be chakra conductive? A squeak alerted Naruto to some off-color looking mice down by his feet. Naruto looked at them curiously as they stopped in front of him, what the? The small mice turned into words that brought a smile to Naruto's face, Sai Hai, you beautiful bastard. And Hamako too. I definitely think she's earning her chan today. Triple X. With Sai and Hamako. Hamako gave Sai a worried look, are you sure that Naruto-sama will get your message about the sword? Yes, Sai stated, still looking for somewhere to put Hamako, Senpai will get the message, rest assured. Maybe back on the towers again? That would make her a target if Datara ended up finding her, plus, she couldn't get herself down if she had to. Well, she probably could after seeing how she had basically sleepwalked through three of the previously impassable seals that kept him and Naruto from doing what they wanted, do you think it will let him use it? Hamako smiled at nodded, yes, I'm certain. If it wouldn't allow him to use it then he would never have been able to pick it up. Hopefully he's good at finding things out on his own, because I don't know enough about the Senenki no Ken to really give him an idea on what to do. Naruto Senpai is very surprising, Sai stated before narrowing his eyes in the distance, here we go. Please hold on tightly and stay down Hamako-san, it seems I won't be able to let you off after all. Daedara was watching with a smirk on his face as the scope over left I was trained on Sai, I thought I would have to go and interfere with Sasori no Dana's battle to get one of you. It's a good thing you decide to come to me, un. We're not all settled up yet are we? Sai didn't answer as Hamako looked between him and Daedara, Sai, who is that? Sai pulled up his drawing scroll, that man is the main reason we found you Hamako-san. Allow me to go over there and thank him for you. Sai attempted to strike first by drawing out bats from his scroll, Kuju Ugiga, Super Beast's imitation picture. Daedara laughed as his hands coughed up sculptures for his use, you have more fight in you this time I have to say, but you're still coming at me with that same lame excuse for art. His birds left his hands and clashed with Sai's bats in midair as a few went around the clash heading towards Sai and Hamako directly, how many times do you need to hear it? True art is an explosion. He made his half-tiger seal. Sai maneuvered the bird, amid Hamako's uncomfortable screams, through the mid-air explosions, I won't be nearly as easy to subdue as I was the first time, I assure you of that. Sai cut through a bird that got close and continued towards Daedara, now actually having the chakra to attempt fancy evasive maneuvers and to boost his ink beast's speed in mid-flight. You weren't that fast the first time, on. Datara stated before shrugging to himself and making more exploding birds for a long-range attack. He let them fly with a devious grin on his face. Sai narrowed his eyes in annoyance as he saw even more birds coming their way, Sumigasumi no Jutsu, Ink Miss Jutsu. Sai shrouded his bird and a decent area around it in ink as it sped towards Datara. The clay sculptures went inside the shroud and exploded, trying to take Sai out without sight. The bird emerged from the mist still in flight and still generally coming at Datara. Datara smirked to himself as he watched Sai come closer, now why would I send so many of my beautiful figures into there with little to no hope of hitting you? Because they weren't supposed to hit you fool, they were just supposed to locate you, un. Datara made his hand seal again, Katsu. Little clay insects appeared all over the bodies of Sai, Hamako, and the clay bird, glowing and exploding on them before they could react, I have to keep the Jinchuriki alive. There's no such restrictions about fighting you, un. Datara smirked before he realized that he wasn't seeing flaming corpses falling from the sky. Instead he saw melting ink bodies drop, no bodies whatsoever. Danger senses went off for Datara as he jumped over Sai's low slash. He had hung off of the legs of the bird and taken his shot at the explosives artist. Datara hung off of the other side as well and kicked at Sai, who swung himself up on the top of Datara bird to take a more advantageous position. He kept himself in a position to defend from whatever side Datara would end up coming up from. What are you looking at, un? Sai turned his head and saw Datara sitting on another clay bird. This surprised Sai, 
as he had never even felt Datara weight leave the bird. He looked on the underside of the bird to see that it was holding a clay clone of Datara in its talons. Sai looked up and saw Datara hands moving towards his hand seal, Katsu. Before he could finish the word, Sai jumped off of the bird. He free fell to the ground as the fiery explosion of the clay bird sounded out over him. The sound of a bird's cry let Sai know he was saved as he found himself scooped out of the air gently by his bird. The pale root ninja sighed to himself and patted the inky construct on its head. Triple X. Hamako shook herself off as she stood up from where Sai's bird had dropped her for his gambit of an attack on Datara. She watched Sai's bird save him from a screaming, flaming death and clutched her Koma Inu necklace tightly. Sai san and Naruto sama are fighting so hard. And I can't help, again. I can never help. All I'm good for is making seals. Her eyes widened before a small smile came to her face, and what's wrong with that? Seals are the backbone of this village. And I'm the best. She reached into her pocket and frowned, Sai San didn't have much ink to spare me, but it's better than nothing. I just have to make do with what I have here, it has to be enough. She looked up at Sai, still in mid-air combat with Datara, I won't be useless here Sai San. Triple X. Naruto vs. Sasori. Naruto stepped out of his crater of hiding with a serious look on his face, and his sword drawn. Sasori noticed him, I knew you would come out eventually. You look like the type that wouldn't retreat in the face of insurmountable odds. Naruto let a chuckle escape him, insurmountable odds? Again with the S rank superiority complex. I swear, it's like none of you fools get it. Naruto's amused face slipped, I could have tried to run. Even if I didn't get away I could have tried. I am your objective after all, right? But if I ran I would be leaving Sai Kouhai and Hamako Chan alone to fight, and I won't do that. Sasori gave the boy a cursory glance. Nothing had changed to give him such confidence, so why was he acting so braze? Using them as a means for your escape would have been better. If any of Uzu's ninja had tried that then I might have spared one or two, but since they all had this need to rush to their deaths and fight me for their comrades I helped them out with that. It seems that trait passed down to you. Naruto's face never changed, Sai Kouhai is my comrade. Due to the way he was brought up and trained, much like myself he's something like a brother to me. Root may do anything to finish the mission, but we do not turn our backs on our comrades. He's fighting Datara for me, for my safety, and I won't leave him to his death by running away from you. And Hamako-chan. I would never leave her either. I missed the opportunity to save someone like her before, I wasn't strong or smart enough to do so. But now I am and I'll be damned if I'll let her be alone in this world just because one man is after my life. Naruto held up his sword in front of his face, blade facing directly up as it began to glow, Seninki no Ken, I am your master whether you accept it or not. Now help me take this bastard down for your nation. The wind around Naruto began to kick up as a smirk came to his face, I don't know what this is supposed to look like. All Hamako-chan said was that I had to exert my will over the sword for me to use this. Oh well, let's try it. Senen Hake, Aichiji Era Wear, Millennium Release, Primary Materialization. The sword dematerialized and reformed as grey slash silver metal gauntlets around Naruto's forearms and ankles. A wicked blade came from the sides of each of the outsides of Naruto's arms. On his legs, surrounding his sandals, there was also a blade along the outsides of his legs. The QB found itself amused by Naruto's new find. Do make sure that you don't end up ripping yourself apart while you use these blades, boy. As entertaining as that is, having your body be eradicated by a powered sword would be a massive slap to my face. Naruto stretched himself out and tested the feeling of his new weapon before grinning and looking up at Sasori, this really doesn't have a name. I guess I'll have to come up with one won't I? I think I'll have to call them. Senen Kugake, Milen Yom Gauntlets. Sasori scoffed, so you got some pieces of metal and you think you can fight me boy? Naruto shrugged, it's worth a try. Now let's see what these things have got. Hayakan and Sakakaru, Century Rush. Naruto circulated his QB chakra around him while pushing wind chakra into his blades and rushed at Sasori directly. In response, Sasori thrusted his iron tail at Naruto who slashed at the man with his bladed arms. Naruto moved his body into a rapid motion and took on the appearance of a red, edged buzz saw. The two clashed and moved past one another. Naruto simply stood straight up and stared at his hands blankly after the attack. Sasori meanwhile, felt his puppet armor fall around him. Unusable due to the damage it had taken. As Naruto felt and heard the body of Hiruko collapse, a grin came to his face. 